cinema sometimes. Look at that big screen over there. That's a lot wow. of cinema. Oh, That's, look whoa. at it. Wow. That would be a cool little game if you play as Martin Scorsese running around collecting cinema. <laughs> oh, man. It's just little reels. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, so some, but screens. some of them are fakies. Like, some of them are like Marvel weird, movies, and you have to avoid no. them. They're like traps. <laughs> they slow you That's down. That's a good idea. <laughs> I just like it now as a banjo kazooie, but it's a little Martin Scorsese running around collecting film reels instead of jiggies. Yeah, and then there's like no, I... enemies that are just like Iron Man, but a bloated zombie version that goes. Yeah, or like <laughs> some big, or like fat cat producers that are gonna get him. Yeah, and he's just gonna run around. But who's in his backpack? Who's his? Who's his companion? Is it Robert De Niro? Leonardo. <laughs> 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 Along the way, you could like get power ups from great heroes of cinema, like Christopher Nolan and uh, fucking Alfred Hitchcock are there. Just like they provide him <laughs> new abilities. Like, yep. I feel like yeah, that's something that's thematic like, to their. What about um, like does style. he encounter any writers like Ernest Hemingway or something or Dostoevsky? Is is this like that'd a, be at his low point maybe? His, <laughs> really? low, what, his low point is that authors will help Well, you know him. how you that need a certain amount of to him, yeah. jiggies to get through certain doors? It's going to be like he needs funding to, if, to get ah, through the doors, and you got to right. appeal to okay. producers. You have mini games. It's like in Kirby, where there's a mini game where you work in fast food. It's just little Mark <laughs> Scorsese working at some <laughs> fictional, that could, like, McDonald's. That could be a fictional plot, is that he makes a really bad movie that everyone hates, and so he becomes destitute, and he has to, and, and on the streets, and he has to work himself back up mm. to being the great Martin Scorsese he was, yeah. has and, to start by and learn all of his lessons along the way. It's like Assassin's Creed, basically. Mm -hmm. Has to start his, uh, his journey with Martin making Creed. a Marvel movie, becoming the thing he hates. Yeah, <laughs> you do a one for me and one for them sort of thing. How would I did a bad movie and actually had to start from the bottom again and work the way back up into everyone's good books. Now they just get promoted. The only job we can get you, Martin, after that last movie is you got to direct a Marvel film. Hmm. This is all we've got. That's the only way that you're ever going to make like, a movie um, again. It's like those uh, like dev tycoon games, but you know, it's a mini game in the Banjo Kazooie type game where you just got to design a film, and it's like big blue laser. You know, the more money you you put in, the, the more money budget they give you. You have to get two hundred fifty million, then you can have like every A list star and huge battle. Uh, maybe CGI. you like enter into a quiz game, right? It's a quiz mini game where they give you three answers, and you have to pick the things that will make the most money. Whenever you get the answer wrong, the game screams that you're wrong. And just like to have tycoon games, it's like depending on the era. Like if you're picking in 2000, I don't know, like 19. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So like if it was 2009, it's going to be all of the young adult dystopian science fiction like film adaptations. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, if it's in the uh, if it's in like the you know 2010s, it's superhero films, or if it's in like the late 90s, it's like raunchy comedies. Yeah, <laughs> like the so, Hunger Games. Just I, saying, I, this is a billion dollar tell you idea. About the depression. Hunger is no game. A, a billion dollar idea. It's more like a more billion dollar idea. Whoa. Oh yeah, Whoa. Morbius. Whoa. Morbius. That's been reignited because of Madame Web. Common Morbius W. Morbius Web. They're gonna ship. So they're gonna ship the two together, Madam Web and Morbius. I like the idea that all these superhero Madame films Morbius. are flopping, and so mm. Jared Leto goes into like the main office to be like, "You see, it wasn't me. It wasn't Morbius. It was the current <laughs> state of film, and so we need to do this <laughs> there was again." I could do. It was impossible for me to, <laughs> to fix this. I was caught in the rip, and I was taking. People out are screaming for Morbius too. That's right. This is what they want. This is what gamers crave. Morbius 2. Or he does Morbius seem like a gamer's game. hero, doesn't he? Hey guys, you'll yeah. be printing money. Oh, so, welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, we're, this is EFAP number 250, was it 9? Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're going to be asking and answering the question of, is cinema kill? Or rather, we're going to be looking at someone else asking and answering it. Is Two it other kill? people, in fact. We'll Ooh. possibly have a back and forth ourselves as to whether or not we think such a thing could be said. We First, might on the well, the the block to be checked out would be the Mister Stuckmanator. What is it? Stuckmanizer. Ooh. The Stuckmanizer. Yeah, Stuckmanizer. <laughs> me. me, Captain. It's. Uh, say what you want about his review style, you can't deny it's a fucking cool ass catchphrase. He's he's <laughs> just really he's so explosive and charismatic. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, gonna say really it, it captures the whole vibe. Yeah, that is Stuckman through and through. There is nothing more or less 
That is Chris Stuckman. <laughs> now, Stuckman you and chat, me. you've been Stuckmanized before, but it's worn mm -hmm. off. That's why you got to get Stuckmanized again. I yeah, you have to get myself today already. Every once in a while, yeah. He's recently put out a video called "The Future of Film: Why I'm Whoa. Worried." It's well, like, why, oh, why do you geez. think he would have? Uh, why do you think he would have put out a video like that? Well, in the thumbnail, the fucking Marvels is in there. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, like, you got to be careful there, Stuckmanizer, because he um he made a little promise about the future of his videos about two years ago. We're gonna watch that first because something I did. Oh, I remember, and uh, I so that means it'll be interesting to see what video he's gonna make now. With the mm -hmm. context provided by this older video. So I've, I've got you all the watch together. I assume you're all in, are you? Hopefully. I am all in. I'm yep. going all in, baby. Yes. All right, then. Well, I think we're going to get started. This is just a selection of, like, two minutes. This uh, is when he was becoming a filmmaker. He realized when he very was becoming quickly a man. he didn't want to be a stinky, gross YouTuber for much longer. <laughs> and so That's he why to... he looks so not like one of those. Not like a YouTuber. <laughs> oh yeah, remember nope. one of his most fucking famous things that we've covered was was that in a video? Or was it a Twitter thing where he was like, actually wait, I'll I'll put that this that'll that'll be relevant once you hear what he says here because this is this is all important to understanding his point of view about the film industry and his his way of addressing it. So this, like I said, this was two years ago. I want you to be able to make this and finance this and trust me. Those are the types of things I would love to make videos about. As far as movie reviews. I'm still going to talk about movies. What I'm not going to do anymore is trash filmmakers. Mm. And I know that for trash some people that's Trash filmmakers? Gonna... Um, yeah, well, we'll let him continue, because you need more context for it, I think. It's strange. But it is strange. Uh, it's all very... Wait a minute. Ugh, fucking... But Damn. Remy the Rat told me that, and <laughs> Gusto told me that a trash film can come from anywhere. True. Um, the, it's all in the concept of, because some people will be familiar with this already, he basically says he doesn't like being mean to filmmakers anymore, or really films, because uh, the whole thing is he's becoming a filmmaker and that he appreciates the craft and that we can't as, this is what he said on Twitter, I think, we can't as critics who take a half hour out of our day to like shit something on online compare like our workload and our ability to like shit on things compared to the people who sacrifice like a whole year or more to create a film. Like, it's fucked what did, up. What has that got to do with any... The amount of time <laughs> you put into something doesn't stop the fact that you made trash, and well, therefore, there is something to be said about you because you made it. Well, but consider that they spent a long time and they really cared. I suppose the more interesting it's, part is his assumption that it takes half an hour. So that yeah. was the part that we if took issue takes, with. Like, yeah. I, I would say as much as, like, three years ago. I can't remember when we covered this, because I think it was a tweet... But uh, I was obviously not very happy, considering the whole... In the time it takes me to make, like, one video, he may have made, like, fucking 10,000 or some shit. And he'll be like, that's what we do! And it's like, hmm. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm not just speaking for myself here. This is, this is plenty of people on this cast right now know what it's like to make videos that take a hell of a lot longer than to sit down after you've seen the film and hit record and go, yeah, uh, I liked it. Uh, uh, yeah, but Patreon. The, the or didn't. <laughs> the time that you put into something doesn't affect the quality of it anyway. Like, essentially, he's saying just because they put in more time, it means that it should be valued as such. It's like, no, you, you, it's the end product that matters. Yeah, um, it, it, it's so no one matters most. The yeah. angle he was trying to highlight, and this is where, like, I think he should have just focused his time there, was just, um, he just feels bad. He feels bad making fun of people who work really hard to make stuff. But, um... He moved into, we as, as critics just, don't spend it, very long compared to them, and so we have no right to, like, shit all over their work, which obviously is... Yeah, it's gotta be a broader moral argument rather than more of just a pretty straightforward self-preservation argument, which is that well, you don't want to be the guy who... That, I was yeah. gonna say, that became what everyone thought he was saying it for, is he's becoming a filmmaker, and so now he's like, you know, making fun of filmmakers isn't cool, guys. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, hmm... Oh. Interesting. It's just that there's a taboo against publicly voicing negative criticism if you work in the industry itself. So now that he wants That's to be in too. the industry, he can't do that anymore. That's uh, really what it is. For those who don't know, um, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, like we entertain the hypothetical sometimes, but the idea that I or Frangy or Rags or anyone here will get anywhere near Disney <laughs> in a controlling way, like for products being created, is never going to fucking happen. 
if there was a blacklist, we would be on the blacklists, blacklists, blacklists. Like it's, it's oh, just absolutely, yeah. the There's, amount of they, shit they we've said. They talking to us? Yeah. No way. And that's just, that's the deal you make when you say what you say about this. Like, like, and to an extent, as a company, you don't really want to hire someone who's just blasted you for years. Like, that's not really the smartest thing to do. Um, there's a couple Is that true? Because, like, periodically in my comment section, I'll get people who very confidently tell me that if I was really as good as I seem to think that I am, then I'd be in charge of Disney. <laughs> well... Oh. Here's the real trick, Little Tune. It's not about hating Disney. It, the best way to get hired by Disney for, so let's say, Star Wars is to hate Star Wars. So if you do, they'll be like, yeah. ooh, you're perfect That's for right. the job. If you hate the intellectual property, <laughs> for some reason, many, many, many companies think it's a good idea to hire you. There you go. We it's hired, it's a really hard thing to break into, though, because like, I can't waste $100 million on a series that bombs and get promoted if I don't have the $100 million to waste in the first place. So... How am I ever supposed to break into this racket? It's definitely something well, I, to think about. I have heard there were some tweets that were like, it's so unfair that the Marvels is like crashing and burning all because of these like hateful people making these hateful videos and they'll show like Drinker, Disparu, whoever else. And it's kind of like, man, you guys have the power to just bring down Disney. They should just hire you at this point. You got, you got the power to bring them back up probably as well, right? If you just say, hey. I can't Chino, even get people know. to press the like button. <laughs> 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 yes, but you see, the Marvels was gonna soar in the box office if it weren't for you. If so, for the mm -hmm. pesky actor strike. <laughs> so, that keep it all that in mind. We'll uh, we'll just continue here. See what else he says. Gonna be a disappointment, and I also know that that will probably cost me some views. But I just don't enjoy it anymore. Mm. I don't enjoy talking negatively about film. Mm. So, um, I don't like to do this that often. Positive. Especially when someone talks about their own feelings, but I don't believe you. I uh, I don't think I believe anybody who says they don't enjoy talking negatively about film. That seems like a pretty broad point of view. Like, so you're well, not going to enjoy making fun so of the room ever again, really. I was about to say, if you went for Birdemic or The Room or any one of those sort of classic bad movies, he'd probably be like, "Well, no, those are different." They're, he would say know, those they're different. Not, they're yeah, not, they're not they're not real movies. Right. <laughs> what, uh, what, what do you do when you just talk casually to someone and you just saw a horrible movie and everybody agrees it's horrible? You just go like, yeah, but they worked really hard. They worked so hard. Well, over. I, I have to imagine that as part of his creative process, he would surely look at some movies that he's invariably going to watch and come away with a not great opinion about them and spend some amount of time thinking about why that is. Mm -hmm. um, you can use harsher words and say that that's trashing a movie in your brain, I guess. But at the end of the day, like, that's probably going to happen. And that's not a bad yeah, thing, that, right? If that were his take, if he said, I'm just not going to do it in video form because I don't like what it spreads, that'd be one thing. But he just said, I don't enjoy talking negatively about film. It's like, not at all, mm -hmm. really. Anymore, because he used to. Yeah, he did used to. He made he, he has he something series changed. Called, He's a new um, man. He's evolved as a critic. He has <laughs> hilariosity yeah. reviews where he trashes bad movies. He's not making them anymore. It was hard to make amateur films as a kid, and I knew that. But it's very difficult to make them professionally as an adult as mm -hmm. well. And meeting filmmakers, talking to them at festivals, going onto their sets really seeing how mm. much work goes into even your average not so great movie i don't know why you didn't know that already yeah that's especially <laughs> strange thing to say, yeah. um you yeah, wouldn't need to go on to the sets as opposed to watching behind the scenes stuff you'll be able to see yeah, exactly. all the incredible like, work that gets done you don't need to go on a tour of a game development studio to know that game development is a difficult process well, yeah how many times have we watched a film where they've shown you something you go fuck that would have taken ages yeah, like, you don't need oh, to yeah. see the behind-the-scenes for children and men to know that that yeah. one take took an immense amount of planning and work. Or a, a Bridge Too Far, the amount of shit we saw in that film, we were like, yeah. God, they the did all that for all real? Of pirates, like... Yeah, all of the pyrotechnics, all of the equipment, getting all of the people organized and getting them like, moving We gotta around. borrow the army for this movie, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I thought um... everybody knew that creative endeavors were difficult. Well, and one of the most regretful things you'll find about watching any of the Assembled documentaries is like, wow, look at all these talented people working so hard to make the shit that the writers well, yeah, like uh, squash into nothing in MCU projects. Uh, I mean. Loki one. Yeah. And, um, you see all yeah. the work that went into the sets and the costumes and everything. And then when they start talking about the script. 
Dude, this is fucking crazy <laughs> when they start talking about the characters. They're like, they're going yeah. through such incredible journeys. They, you know, and, and they're never specific. They'll just be like, yeah, well, that's just, you know, they're doing things and this and that. They sure did. One Boy, was, they, don't talked we all about, uh, they talked about Renslayer for maybe 30 seconds. And the purpose of this little 30 second point was to say, she, she's not, she's not a straightforward villain. She's complicated. Anyway, mm -hmm. moving on. Yeah, um, yeah. But there's also the Jonathan Major section. They, I think, use his actual name once. The rest is Kang, and it's only for about it was like forty seconds, I think. Yeah, and it's mainly to... how he relates to the plot. Everyone else got a big section, but his was cut down completely. He is so getting like erased from MCU history. Yeah. <laughs> He's out as. Uh... In any case, yeah, uh, as, as people, you don't even need to be a hyper film fanatic to have seen behind the scenes shit and to go, whoa, that looks incredible. So it feels really mm, inauthentic for him to say, I visited a film set and now I don't feel like making fun of films, which is also well, funny. Like, I started, do you think it was like, I started making connections and I started talking to people hmm. and I started, you know, getting in with, you know, now I was like, oh, like these are people I can talk to. These are uh, bridges that I can build. These are ways for me to access the industry hmm. yeah that's how i took it it was i'm fine with bad mouthing these people <laughs> but now i've met them and now they're actually people in that's, my head and i don't the, like i feel bad <laughs> that's the takeaway a lot of people got from this because they didn't believe the reasoning he's providing because it doesn't it just doesn't sound right does it, it sounds fucking mm. weird well it doesn't make any sense saying like you don't want to judge something because they put time into it like it takes more effort to burn a steak than to cook it properly mm. Like, I, I would, there are many things yeah. that you can put a lot of effort in and you still destroy it. Like, effort in, it doesn't, the quality of something well, isn't affected well, by the and, amount of effort that goes into it. You know what's funny as fuck with all this? His biggest inspirations all shit on shit movies. Like, that's, uh, some, well, that's something yeah, they all do. That is definitely a thing that does happen. I mean, look, Martin's, I mean, look, at he's in the thumbnail. Look at him. He's shit on other people's <laughs> movies. <It is. laughs> and yeah, that's, and, that's, that's that's okay. But they're that's allowed okay to because they're on top of the world. They they could get yeah, away with a lot of stuff. He can't get the though. legend bonus. It's like, oh, okay. The idea that he will never come across a movie that has a scene that's so goofy he'll laugh and make fun of it with his friends. It's just like you want me to believe now that you'll sit there going, guys, come on. They worked hard on that scene. Yeah. That <laughs> you have no idea how hard this is. So. It, it comes across as pity. Like, if that's the only defense you've got, everyone's going, this is awful. It's like, yeah, but they put a lot of time into it, so I feel sorry for them, is essentially the way it comes across that statement. Um, I mean, I would say that that's probably a big part of it, but I imagine another part of it as well is just not wanting to burn bridges. Um, yeah. yeah. Which, if he said that, I think everybody would just be like, oh, yeah, of course. Uh, um, but instead, it needs to be presented as some like moral. Yeah, position. we'd all understand it. But if at the same time, yeah. I feel like everyone would be called him a cuck if he said, "I can't speak uh... negatively about people's films anymore." Okay, <laughs> I need, I want to, I, I need to have a chance in this industry, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, mm. it would be interesting to say that out loud, though, because that is true to a large degree. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. they wouldn't like you for it though, because now they'd be like, "I bet he really hates my movies." Just lying to my face about it. Because that's <laughs> well, what you're saying. I mean, that. If five movies come out and you say I'm not speaking negatively about any movies anymore, and then you go, one was good, two was good, three I saw, three, four was good, five was good. It's like, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you either lie or it's obvious what yeah. you think anyway. Isn't that what just... what's his name Hideo Kojima does? Yes, on Twitter, it's very funny. <laughs> I saw the Marvels, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> that was it one was of the funniest tweets I've ever seen. Because normally when he sees a movie and he likes it, he goes like, oh, like this and this and this. And then he just saw, I just saw the Marvels in IMAX. I, was like, I, I like what the film had to say. <laughs> um, the stuff that happened in it sure was things. Yeah. And boy, uh, <laughs> you know. It was one of the films of all time. That's what people say. Goes into even your average not so great movie. I just don't feel like doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk negatively about filmmakers. I don't want to trash filmmakers. It would be strange for me to be making movies and also shitting on other filmmakers. Also, why? see, that's a different why? argument, and it's not what? true. <laughs> it wouldn't that's, be strange. Yeah, that's normal. strange. There are okay, so lot. here's a hypothetical. What, is, what if someone makes a movie that's like a super mega Nazi and wants to kill all the Jews for real and makes a movie? You're still not going to yeah, feel like you could shit on that about that. But, well, does this apply to YouTubers? Are you allowed to shit on fellow YouTubers, or is that weird? Because you're a YouTuber, Because he makes YouTube videos. I mean, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Media, there are a lot of authors who were literary critics. 
Like, I don't know why it's it's treated as this harsh divide where it's like there are the creators and then there are critics who are not creators, even if they're doing it through some creative medium of some kind. Well, yeah. When What's really interesting boring. about him is, like, how many times like, do we hear, you can't make fun of it, you don't do it yourself. This is the opposite. You can't make fun of it, you do it yourself. You do it yourself. Which, well, again, I don't think it's any surprise that the kind of people who feel compelled to create may also be the kind of people who feel compelled to speak about the, uh, like, about the industry that they're a part of or the art form that they love. Like, it's not really surprising at all, because you, you're passionate yeah. about it. And so, yeah, I was going to say as well, like, if you think about this from multiple parameters, some people have mentioned in chat already, it's like, so what does he have to say about someone like Drinker, who's trying to make film, trying to talk about where film should go, and also criticizing films as they come out? Does he just see him mm -hmm. as, like, a, an enigma? He's like, what, why would you do any of that? You crazy well, man. Well, like, that as like a, an impossibility, like it's a like a married bachelor. It's an impossibility. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is again, it, and also a critic. It just doesn't. This feels bullshit. It's just like, what do you? This doesn't because um as well because you're talking about critics and the, the the difference, the line that's drawn. Who would you say is the biggest critic of any director's film? Probably the director. Yeah. Yeah, well, because that may have been true. Now, <laughs> certainly, <laughs> certainly for the creatives that are like you know super invested, every that single are, shot is scrutinized, right? They're like obsessed because it's part of the process. It's just a part of the process, and then and then it just comes down to sometimes people don't just do the one thing. Sometimes people do more than the one thing. Yeah. Sometimes people aren't just a director. Sometimes people aren't just a an, an author. <laughs> like a lot of authors are journalists, or again, literary critics. Like, that's not uncommon. There's plenty of that on this platform already. There are... God, there's so many arguments he's making that are so strange. It's like, there's plenty mm. of praise on this fucking platform too, so... Yeah. Does that mean you'd stop so doing it? No. Count. Yeah. So many channels dedicated to talking about bad films and negativity about movies. There's no shortage of that. I'm the positive guy. I'm a positive guy. <laughs> What's the point in being positive for the sake of being positive? That's not genuine at all. Yeah. That's when you be but become is, cinema wins. There's a lot of people oh, that no. do that. There's a lot of Twitch streamers that are like, this is a positive stream. I will be positive all the time. They Ugh. also tend to be the ones that burn out because it's fake. Nobody's positive all the time. So yeah. if you try and do it, you will inevitably burn out faster than someone who's just, you know, you see the good and the bad of everything. And that's just how they are. Um, and... There's definitely YouTube channels that do the same. They will never criticize anything. So even his argument about there's so many negative channels, yeah, there's also a lot of fake positive ones. Dude, the there's also there's an implicit criticism in all of the I'm going to deliberately be positive and only talk about good films though as well. And the implicit criticism is that you're not then going to talk about something. And by omission, you're effectively saying that that thing is kind of shit and not worth my time, or I'm deliberately ignoring it to avoid seeming negative. Which is itself a negative impression. All those people who say, well, I'm, I'm going to go and talk about this art house thing because, you know, I'm just above Marvel. <laughs> well, what are you saying really principally there? Is it that you really, really like this particular art house thing? Or is it that you think Marvel is just really, really crap, but too many people are saying it? And so you're going to just pretend like you're better than to criticize mm. it. I mean, a lot of people want to be different. A lot of people want to be the one. Well, actually, you know, I said this before it was cool. I'm the one who pioneered the trend. That was me. Me, baby, me. The, there is a strange amount of people um, where it's like, I can't like this thing because it's popular. It's like oh, they yeah, have yeah. to find oh, the, yeah. the edgy thing. That nobody, else, Even if it's awful, they'd rather say that they like the awful thing just to stand out and be different. I think, no offense to him, but if Theo was here, he'd say he has a bit of that. <laughs> like if, if ever something gets popular, he suddenly like he's like, hmm. Not as really fond good. of it anymore. <laughs> it used to be the cool, small, known thing. Now everyone likes. I mean, uh, it's been known to kill franchises, right? Like a lot of people would cite that Rick and Morty was destroyed by becoming so popular. Um, yeah. To an extent, some people think like Dark Souls or From as a franchise creator, like they they become more homogenized over time to appeal to larger audiences, but. You know, it, it's uh, so you can point to things more than just the fact that it is getting more popular, but there are people who feel that way, yeah. On this platform already, there are so many channels dedicated to talking about bad films and negativity about movies. There's no shortage of that. When you see a bad film sometimes, if you're a film critic, and I can tell you this from experience, you get kind of excited because you realize, oh, like, 
I could really like make a good review of this and I could really talk about all the problems with this and just really let them know how shitty they did. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to see Basically him my channel. the motive it's like yeah that's a fine motive because you're talking about trying to create something entertaining right but like shouldn't he then realize like oh wait if I'm to praise anything then naturally there has to be good examples create bad examples as a scale right so like they would what, why couldn't you always make it because I hate the whole positive negative thing it's like if, if there's a problem with how someone made a movie, let's say a dead pixel, how crazy would it be if someone made a fucking movie with a dead pixel in it? That would be nuts. No one would ever do that. But let's say someone like, yeah. I don't know, Zack Snyder did that. That would be what? nuts. That would be crazy. Never. He'd never do that. But if he did that, you could point that out and be like, you need to be careful about this sort of stuff. Luckily, it can be sorted out in post, especially if it's streaming, or if you just you know fill in the fucking dead pixel every time it shows up with one... It's, you know, it's, it's easy to solve. But like, you don't have to make that um, some kind of like horrible, negative, angry thing that can be positive. You can be like, look at this example of uh, you know a, an experienced director making a very small and obvious mistake that um, you know you wouldn't expect. And it's like, and the solution yeah. there's several, and that this has happened before in history. And you can talk about cameras and pixels and stuff. You know what I mean? Like he's like he's broadened out negative as just being something that um, you can't do anymore. So I just said you guys are so baffled that people aren't as toxic toward others as you guys are. I don't. I don't think we've like. Are you in the right stream? I don't know if you've listened to anything that we've said so far. But um... and also, yeah, if you're a filmmaker yourself, you'd want to keep your own house clean, so to speak. You know. Yeah, I don't. This is the thing, though. I, I the whole negative positive. I don't like that. Um, criticism is always considered negative. There's like no positive that can come from it. I find no joy in that anymore. I just don't. A few years back, I stopped doing my worst of the year videos for that same reason. And ever since then, I've had a tough time enjoying negativity about film because I love film so much and I want to be a champion for film. So I don't see how you, you wouldn't be a champion for film by also recognizing where film is failing. Yeah, yeah, I'd say we're a champion. We're champions for films. Push up what's good. We talk a lot about shit Suppress stuff. what's bad. Well, not even suppress. Highlight what's bad, right? Like, that's how you would put it. You, you want to... <laughs> general improvement as well because like, an awful lot of the mistakes that are being made in a lot of modern films are really basic things but unless you're really looking for them it certainly feel like you're starting out as a writer and you're not necessarily putting into words everything you feel about what you're watching and so like your influences are influencing you without you really understanding completely why it can actually be really helpful it's like when i was watching you guys before i was on youtube and i was sort of writing on the side and things it did get me thinking, hang on a minute, yeah, no, does this character action actually pay off anything later on? Am I making him do this because the plot needs him to? Or is it the thing the character would do in the action, given that the character is who I've written him to be? And like that stuff, it sounds really simple when you just lay it out like that. But like, speaking for myself, and I think quite a lot of other people, it's not always at the forefront of your mind. So criticizing these things is in aid of a general improvement, not just in the film you're criticizing, but also other people who might be inspired by that film or by what you're saying to go and write something better. It's ultimately, it's, a, it's an aspirational, optimistic thing, not a, I hate this thing and I'm just going to shit on it for laughs. And yeah. if you can't break down why something is bad specifically and explain it, then you'd, be very, you'd find it very difficult to make something that was good. And you might not actually know. If yeah, you well, can't explain I mean. it, then you might not know it. I think, yeah, like, and, and it generates the scale. I, I don't see how you can have praise without criticism, uh, uh, you know, as a whole. I mean, you, you can you can create, a, like, an environment where you don't ever speak of criticism, but it's always uh, implicit, and everything that you say is praiseworthy. It devalues the praise as well, because th there's only really two options. Either you just don't talk about the bad movies, or you lie, and you say they're good, or you point out what you liked about them and ignore what you didn't like. Yeah, what are you supposed um, to do if, you're, if someone's like, what do you think of the characters? And you just go, yeah, you know. No, they worked really hard at the acting. Somebody, you know, if you receive praise from somebody who is willing to criticize you, that praise is meaningful. But if it's somebody who just says, eh, yeah, good, yeah, nice, well done, good job, all the time, what are you meant to do with that? I guess you just have to assume that you've been getting it right all the time and that there's no need to improve or change or grow. I guess so. And you have to keep yourself sharp. You have, as a person, you can't fall out of, I mean, we've seen it time and time again with directors. I mean, look at Ridley Scott and James yeah. Cameron, where you're just like, what the fuck happened? What, like, what, what happened? 
what, how did you lose your edge? Did you stop caring? Mm. Did you change into a negative way? Like, what, what is it? You need to be able to keep yourself well, he, honed and sharp. If he had, like, a friend who's a filmmaker, would he actually give them no tips? Because that would be negative. The implication well, being I that would, they're failing. I would imagine that... I gotta imagine that's not the case. <laughs> exactly, maybe, right? Maybe it would have to not be like, the case. Oh, no, among friends oh, no. or with myself, I'll be critical. Um, but, th but then at that point, you would have to extrapolate out and say, but well... If you can accept that there is value in criticizing yourself or receiving criticism from your friends, do you also believe that there is some value from criticism being levied publicly or from other people who are completely unrelated or from you to other things that are completely unrelated to you? Is there any benefit in public criticism of creative endeavors? Um, I think that's exactly the case. I think that's how Hollywood is now. Because many times you go through these movies and you're like, at no point did any of you think that this was awful. Did nobody tell you it no was awful? No one said anything. Nobody point out that's anything. Sure. Yeah. And it's just everyone on the sets are yes. Yeah, man. only things. They're not. They'll get fired. Come to mind was uh, Iman Vellani, right? Like she had a thing of talking about continuity, which was like wild to hear. It was just like, what? Someone in Marvel is talking about something making <laughs> sense? That's weird. Well, you saw. You saw how um, is it General Ortega was treated when she was like, I, yeah, I, difficult this to work with. To do. You had Henry Cavill <laughs> on The Witcher. Every single time anyone goes, I don't like this. I think this needs to be changed. They're always treated as a problem. They always headbutt other people. And General Ortega, if it hadn't been a, the massive hit it was, probably would have faced a similar thing that Henry Cavill did. Yeah, uh, which is absurd. Like the they seem to be very much unique highlights of actors who are invested in the characters behaving as they should, so to speak. But they've like beaten that out of everybody in the MCU and Star Wars at this point. They'll just do yeah, everything. It's so, it's so strange, though, isn't it? Because when you watch like when you watch the old Bungie Vidox, one of the things that they consistently say is that they are in an environment where everybody feels comfortable, just very like brashly criticizing each other's work. Just not not trying to couch it in pleasant terms, but just saying this sucks, you need to do it again, or you need to fix it, this isn't working. And then they highlight that as a positive because it means that everybody's on the same page, everybody's pushing each other. Everyone gets their turn, it. everyone's open for it, yeah, exactly. no one's above it, and, and, and no one's beneath it. Ultimately, the point is to make a great game, and of course, Bungie used to make great games. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they worked. did, used to make great it did, games. You know, it did work, that process of being very openly critical of each other. So I you am just, going you need to, to bring the, it's this culture. You need to build up a culture around you where you can do these things. And well, a I particular thought, yeah. culture will it will at least as long as you can maintain that culture, it will sort of keep you on the right track. It will set you on a good path forward. Yeah, like I I'm in a writer's room pretty much every day at the moment. Amber's brought in pretty oh, much with oh, the explicit oh. instruction, tell us if we're being shit. And so <laughs> I get to, shit. Yeah, it's so like I get to sit there and say, like, does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. And everyone takes it nicely. And then occasionally I'll have to write something and someone will say exactly the same thing. And it can be a really horrifying process because you've sat down for hours and you've penned something and you think, actually, I'm pretty proud of that. And then it sits down in the writer's room and someone says, hang on, that bit right at the beginning just makes no sense and the rest of it falls apart. And it's mm -hmm. not nice when you're told that, but actually it's absolutely necessary. And it, it pretty much happens evenly and equally as well. And so the finished product will be so much better because you have, as you say, this culture of people being perfectly honest with each other in terms of their creative decisions. And the, the hope is that at the end of that, something comes out which is at least coherent, but ideally very, very good. But it wouldn't be if nobody was sitting around in that writer's room saying, yeah, that thing you did was a bit shit. And the, the, the point being, if, if there is a benefit to doing that in these sort of circumstances, is there a benefit from public criticism? I don't see how the answer could possibly be, no, there is no benefit at all whatsoever. Yeah, remember, it's, it comes it's back helpful. to how he feels. He doesn't enjoy it anymore. He doesn't like the experience. That, I mean, if that's the reason, then okay. Well, the thing. But, I don't but, buy it. Yeah. I think that if a friend said, <laughs> where can I improve? And if he said, I'm, I can't tell you because it makes me feel awful. Be like, what? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'd almost be tempted to. Well, then, can you do that and help me still? Can yeah, you could, could you can you yeah. deal with the pain just for me as a favor? Please? Yeah, like as a friend, you know. Oh, we're cool. And he's like, I'll try. And he says, That's right. Uh, you need better lighting, bro. Oh, you're saying the film's too dark. Uh, why do so you I want lights? to be a champion for film? So I am going to distance Ugh. myself from film criticism and embrace. That's film crazy. That's your channel. 
Well, so the, but again, the criticism isn't strictly negative. Um, yeah. Well, it goes both ways. Out. He said he's going to embrace have it. film appreciation. How, what is it to appreciate if you don't recognize where it falls and where it succeeds? What is it to appreciate without some form of critical process of yeah. analyzing what is good and bad? Watching all the terrible, 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 terrible movies these last X years during EFAP has mm. certainly given me great appreciation, not even... Not even just for the really good movies, but even for the fine movies. The movies yeah. that are okay. I'm like, oh, okay, I can appreciate this movie. That's an, you know, that's an okay film. Um, kind of how it goes. But so that's that's to give you a context for something he in, he intended to do at that point. Uh, yeah. To make sure you understand his position on that. Uh, and then he made a video called The Future of Film, which is the main event, all right? It's just worth keeping this in mind while we go on to his opinions of what's happened to Flem. You've got to support the guys that's been shinned. Form. Uh, different intro. No, no rock music. Yeah, he's serious now. He's not doing Yeah, we've grown up. We've silliness. grown up, Fringy. We must leave childish things behind. He's not going to stuck with us. <laughs> <laughs> Movies! It's very filmish. Oh, that's, What's going on, I everybody? Like Hope that. you're having a great I hate that intro so much. <laughs> I, I really don't like that at all. I think that's awful. That I think, sucks. I think I prefer his old one, honestly. His old one, yeah. It was a little bit more earnest and fun. This one is just... Uh, it was quick to the punch as well. It was pretty short. That one sounded bad. I missed the like, explosion. The sounds were unpleasant. I, I said it. Explosion, honestly, I do. Great day, so this is not going to be a typical movie review. It's going to be more of a discussion video right. based off of a few different topics that relate to Marvel and mm. movie theaters. Martin Scorsese, in his opinions, I've never really talked about that. At this point, Martin may as well just be cinema. That's how it works now for discussion. <laughs> he, is, yeah. uh, he was sent by God as a film real. He did. By the person. movie gods. Before, about to how he said save us that all. Marvel is in cinema and those movies are more of roller coaster rides i want to talk about movie theaters what does that and me yeah the... well that's the thing in it? we can't even do anything with those we had phrases this conversation i think on one of the the previous anniversary i can't remember now but it was like please whenever you say a, a movie is like a roller coaster tell me what you mean by that and whether or not it's a good thing and if you're being critical well wait he said he wouldn't be critical anymore so i guess it's not critical mm. Oh, dang going it. to them and who's supporting them and i want to talk about the current state of the mcu so let's cover these right. things and i hope it's going to be fun yeah. before we go further i do want to give a special thank you oh, to the sponsor okay. for this video better help uh, um, do we do we know yeah, already better help they, have they have they redeemed themselves i've seen there them is, pop up everywhere again even if they did i'd be i still am very uncomfortable I, with a sponsorship for mental health that just well, yeah i watched a video the other day and it was for like a lawyer service and i'm like i I don't know if I could, in my right mind and in good conscience, promote a like a lawyer service or like super a serious. Le like legal counsel or like mental help. I'm like I don't know anything about these services. I don't know if they're good or not. I don't it's, require the need of mental help yet. And I think it's made so, even more awkward when you have like a full throated sort of like no, it's good, it's good, and it's always like you, you're saying this because how do you know it's good? Yeah, but they're also saying it as like a I know I'm being paid, but this one's good. This like for me, it would have to be something that I use, that I like, that I then after that decide to seek a sponsorship for. Yeah. If I'm Much the one who sought out the sponsor, like if I did a like I use a, mm -hmm. like a Manscaped razor and I use it, and boys, Manscaped razor is really good. It cuts so clean and it's it's worth the price and it makes me look so good. Moi, ladies love it. I would like to promote this product because I use it myself and I like it and I think people will want to ha to get one instead of uh yeah, BetterHelp called me and there's some mental health service and they're going to give me money to tell people to seek out their mental health services. But trust me, I don't, I, this I don't one's know good. If I can check it out. Yeah, like I don't how have you verified this? Have you used it like a razor? I think Do, he have is, you gotten That's the thing, right? With all these promotions, it has to be that. It has to be that they used it because otherwise it would look awful for their integrity, right? So it has to be that he was in a low place and that better help got him out of it. Um, you know, if he said that, if he was like, I legitimately was in a really bad place, I, I had a, something bad happened, or my father died, or something, this depression or whatever, and then I used was better dying. help, <laughs> cinema died, and I got depressed, but I didn't want to criticize it, so you I went to Marvels? better help, and, you know, then I'd be ad? like, okay, that's something. 
Has there ever been an ad for BetterHelp where someone said, now I'm being perfectly honest, I've never been depressed or anxious, I don't have mental, like, They paid me, so I'm promoting them. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. I've never been depressed on account of all this money they're paying that. me. Well, hey, that means their service works. If they pay them to promote the service and the money keeps them from depression, then, I mean, BetterHelp's working. It's doing its job. Uh, the, the, whole, the whole thing just seems off. Hey, well, let's talk about movies. Me, a movie guy. Anyway, our sponsor is a mental health service. Yeah, 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 there's no link between, because you don't need to be like a channel of any kind to say, you should use this razor blade, you, know you know should the easiest... use this food delivery service, you know, you know? Like, those are things all prom... people kind of use. Easiest thing for me to promote when Little would just call me and say, hey, you want a sponsor? It's like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll shop at your fucking place every week. <laughs> A lot Normal of product makes sense to me, but like the idea of giving wholehearted recommendations for like services that are fundamentally beyond your field of expertise, I I, I, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I, I got to be able to vouch for it. I need to be able to vouch for it. And I the mean, internet it's is like filled with lonely people who are dealing with a lot mentally, and the idea that you're like. Well, I've been paid, so all of you, I'm going to sell my trust to you to send you over there, hopefully gain me some bucks, gain them some bucks, and then, yeah, maybe you'll feel better, but either way, you're out, you buddy. Just feels awkward. By the mm -hmm. way, Little Rock Zoo, if you want to, if you want to call me up, <laughs> and, uh, and it, yeah, you, you, you can, you can contact me, right? So do it. Call me up, Little Rock Zoo. I'll promote the shit out of that zoo. What's Zoos the are prize? Great. What's the what's the everybody's favorite animal at Little Rock Zoo? Who's the main? Star I don't actually know. Guy? I haven't I haven't been in a while, and I need to. But it's kind of starting to get like cold. Is winter's you know starting to come in? It's fall. So, yeah. Um, so the animals are getting lonely. Uh, the let's see. What's my much. favorite? Animal? I, I don't know. I've always, I. <sighs> Mm, that's a really good question. We I think we're lucky. I don't think a lot of places have them, but we had we we have at least one maned wolf, and those are always neat. They have the really long legs. Um, you've got penguins are pretty neat as long as they're actually oh, yeah. swimming around and stuff. When they're just like standing, it's, it's like that's neat. But you know, you like to see them doing stuff generally. Um, uh, ooh, I'm really I don't know. I I kind of like a lot of different animals. I've always liked uh, fish in aquariums. I'm always keen on. I really like uh, the underwater stuff, like crabs and. And, and like seabirds, things of that nature, all the fish swimming around because they can be so colorful and different shapes and sizes. And plus there's often like otters there and those are great, those are great fun. And the seals, they're really neat. Are you sure you're not sponsored? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, see, that's the thing. It's just, I just love, animals are great and zoos are great. So go to the zoo, support your local zoos, everyone. With massive life Ooh. adjustments for me, making a film, becoming a father, and this year with the strikes that went on, I better help can film in front of becoming a father. Better, better, <laughs> better, better, better help can help you when you're making a film. Like <laughs> my life's gotten a lot more busy. I'm making a film, and oh yeah, I became a father. You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> it was funny when they when they listed without thinking about that. <laughs> on, I, I, I poke fun, is but it's 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 fun. It's fine take a single meeting when it came to anything regarding a screenplay that I had written, which was very difficult for me in this integral part of my film career. And so it was really oh, great I, to I imagine to that the way uh, that the help sponsorship works is you need to start with some story about yourself and yeah. why you needed mental health services. Yeah. See, this yeah, is most the other of them do gross... tell you that you have to give a personal experience or you have to show yourself using the product. But I don't really know. Like, it's hard to do that with something like a, a therapy sponsor because like most therapy programs at minimum will have you for about, say, like four sessions. So like once a week, so you'd have to use it for a month just to do this ad placement, which right. I mean, it's not impossible that that's what he's done. It's just and that... you have to need it, you know, not just because I feel like if it's one of those things you don't need, if I don't need mental health services, if I don't need any kind of counseling if, or anything like that, then I don't know how, like, how do you know? It's like going to a doctor if you're well, it's like just... with how... How can you give broad, generalized advice on something that is so fundamentally personal? Because the reasons why you're going to be seeking out mental health services may end up being vastly different than someone else. You might be dealing with it for relatively mundane problems compared to somebody who's, like, very mentally ill. And yeah. I, I just, I, I don't know, everything about it just seems off. The idea of here is just, like, a broad sponsorship on a video that is completely unrelated in a field that I'm not familiar with really at all, to recommend, like, mental health. It, it, it's 
I, well, and I it's the know. repercussions. It's, it's the gravitas of like what can happen if that doesn't work out. We're dealing with people who are potentially suicidal, whose life has come to like essentially a standstill because of their you know their problems. So it is like if you end up recommending Manscaped or something like that, you know, something that's not really that important, and it turns out, ah, actually, this Manscaped razor isn't. I mean, it's fine, but it's not really all that good, and it didn't really help. It's like, I, I guess that happens, and it's not really your fault. Sometimes, you know, products just aren't always that great, but, like, it, you, don't, you don't lose anything, really. You're out, of, you're out of a little bit of change, I suppose, for, yeah. you know, buying the thing, but it's not like, now I'm even more depressed. Now I have even less faith in the, you know, mental well, Yeah, health, that's the worst-case scenario, you know, that field. you have immense trust in the particular creator. They direct you to this, you spend money on it, and then you feel even worse afterward. Mm -hmm. That's just a big old combo of, oh, fuck. Like, and I uh, think it's, I think it's the element of, because I, I hear this from people sometime when they say, you know, I'm really sad, I'm depressed or whatever. And, and then I say, well, you should go and consult a, you know, you need to go see a doctor or medical help. And they're like, yeah, but I did. And it didn't really work. So I don't do that anymore. And I'm like, well, shit. Now I, I guess you'll just die sad then. I don't know. <laughs> like, what, what are we doing? Like, they, they're, they're faith. Didn't say that to their him. <laughs> 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 their, their faith and their confidence in these fields has been eroded. By bad experiences. Yeah, yeah, that's and the important thing. And what if that was better thing. help, you know? Yeah, well, and, uh, as I think Tall Biscuit said it, right, that the, the whole idea with these promotions is that you are selling your trust. That's the entire thing they're trying to buy off you, the, the sponsorships. And that if there is any way to sound more authentic, over time, those will be incorporated into the contract. Mm -hmm. So, like, if there's a way to genuinely sound like you're selling this out of the goodness of your heart in the contract, that goes in a year or, two, you know, however long. So it, when they begin with, like, the... I was in a difficult place. It's like, did, did, was that in the contract? Did you have to say it? Was that a quote like that they told you to say? It's like, mm, it makes it all like weird and. Well, I mean, when I mean I've, I've, heard, I've heard better help ads from multiple places, and they all start the same and go about the same. It's all they generally the, the, give you a, a sort yeah, of yeah, blueprint yeah. or basic. Well, and how fucked up is that? All the, the raid shadow legends, they have all the same thing. Millions of players, top rated. Da, 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 yeah. if, if they were like, me. you know, we want to sell the product professionally, so like you go you talk to one of our guys, and you're like, okay, and they're like, so how are you feeling? And you're like, I, I, I'm, I'm fine. And then they're like, okay, uh, tell me about your childhood. And then you just do, and then like after like a half hour, they're like, do you feel better at all? And you go, sure. I uh, guess it I was guess. nice to re reminisce about my childhood. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everything I guess was way bigger back then. But that's enough strange. to count. So now I'll promote this. It's like, uh... I don't know. Just yeah, and plus, if you're Chris Stuckman, if you're really an, a YouTuber of any decent size, you can be really picky and choosy with the kinds of sponsorships that you can do. Um, especially if you're oh, really yeah, active, you'd have thought. you get emails all the time, and you can reach out to people all the time. The crazy and thing you is, you can reach out to people who can get people to come your way. Um, I know the uh, Rags and Fringy are especially with along with me. I'm not sure how many people here are, but like there was a big controversy with BetterHelp back in the day that I thought that more people were aware of than I guess are because. I would have yeah, thought. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I brought that even up. Yeah, I would have this thought that you'd stay away uh, from BetterHelp as a sponsorship because of what happened back in the day with a lot of YouTubers. Uh, I'd never heard of them before. It's, like, what, what happened? Um, the it was the, a... the therapist didn't need qualifications to join. They could just join. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Which is probably really fucking important. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of those things where, like, I would have thought that would have been illegal, like, automatically. Like there you was, there was like a process. That. Right? Both, think both that my parents was, that would be work illegal. in mental yeah. health charities, and actually, the the legal requirements for becoming a therapist are staggeringly low. Well, this is why um, it was said like surely they've not made that mistake now. Like surely things are better now. But like I haven't looked into better help, nor would I. This is just one I would completely <clears throat> avoid. Turn to better help. Better help connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased mm -hmm. advice. You can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, as a video chat, or even via messaging if you prefer that. Whatever is the most comfortable. Ver is it via or via? I think it depends both? on your accent. I think Maybe. Both. Did I you know. know? Did you know that's the Latin word for road? We are. I didn't know that, honestly. Yeah. There you go. So I learned something Neat. new today. Thank you, Ryan. Right, you did it. Thanks, BetterHelp. <laughs> Yay! We have a fucking ancient group. BetterHelp. <laughs>
I'm glad you're reaching wonderful. out for help during such a tough time. Could you tell me a little more yeah. about how else you've been feeling? You've mentioned you don't feel motivated to do anything, so I'm wondering if you might also be feeling tired a lot lately, starting a new job, being around all new people is a bit... I read that it was really big cringe. <laughs> like, no, it's it's big, yeah, being around people is pretty fucking cringe. <laughs> I should know, I'm a therapist. <laughs> Sometimes our minds take a bit longer to adjust. In that adjustment period, it's pretty normal for someone to experience changes in their mood. So you gotta wonder, imagine the big new controversy for them is that the therapist the AI. AI. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> oh. These days, yeah. Have you guys heard about shock me. there was a bunch of people who had AI girlfriends on the service that the owner like went to jail so it shut down and none of them could access their girlfriends anymore? Oh no. I, like, oh. <laughs> I can't access my girlfriend anymore because she was never real. <laughs> I've, I've not heard that one, but I know there was one similar, same story, load of AI girlfriends, and the woman that made it was like, this is really bad, I need to stop this. So she took, changed the service rules, and they were like, you've just killed my girlfriend. <laughs> and so she, she like, allowed all the original people to use it, but no new ones. You killed uh... my girlfriend. <laughs> that was literally what I was saying, you killed my girlfriend. <laughs> it's gonna be like, hey, good movie. Over 30,000 therapists in their network, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than may be available thousands. in your area. And if the therapist expensive. your first match with doesn't feel like the right fit, yeah, which can be does. common mm. when starting therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or... That seems strange to say you can switch to a new therapist at no additional cost, as if the therapist that you have is so... Like, like you can just change them. Yeah, like like I don't like almost. this therapist. Well, maybe maybe you need to not like your therapist. Maybe you should yeah. potentially be apprehensive or confrontational with your therapist. Maybe yeah, that's, that's a big. Maybe that's exactly what you need. For therapists of the world over right now, especially in the West, is this uh, conflict of should they be in any way like uh, giving affirmation or should they not be challenging is part of the experience and like there's some people who like call abuse on the therapist if they try to tell them like you might be wrong about this they'll be like no i'm here to spill my feelings and for you to tell me that i'm right and that my life is <laughs> like, hard no but that's not how that works though <laughs> it's not gonna make you any better they're like oh you're saying i'm bad you're saying i need you a help. racist <laughs> i was like what god or anything like that. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, How many are still life. using it? How many do you think you yeah, might benefit from like, Doesn't that sound <laughs> like, okay, especially like, after delving into so much <laughs> RoboCop in the past like month, this sounds like an OCP ad. You're gonna live it a does, better, yeah. happier life. If you don't like your life. therapist, you get a new one, yeah. I buy yeah. that for a dollar. You just need to crank it up a little bit, be like, yeah, your, your therapist will, if you pay them a little extra, they'll come and give you a fucking hand job or something. You'll be like, oh, wow, that's a great oh, service, no. 100%. I'll pay for, I'll pay for, yeah, tell me Check more. out the link in my description below, betterhelp.com slash <laughs> robo wants an Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> what, what if they were called worse help? Oh. Chris Stuckman that not only supports this channel, mm -hmm. but it will also give you two audible next time, Chris. It's better. 10% off your off. first month with better help. That's better. Oh, uh, there's something about like getting coupons for therapy. That's it's just weird. Is kind of dystopian, <laughs> you know? It's weird, isn't it? It's all weird. I don't like 10 it. percent off your next therapy session. It's like I, I don't know. It, it's weird. It's really weird. Help.com slash Chris Stuckman. That link is in the description below. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I saw yeah, Oh, you didn't you, say the thing of the video wouldn't have been possible without BetterHelp. This video wouldn't have been possible without BetterHelp. Stuck my eyes. It took me. my cameras na, hostage, na, na, and if na, I didn't na, do na. this, I couldn't do this video. All right, let's show them the marbles, Chris. Let's do it. The marbles. Yeah, dude. There's a lot of people talking about this movie right now. I'm not really going to talk about it no, in depth. No, not really. Oh, that's, that's, not, that's, part <laughs> that's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. It Nobody seems that no one really gives a shit. Actually, Chris. That it's a short <laughs> movie. It's a fairly breezy watch. I like the Mon Villani watch. quite a bit a as Miss Marvel. I thought she all was fantastic. All of the most boring takes. Yep, all the, of the, the most boring. You like her quite a lot. She Pretty. seems nice. It's but part of his, as part of his take, it was. it's a short movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's well, a short what do you mean? Movie. He's, he's, he's because Crazy. these are the common takes. Wow, it's short for a Marvel movie. It's also a very light movie. It's not very weighty or dramatic. And Iman Vellani is entertaining. Like those are the most common perspectives that get given out when people don't want to be more specific about <laughs> anything that they like or dislike about the film.
Also, if we're going to write notes that you're going to read while you're on camera, like, stick it near your camera, at least. <laughs> he's looking oh, about people over also, the you, I'm sorry. I just, yeah, he's, well, you just made right. me realize, how is he needing bullet points to remember the film was short and I liked him on Volani? Hey, look, and, right, I'm not going to hold it against him that he's, like, got notes, okay? It's that's not fine. the point. It's no, the, you can't remember your basic take can't. on the film. for this. <laughs> you shouldn't need notes for this. There are some things you need notes for. This isn't okay. one of them. This is okay. It's just using his notes. It's fine. I'm not criticizing for having notes. I'm criticizing for having to go to his notes to remember what he thought about the Marvels. Doesn't well, that, isn't that indicative of the fact that, that he has no idea yeah. what he thinks of the Marvels? Isn't that an interesting thing? It's kind of odd. You know, it makes you think there's so much subtext in this frame of him having to read his notes <laughs> to remember what he thinks about this movie. I just don't know why he, he has a lot of the right of his camera his and not just off. like below it or above it so it doesn't it's not as obvious. Or you need or make it a part of the video where you you have a clipboard and you have notes. Yeah, oh, you just and then you like you do the little thing where you like in you you sort of well, like flick them. Anchor. It's like an yeah, anchor. Yeah, or you you go through your notes and you turn over the page on the clipboard and put it behind and and you just go through them, and that's part of your thing. Is like, I've got all my notes here that I took down for the video. Let's go through them. And that can be a part of your style, you and your clipboard. My clipboard of, my clipboard of thoughts. Me and my clipboard. Some people in chat have said he looks really defeated and sounds really defeated. I mean, obviously, just as a, if cinema is kill, face. then he is deflated. That's how that works. I mean, he sounds like that every video I've I was, seen him in. I was, was going to say that, but I was like, is that me? He's also talking about the Marvels, and he's not allowed to say anything critical about it. So I think that's... <laughs> oh, you should, hear, anybody, yeah. you should hear how he ends his uh, review of the movie. Although I don't really know what the movie's about. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, I, don't, I guess I don't it was really about blame you for not knowing what it's about. That was fair, though. The, I think the first time I spoke with Fringy after seeing it, I said, I don't know what the film's about. Um, it was only after <laughs> thinking about it for a while that it was like, I guess teamwork is the way to make the dream work. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, teamwork is good. Yeah, girls get it done. Yeah, that's pretty negative, Chris. <laughs> like, Whoa. You better be careful there. Not what the film's about. Bridges burn. That's, that's what I'll say. What I really want to talk about is... Okay, what so I, what if what if Nia DaCosta was like, hey, you know, Chris, that really hurt That really hurt, with, yeah. And I'm uh, a filmmaker. You, you probably don't know until you come onto my yeah, set how much we work right. real hard. <laughs> you, would you take it back? Take, take down your video, edit it. And say that you knew what it was about. It was about love and freedom. I don't really consider a debate anymore. It's really just a discussion point that I'm seeing a lot. And it was jump started when Martin Scorsese said that Marvel movies and superhero films weren't really cinema. And Which, that um, they were more... well, wait, I don't mm -hmm. think he said weren't really cinema. I think he said he they, said weren't, they weren't, weren't cinema. cinema. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, this, this, this little weasel words. Oh, yeah, you said your patron saint's <laughs> words. Like I said, I think it was in. 200 or 150 i don't know but we had a big discussion about how much this is an annoying discussion when you say a film isn't cinema that means something different for every single fucking person on this planet it's yeah so Whereas complicated it is far, far, far easier to just say well they're all films just, just, just say it's bad just say they're bad yeah just say they're bad they're bad films i mean a lot of them are that's the thing when you be like i don't know fucking iron man that ain't cinema it's like is it not? And you're like, no, because uh... oh, like you wouldn't say that about Raimi's Spider-Man films. Oh fuck surely. no! Or uh, or uh, Superman. The, original well, the fact Superman. is, Raimi, or Batman films. even if he thought that was true, he wouldn't say it because he knows he's not allowed. No, of course not. That's right. That is an unacceptable take. <laughs> More theme park rides, and you go. Molo, you can't say that they're bad because that's negative. Just say that they aren't art. Okay, that, yeah, that gets away. Oh, Dude, yeah. oh, you that's just reminded me. It's just a category, yeah. That's like the whole, yeah, everyone's allowed any interpretation of anything, but you have bad media comprehension. You have bad media literacy. Oh. Like, oh, didn't you just say the thing you said you wouldn't say? And it's like, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Marvel movies and superhero films weren't really cinema and that they were more theme park rides and you go to those movies to have fun and that's great. He wasn't really saying that that's wrong. He was just saying that it has its place and that well, it no, shouldn't I mean, be. Oh, when you're saying the, you're, the it was insulting. Is, it, is lesser, it is lesser art. Yeah, that's what yeah. It is. might not even be art at all. Today, EFAB learns about subjectivity. Uh, uh, today, subjectivity learns about EFAB. That's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, yep. subjectivity better fucking prepare thy <laughs> asshole because we're here, baby. We're here. 
wrong. He was just saying that it has its place and that it should as be being not cinema the entirety yes. of why we. Do you see how it's walking around minds because they know people what the do implication so much is? Fucking work for well, him. The thing is, all right, Martin Scorsese is like you can tweak it and then get to a much more reasonable position that is like, yeah, they're just slot, they're crap movies, and they're bad for the industry, rather than, well, they're not even, they're not even cinema. Well, let's, let's yeah, you can soften like... what he said by completely changing it into something that he didn't say. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. <laughs> the, the point, the like, guys, you don't have to run, what you don't have to carry all this water for your patron fucking saint. Martin Scorsese well, said something that was dumb and wrong, and that's okay, because he's human, and we all do that, except me. <laughs> you're not human. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're dog. dog. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Guess you and made I a mistake think... just now, you fool. That's right. No, not me. So that's that's a paradox, Rags. You need to dogs are people. Into, you need to implode. Dogs are better people than people. Parody. No, you you that was a paradox. You need to disintegrate. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> disintegrate. <laughs> Rags goes. <laughs> 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 I gotta go what fight happened? the fart cloud monster. Paradox. If you're a robot, you explode. If you're organic, you turn into a black hole. Oh my god, it's already happening in yeah. chat. Martin is right. The MCU is entertainment, it's not art. Fucking hell. Uh, okay, well, Jesus. We, uh, okay, is, I, I don't find it entertaining, though, because it's a piece of shit. No, I, I don't want to, I don't want to retable, like, I don't want to have to <laughs> keep having this conversation about, like, the definitions of art, like, every single time it comes up, all right? You just have to accept Dude, imagine... that the EFAT stats is that Marvel movies are art, they're bad, we just think they're imagine bad. Imagine saying there's no That's art it. in the MCU. No art. It's only entertainment. What does it mean? Yeah, what Fucking does it mean hell. for the artistry and, This like, is the damage that gets done. The discourse yeah. is fucked. Well, it just becomes way more confusing because once we start like arbitrarily drawing all of these lines for these terms, it just starts to get really confusing. When I think it's just way easier think... to say, "What's well, all? They're all movies. They are categorically definition. They're movies. You just, it's just we, we like how we feel about them, whether we think they're good or bad." Do you think when Ebert said video games are not art, that he had loads of fans that were like, "He is right, though. Video game, like it, it's to do with um, video games. You interact with it, which isn't art. That's more of a like. Well, the problem uh, is, uh, uh, that's uh, a." I, I imagine that people are like, oh yeah, Mario jumping around, oh yeah, that's not art, which again, that's already an insane perspective, because there is artistry in the animation and the art, in the backgrounds and the music, and then of course the artistry of game design. But then, once you have your, like, art games, you know, once you start to get those examples, then it begins to completely deteriorate. But you shouldn't even need, you shouldn't even need, like, Bioshock to, no. uh, to understand that, that Super Mario World is art. It's obviously art. It is well, see, so is like, I don't care if they're considered art or not, I enjoy playing them. I care because it's to do with legitimacy and like yeah, respecting the industry and the fucking art form. It's fucked up to be like, oh, video games are those cute little things babies play with. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, to like a real legitimate art form. It's, yeah. It's and it's so funny too because film went through that. Film wasn't taken yep. seriously for ages. everything mm -hmm. goes through it at some point when it's the new thing and it takes a while for people to essentially accept it as a form of artistic expression. Yep. I think when Aldous Huxley first went to the cinema in the 1930s, I think it was, and he was absolutely horrified by it. And he said, effectively said, this is not art. It's spectacle, but it is not yeah. art. And it's just a bunch of disembodied entertainers gesticulating flatly on the screen, making gramophone-like noises as they do so. Um, that was the early curmudgeonly position about cinema. I think cinema has disproven that sense. Like, cinema has yeah. proven that there is no juxtaposition between entertainment and art. The problem with a lot of modern films is that it's kind of trying to prove him right retroactively. It's trying to prove really him like. right. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. We are in that awkward mm. position, yeah. And that's why I feel like a lot of people think it's intuitive to describe, like, even, you know, which is more reasonable, by the way, modern MCU is like, well, that's that's not art at that point. It's like, no is it's just really bad it's something you can say don't worry about it i'd be even comfortable i mean i often call it soulless commerce which is what i yeah. believe it is it's still art it is soulless commerce, i will though. even though that's like, even more hyper subjective i would totally buy saying it's soulless i'd be like, like I'm, I'm pretty clear on what you mean by that but saying it's not art it's like what the fuck when it is the product of many different artistic disciplines coming together to create a form of artistic expression you know well, yeah, that's part of the problem, right? Because Chris would probably say anyone who's saying it's not art is totally wrong because he would never want all the people who work their asses off behind the scenes, behind every film, like, to tell them what they're doing isn't art. But so, which means that he then makes it more confusing because they're all art, but they're not all cinema. So cinema is not a definition that would be attached to well, art this itself. Is... It's kind of like the difference between, like, the definition of literature compared to 
fiction or whatever. This is what like, we encountered the last time we talked about this. Is like someone stands up in the crowd and says, "These are the definitions," and then someone next to them is like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa no, no, no! It's 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 almost that. It's actually this." And then someone else goes, "No, it's this." And then you look back at the quote and you're like, "But that's clearly not what he meant." And then someone else goes, "Yeah, because he meant this." And then the first person's like, "That's not what he meant." <laughs> well, it's like, that's oh, kind of God. the nature of definitions is that they're attached to a bunch of different concepts that people have, and they're given different priority depending on who that person is. Yeah. The entirety of why we go to the movie theaters and i very much so agree with him there's a really as if you, you can tell me with the the movie different... well it's again, like you will say the purpose of art or why we watch art and things of that nature but they say it in this very they don't say it in a broad way they mean it in a very specific kind of way um i don't like it when people speak for the reasons why i do things especially when the reason i go to one movie is completely different oftentimes the exact opposite of why I go to see a different movie. Mm. Really good video on some of these topics I'm about to get into from Patrick Willems. It's on his channel. It's <laughs> like, oh, it's like, who's My boy, Patrick. Killing why cinema, plot holes don't matter. Cinema. Uh, I'm going to link that in the description below. He makes really great videos. It's like 90 minutes long. It's a feature what film. What does it mean if it's you amazing. say that? Well, actually, now I'm curious about this. What does it mean to say that Patrick Willems makes really great videos? that include critiques of specific films oh, when you say yeah. that you don't have a, you're not going to say anything negative about any given film. I'm not going to say anything negative about any given film, but I do like this guy's videos, which include videos that are critical of very specific works. You get what I mean? Like how many, how many steps removed are you from his well, yeah, true remember, opinion on any given thing? Shout on J.J. Abrams. <laughs> he really All did. He went, he went hard yeah, on him. Exactly. He was pissed. So, <laughs> I don't and get it. How Patrick Willems makes such shit videos, but it seems like so many people will just be like promoting him. Yeah, he's just so good. He's just so insightful and smart. And he's like, have you listened to him speak? He, hey, fuck, he's a moron. No, You've seen no, all of his worst no. videos, though. You haven't seen any. Like, how many have you watched, oh, Rags? Over more than but two? How? I've been... watched one, two. Let's say that I watched those two still. <laughs> those were so bad. I know. Jeez. Those were bad, but. You know, if he has a video of like discussing the, the stuff that was directorial that? styles of Bad Boys versus John Wick, there's probably nothing wrong with that video, you know? I don't know. But when he's talking about if... like how plot holes don't matter and that writing is just fuckery, it's like, well, yeah, there's going to be a lot of problems with that. Right. It's a great video that can educate you on a lot of these topics I'm going to discuss if you don't know anything about them. As far as movies in the MCU after Endgame, I've enjoyed Shang-Chi quite a bit. I liked uh, Spider-Man No Way Home quite a bit. <laughs> I liked Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Boring. Black Panther 2 was fine. Ooh, oh, there you go. That's a oh, slight bit of that's, spice. That's um, fine. That Black Panther 2 was fine. Because they can't be bad. They can't well, be no, bad. No, right. They can't be well, shit. He said well, he's right, so not the negative. Skipping over. Dang it, that's, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, it's like it was <laughs> fine. I can't say it bad because I'm not. <laughs> oh, it's just interesting because the first three ones are the boring choices that everybody picks for the decent phase four movies. Which I mean, you know, let's be real. All right, how many how many people even remember what happened in Shang Chi? Okay. Um, but mm. the fact that he would say that Wakanda Forever is fine that is actually interesting. Mm. Uh, but honestly, it's Listen been long sigh. downhill. I have completely. Oh my god! Fallen off. Wait a minute, Chris. Stop. <laughs> you uh -oh. stop. What downhill. are you doing? Downhill and quality. quality. Oh, oh no! Off the train of watching the shows, I I haven't seen Secret Invasion. I didn't see Loki season two. I didn't see Miss Marvel. And Damn. I really do think the major issue, at least for me, is the Disney Plus stuff. I just couldn't keep up. Oh, that's boring. That's yeah. boring. Couldn't keep up with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So we've I had feel like We've had a few episodes before we cover like all the crazy reasons for why it's not working that everyone resists saying it's badly executed. Like yeah. everyone has to find a new, vi it's like oversaturation, the <laughs> failure to connect things, taken too long to have a focused villain. There's no hero team that's been made yet. There's not enough development. There's not enough clashing. It's like they just come up with all kinds of different things and it's like, it's just bad, man. It's yeah, never because, because it's all low quality. trash. It's never because of the writing. It's never if because of the characters. all of the, the shows characters. were great, if they were great, you would carve out the time in your day to make sure that you're watching all of these shows. You would, yeah. if it was great. Especially considering yeah. that your job is this. Well, and it's funny too it's, because it's, it's like, oh. crazy to me to think, I want to talk about this topic. It's like, oh, I've fallen off because uh, it's too much to figure out and this and that. Without talking about like, yeah, no, it's all piss though. Like, it's all shit. It's, like, um, it's funny too because it's like, 
oh, I, I, you know, I gotta do all this homework. And it's like, watching Secret Invasion makes the Marvel so much worse. Like, it makes yep. no fucking sense oh, at all. Oh, yeah. Like, the fucking... Uh, uh, kept Fury in there. There's like another person from uh, Secret yeah, Invasion. Yeah, he's a like, different person, but he's still not Fury. It's, <laughs> he's still not Fury, not but Fury. he's a different wrong Fury. It's weird as shit. It was but like it, you it, have. It, it has an interesting side effect because a lot of people have said, well, you know, I, because I've not watched all this stuff, I never watched the movie because I can't catch up on all these things. But if you actually watch them, you realize you don't need to see these to watch exactly. the movies. They change nothing. Yeah. And actually, it's worse. It, it, if you haven't seen them, you still have that impression. So they've kind of shot themselves in the face both ways. It uh, mm -hmm. doesn't work. I don't know what that saying was, but it's you know. It's the worst of both worlds. <laughs> it's the worst of both worlds with the MCU continuity because the whole point of the MCU was a selling point is isn't it really cool that we can essentially tell a long form story in big budget cinematic form and you have your continuity, you're building up a world that you couldn't build up in one movie. Isn't that cool? But it's the worst of that where. The films are often disconnected, but the ways in which they connect is contradictory. They deal damage to the subsequent stories. So it, 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 it's kind of fascinating how, like, they've lost the benefit of the MCU while retaining all of the detriments, which is it's way harder to maintain continuity. Yeah. And they don't. They just don't. No. Have to know all of this. And for a minute, they were sort of like making it so you didn't have to watch the shows to get into the movies. But the Marvels is the first big MCU film where you kind of did. No, no, I, no, no I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him a bit of a break on this in the sense that it sounds like he's talking from a sense of as far as he's aware. Which I think any normal person, if you were told a couple of true things, such as yeah, Carol, uh, you know, you, well, actually no, she's the only one that I guess would be irrelevant. She's not in Secret Invasion when she should be. But Nick Fury is <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, you know, Secret Invasion is all about the scrolls, and there's there's a peace and reconciliation tour in this film about the scrolls with the, you know, the state of them. So it's like it would make sense that Secret Invasion would connect to this. Okay. Then you got Miss Marvel. It's like the introduction of Miss Marvel. So of course it would make sense that you'd need to see that to see why she's here, what she's doing. And then um, of course Monica. It's like where does she come from? She comes from WandaVision. and. So, it, like, I could see anyone being like, well, yeah, this is the first one where I felt that I needed to see other stuff. And it's like, if only you did, so you'd know how much you didn't need to see them at all. Well, they, they sit in that weird in-between stage where, like, you can't ignore them, but there is not enough in any of them to be worth watching. So you do need a little bit of foreknowledge from, say, Ms. Marvel, because the Marvels does not introduce her character across, like, eight episodes worth of time. And yeah. there are things you miss, like the links between the magic bangles and the Nord dimension, which is also somehow the quantum whatever the fuck. And then with sure. uh, Monica Rambo as well, like, you, if you haven't seen WandaVision, you have no idea who this person is. Except that you still don't really have any idea who she is, because she's not really a character. But you do kind of have to be aware of the shows, even if you don't have to watch the shows. And that's kind of the worst of both worlds mm -hmm. at that point. Well, and that's why someone yep. said, like, so you're saying he's still wrong. It's like, yes, I am saying he's wrong, but I can understand how he got here. It would it would be intuitive, I think, to think, oh, this film would have been better had I seen Ms. Marvel and Secret Invasion. It's like, no, it wouldn't, but... Yeah. Mm. Like, if you didn't see WandaVision, you might be curious about things that are happening with Monica Rambeau. And if you didn't see Miss Marvel, you need some catching You'd up. You'd be confused. About her. Who the fuck is this? Well, <laughs> the funny thing is, we, we all were like, we missed a whole fucking movie with Monica. That was it. <laughs> it's like they, they, she seen her in space and she's mastered her powers to the point where she can even fly. You're like, when the fuck did any of that happen? What the hell? You're like, oh, well, I don't know, shit, it's, uh, that's what's happening now. The film tries its best to do that, and if you didn't see Secret Invasion, apparently that actually will help you. No. It's, no, no it, will, it, it will make it worse. Yeah, it makes it worse. There's more yep. writing problems. There's, I mean, there's more to criticize, unfortunately, <laughs> Chris. Um, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, to, to be fast about it, it would be an under exaggeration to say that the Marvels like annihilates what sense Secret Invasion had left. Like right. the whole the whole point of Secret Invasion rests on a failure on Nick Fury and Captain Marvel's part of putting the scrolls in a place where they could live, and then this film immediately just drops them in New Asgard. It's so funny. Yeah, like, you, you <laughs> that's can't, right. You can't just do that. Like that completely undermines all of Secret Invasion. It's like, yeah, but we didn't know that because we had no idea what Secret Invasion even was. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, fine. Because I didn't, and I watched and read some other reviews of people saying that the Nick Fury in this movie is nothing like the one that was just in Secret Invasion, that it's almost insulting. I um, depends on what you mean. 
I guess I mean, some people like Nick Fury idiot. in Secret Invasion. Sure. I don't know. He was in. I liked him in the Avengers. I mean, I even liked him in Winter Soldier. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm historically critical of that film, but his the to to portray him as like reacting to enemies trying to kill him with technology and abilities that you might assume he has with his role, compared to having him cower so that the teenage girl can save him. You know, I, you know what I mean? I have a preference for one of those, even if... Uh... Yeah, it's weird seeing him, even though there's a lot of issues with the scene, but the scene of him in the truck, like, defending himself against, yeah. you know, the Winter Soldier, or like, oh, this is just... This is clearly a different person from the useless clown loser who's in Miss Mar or the Marvels. This is clearly different, completely different character. He's regressed substantially. Right. Well, so it's it, like it, he became a clown loser on Captain Marvel, but the benefit yes. of the doubt you could give to it is, yeah, but this was a while ago, which even then, you know, whatever. But but it's like they've carried that over, even though there was an interim period where he was a totally different person. It's kind of fascinating. Um. I was going to say, the, the the way that he just said that was it sounds like there are fans of Secret Invasion that were upset with Fury's portrayal in the Marvels. Were there fans of Secret Invasion, though? Three? Uh, probably maybe. two. Two or three. Yeah, maybe, maybe. And so I guess their argument would be the Secret Invasion, and forgive me for saying this, Secret Invasion took Fury seriously, and it brought him mm -hmm. down, you know? It made everything very serious, and he had to go through a lot, having anxiety attacks, and struggling to be the man he once was, and... You know, the season is about him reclaiming the role of Nick Fury and get him back up there. And then in this movie, it's barely even addressed. It's ridiculous. You know, I think that's what their argument would maybe be. I don't know. Mm. I didn't have that experience because I didn't watch that show. So maybe that actually makes the movie better. I don't know. The point is, I the point? stopped caring about this continuity because there was just too much of it. It had to, like, become my entire life if I wanted to keep up with this fucking... That's not true. You just don't it's like it. People say, did people ever say this about Game of Thrones or House no. of the Dragon? <laughs> just say, no. Just say it just seems weird. It seems like they oh, is it maybe they because wouldn't they make have this argument better quality? Hmm. I mean, I I, I don't know. I don't I'm, just, I'm just I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. If it was good, it you wouldn't consider it homework or a chore. You would just be excited to watch it. Yep. There's no, yeah, there, you. it just doesn't come into the <laughs> equation. But I just don't think that he would like even if he thought it, he's never gonna say. It's just so crap, guys. It's become so fucking crap. Meanwhile, I don't know if you guys have watched any of his videos, but Jeremy Johns, when he put he put out his Marvels video, is funny. It opens with him basically saying like, "We've finally reached the point where they they definitely made this with AI. It's just so awful." Like, <laughs> <laughs> he comes across as so much more of a real human being. It's uh, so neat. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I, I kind of like him. Too much. Seems it. very it had earnest. To, like, become and my entire life if I wanted to keep up with this fucking story that's happening in these movies. Oh my I, god! Why would you put word. it that way? Unless it were bad. Like you know what I mean? Like why would? Yeah. It's so weird. Like if it were all awesome, you did it back in the day. Was Phase Three like easy and not time consuming to get through everything? I guess it was just so good. I wonder. I also, we're talking about one hour a week. I mean, come on. This is what I mean. It doesn't make any sense at all. It's like I can't spare my entire life to keep up with the MCU, when it's like, you can blast it all out pretty quick, it's just that no one wants to watch this shit. That's what's going on. Yeah. I think, I think you could probably make an argument that there are too many threads, still a poor execution argument, but you can make the argument that there are too many dangling threads on at the same time, and that the amount of cost you have to sink in to catch up on something you might have missed is now so much greater, which prohibits you, or makes it less likely that you will actually bother to catch up on it, which then has a detrimental impact on everything that follows. If you compare the average number of releases was... a year, from even Phase 3 to now, it's gone from something like an average of 8 every year to 15 a year, if you're including all of the Disney Plus shows as well. Um, or 15 across two years, is, I can't remember, I did the maths at one point. But the, the point being that there are a huge number of various different stories going on. They are yeah. all crap, but if you do want to be on top of absolutely everything, you are going to have to sink more time into doing it. Obviously, if it were good, you would be motivated to do that. That's the principal the criticism, is, but there is still more to do. We kind of do it already. It was supposed to be a revolutionary new idea of you you watch your TV and your films and you play your games and you read your books and somewhat, you know, everyone's doing it, listening to music. But it's like, what if several of those things were actually you know, all parts of the similar story that all lead somewhere and that some of them you can check out and it'll make something better, but if you missed it, that that thing it would have made better is still really good. That was the dream. It came crashing down because it wasn't just a couple parts that went bad, it was basically the entire thing. The MCU mm -hmm. was supposed to be, and I'm sure they envisioned this back in fucking 2018, they were like, we're going to expand to TV shows on Disney+, Plus, 
They're going to be amazing, and they're going to filter back into the films, and it's going to be the most profitable thing in the history of everything. This is going to be the first time anyone's ever done something like this. Like, every mm -hmm. movie and TV show are going to feed into each other back and forth and back and forth, and it's going to make all the money. And it might have been able to do that if they were really good. Yeah. Maybe it could and have also, done that if they were okay. <laughs> like, but they weren't. They were I, I'd not okay. Lenient, I'd give leniency to a lot of people, but if this is your job, and it's something you intend to talk about, then it's one hour a week, and he would have kept up with them as they were coming out. But he's the one that decided, no, I'm going to skip this. And the real question is, why did he decide to skip it at the time? Yeah. Yeah, like, Miss Marvel's about to come out, and he's like, I can't fucking spare my life to watch that. Yeah. Like, whoa, it's Chris, what's going on? <laughs> like, why'd you... Sounds what's... pretty negative, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> watch it. Better watch it. Someone might be listening. Enjoy <laughs> watching comic book movies. In fact, I love watching great ones. Uh, Obviously, I've had... Yeah, great ones. Watching great oh. ones. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> great ones? <laughs> Mm. What, do you, like, what do you mean, Chris? You have to do so much you mean? dancing around to prevent being blacklisted from Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not great. And he looks over to the side, and you could hear some guy be like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you say that into the microphone? <laughs> Watching great ones. Obviously, I've had Daredevil behind me for like every video for a couple years now. I what love good scared? comic book movies. Are these cinema? Do they count? Are they I cinema? have oh, always God. been very inspired by them. Sam Raimi's first two Spider-Man movies are... Oh, not the third one. Yeah, it's, a, it's <laughs> uh, interesting. Yeah, but it's a shame those are That's what cinema, I mean. It's, it's, it's the thing. I'm not going to be negative. Yeah. I love one and two. It's like, what about two. three? I love one and no. two. Boy, one and two are so great. <laughs> Your one and two are good movies, man. It's two like a black most... hole. You have to detect it yeah. by what's around it influential movies I've ever seen. And Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy is fucking amazing. I'm sitting here wearing a Dragon Ball shirt. That's a manga, also known as a comic book. I mean, what? I don't have to- Also known as a comic Wait, wait, sorry, what was that? I comic... don't know what that you was. You know that comic... comic book doesn't mean superhero, man. I mean, yeah, yeah but was... shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that, just, that just felt really stilted. I don't know what that was. Yeah, it's weird. I guess it was just, Dragon Ball was shirt. matching for a bunch of different things. I was like, well, I like Dragon Ball. Wait, Dragon Ball's not like superhero, technically. Well, it's a manga, and, and that's, 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 you know... So it can still be cinema. It can still be cinema, okay? Comic it can still be cinema. Uh, Do you yeah, think that, that was that a counter was... To, to people saying the comic book industry is dead, but manga isn't? He's like, no, actually, I, they're the same thing. I don't know. I don't... I, 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 think know. It, I think it might just be as simple as what I first thought, which is that he erroneously conflates comic books with superheroes, when that's it's not the case. It's not the case at all. It's it's a medium. Oh, he's just trying to establish his nerd credentials. It's an appeal yeah, to his yes. own authority, yeah. effectively. Yeah, yeah, so, and look, I love all of this stuff. I love it when it's good. I just don't yeah, like it when like it's not when it's not good. I just don't like it when it's not the thing that is good. <laughs> <laughs> Sit here and pretend like I'm above any of this. I get excited about. Well, all I mean, of these I, 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 uh, oh. okay. No, Wait, so is he, is he trying to counter the idea that, like, I'm not saying that um, the Marvel films I'm have gotten so small, bad that but... they're, not, they're not interesting enough to me anymore. I'm interested in all kinds of crap, like manga. <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I think the super, super charitable one is I'm not a snob. I'm not some pretentious guy who mm. thinks that these comic book, you know, superhero movies... I I like superheroes. I like, I like, uh, I like anime. I like all that stuff, all right? But I also get excited about watching a three and a half hour Martin Scorsese film in theaters too. Why do you say that? Like that's not he's pretty mainstream, like Scorsese well, I just, films. Well, I, I guess it's kind of funny that, that that there's almost the implication of yeah, it would be weird if somebody liked Dragon Ball Z and Martin Scorsese movies. Yeah, that, that's that's kind of where, where I take issue with this. It, it would be like if I said like, oh yeah, I, I like my Iron Man blasting stuff around, but I also watch Tarantino. Be like, <laughs> yeah, okay, good, yeah, yeah. that's. that's <laughs> That's pretty normal. It's not like Scorsese's things, but... explicitly made films that no one sees and they're all in like no, film no, festivals no, or something. Yeah, no. Like the idea that I don't know who Martin Scorsese is. His films are generally successful. It's like, yes, yeah. I do throw on a Mission Impossible every once in a while, but I also check out Oppenheimer. Whoa, you mm. crazy like, son a lot of, of bitch. people watched Oppenheimer, <laughs> okay? Like, it's, you're all right. A lot of people aren't like that. I bumped into a guy the other day at a restaurant well, most who was wearing a Halloween are... 1978 hoodie. And I was like, oh, man, did you know that tonight they're showing that movie in a theater nearby? And he was like, oh, that's cool. Um, <laughs> Leave me alone, you weirdo. <laughs> I don't really go to movie theaters anymore. And I was like, why? <laughs> there's so many reasons why someone might not go to a movie theater. There's, yeah. there's countless. I think it's RLM, expensive, man. 
RLM talk about it regularly. They fucking hate going to theaters because of the people. And some people are on their phones or they're talking. Oh god, around. people the talking to in theaters needs to be hours. outlawed. Like, yeah. shut the fuck up. This isn't a social experience. But it is, but it's not. Yeah, shut up. You're ruining it. It's the hip. He said because I can just you know watch it all at home. Yeah, you can watch it in your own home theater if you have it set up. You can black out yeah. all the lights. You can have your own snacks. You can pause to go to the toilet whenever you want. It's kind it's of amazing, hard. right? There's yeah, a couple of reasons awesome, why people like it. Yeah, I'm it's way easier to get that. away with masturbating. Let me think about the uh, direction <laughs> he's going to take this because I imagine he'll be talking about the that he doesn't want to lose the value of seeing these works on a big screen with the big sound. There is something sacred sound about that, that I can it feel. Needs to be That's right. Yes, uh, and and that that needs to be preserved, and it's it's it might die, and that's going to make me real sad because I grew up watching movies in the theater, and that was a really formative experience for me. I, grew and up I, want, to my life. I <laughs> want to retain the cinema. I want to retain the theater. Um, that would be my guess as to the direction that he's taking this. Which I got to say, I'm already like I I feel like that's a less interesting conversation than like the nature of the industry itself in terms of the movies that are being made. And whether or not they're successful or not anymore, and what trends are going to emerge because of it. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it also oh, be a pretty you, strange okay. argument to follow on from someone who presumably agrees with Martin Scorsese that Marvel films are more like, I don't know, entertaining experiences than they are works of art, if the reason you want to go to the cinema is for the entertaining experience of going to the cinema, more than the work of art that you're going to watch? And the thing is, you gotta, I, I, if I was being super duper duper charitable to him, it would be like, well, the experience of watching some amazing film, I could watch it at home, sure, but it's not the same experience yeah. as watching it on the big screen with the big sound. Oh, the theaters, when there's, like, no hindering effects, can be fucking amazing. There's no denying it. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, no, I mean, in the theater was really great when nobody was talking, which they weren't, nobody was Well, that and, was nice. and to be fair, uh, there are some films that benefit from the audience getting a bit noisy at certain points, right? We probably all agree that... Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, when Cap picks up that hammer, you kind of want to hear some people celebrating and clapping and stuff. That's the first time in a German cinema that I heard people go like, "Ooh!" It was like because they're fucking silent here in Germany because there's not no sounds. But suppose, that, that one, it's like, "Oh, that was an experience." Yeah, what's being highlighted is just that there are plenty of valid reasons that one would not want to go to the theater. That's all. Oh, absolutely. And that is the mentality of a lot of people, is that it's just easier to watch things at home, and it's why movie theaters are struggling, it's why physical media is struggling. I could do a whole video on how... Well, wait, 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 wait. That's... physical media no, is struggling. You can't put those next yeah, to each other. Yeah, that's a pivoted, that's like... That's, that's a different conversation, because physical media is a home experience, fundamentally. Yeah. So it's you actually just... completely irrelevant. Yeah, now you want to go for streaming, concept. presumably, but even yeah. then, yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of arguments to be made about I mean, certainly in our circles, right? Like streaming, we're all very aware and it needs to be spread further that streaming does not mean fucking anything in terms of keeping the content. It's a no. pickle. Clearly not. Yeah. How Best Buy is not going to be offering physical media anymore after this holiday season. In fact, I might... So that sucks, but have they given like a reason? Because if it literally is, it's nobody's buying it. It's like, well... Um, well, yeah, like, um, the same thing. What are they I meant believe... to do about that? Yeah, what could, you I can't believe... blame them for that at that point. That's just a market that's gone at that point. No. Well, wasn't it always considered like a loss leader? They got you into the store by that section, but then you bought other things. Because I know that going way back, Woolworths used to do that with music CDs. Right. They specifically lost money, but it got people in. Mm. Well, because the thing is as well, a lot of the physical copies of stuff I'm buying are not typically in stores they're more so like on amazon warehouses of like you know right because they're classic movies that i want in 4k they're not i'm not looking to buy mission impossible dead reckoning on 4k i'm just not sorry no uh, one of my one of my why? tropic why thunders not? and my <laughs> why not uh, oh we I have an know. episode all about it for you <laughs> Ooh, boy wow a whole mm. episode yeah search efap mission impossible dead reckoning if you want to know more also hi gary oh hello there hi i suck there it is. Well, hi hello I was Hi. Doctor Who. <laughs> I can guess. <laughs> Wait, it wasn't good? No, I'm jumping the gun. Sorry, you go ahead. <laughs> Fucking terrible. Oh. What about Tenet? A show that... Oh, um, Tenet was good. Uh, sorry to break your rhythm. Uh, let me know where I can link in to watch this, too. Okay, just quickly. Uh, Tenet's fine. Catherine Tate's fine. It can't get out of its own way. It's a giant allegory. The whole thing's about the message. It's freaking pretty bad. 
it's the pretty bad. Uh, the latest link in the in the thing. I did think they'd at least hold off for three episodes. No, nope. well, apparently they can't even do that. They they didn't hold off for three minutes in the episode. So it's a giant. Uh, I mean, just to come out and say it, it's a giant uh, trans allegory. That's all it is. All right. Uh, well, I'll be checking it out. I think tomorrow. So uh, I assume we'll talk about it on real BBC and stuff. But what you're going to be the most mad about is is what I'm the most mad about is they undo the Doctor Don for this. Oh, oh, I guess that was mm. always a worry, right? Yeah. Um, well, mm -hmm. The moment she reappeared, you knew they had to. Like, you can't bring her into the story unless you do that. Well, it's like when they fucking mm. resurrect Anakin or that they resurrect Palpatine. It's like, you can't do that without <laughs> fucking mm -hmm. up that whole payoff. But, uh, um, yeah, so to catch you up, uh, we're listening to Chris Tuckman talk about the future of film, how it's falling apart, and he's currently talking about theaters and physical media, though it's a little odd because he started it with like a, a, an anecdote about how he's upset that a friend of his or someone he met anyway that isn't going to the theater for reasons of it being easier to stay at home and we were talking about how that's like i mean normal a lot of people have way yeah. better setups at home um not necessarily better in every way just in in the a lot of ways that come up for theaters can be annoying and then physical media is a different thing altogether that what would stimulate physical media being bought would be I imagine, new films that are really good that people want to own personally. Mm. But then, of course, you have streaming, offering some of these things in a way that might convince the average consumer that they have those things in their library permanently when they don't actually. Um, so I guess we'll just see where he goes with it. After uh, let me know if this... Holiday uh, sorry. Season. Holiday, holiday season. In fact, I'm... Oh let God. me know if this echo... That is echoing, that yeah. echo. <laughs> it is, yes. I can only bear to stand Chris one time. <laughs> No more. No more. No Please, more. I beg of you, no more. I'll just mute while it's on. So. All right. It's holiday season. It's holiday season. season. In fact, I might mute. <laughs> you got to be really, really quick on the draw if you're going to adopt yeah. that strategy. Can you just turn down the, uh, can you use a headset or? Um... I am using a headset, it's, but I'm on my road one, so it doesn't separate them. Um, there's a way to do this. Let me jump back out. I'll keep watching. Okay. okay. <laughs> and I'll jump back out. All right. Okie dokie. I'm going to mute me for now. Uh huh. All right. Gotcha. Might do a video Might on do that. A video if, on I that. Sound... if I sound... <laughs> I, I had a feeling. I had a feeling, I had a feeling well. that's going to happen. I'm going to mute. <laughs> but I didn't see the mute thing pop up. <laughs> at, this, at this point, it's that you can't hear him, but you can hear Chris. <laughs> <laughs> We've made it worse. Switch them. We want to hear you and not Chris. <laughs> Guessing it's uh, not fixed. Is not I'm muting on my sound. So I'm muting my, my soundboard. So go ahead, because it'll all be muted. Okie dokie. Bring physical right. media, any media after, anymore. Nope. After <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, no. Mm -mm. Maybe now. This holiday season. There you holiday go. season. No. Might. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah. If you're using the roadcaster, you'll have your mic, but there's also there the USB go. going back to the computer. Oh, there. That'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but All right, Chris, take it away. Holiday season. In fact, I might do a video on that. If I sound elitist in any way by saying you got to go to the theater, you got to support theater, I understand that because when I was a kid, I could only see like one or two movies in theaters a month, and I would always wow. go on the $5 discount day and oh, take advantage of any coupons I ever had. And I. Man, well, I know when I was growing up, we used to have a dollar theater nearby where you Damn. could legitimately go in and get for a dollar a movie ticket. However, if there was like three or more of you, it would be less than a dollar per person to see the movie. So you could walk in with like three bucks and the four, four, you and three friends could just go in with tickets and see movies. Those wow. were the days. The least, the absolute least you could expect to be paying over here was like 15 bucks. And yeah, it's like 10, 12 more. around here. It's, and, well, and then, like, you know. If you, if you average it out, it's more like you're probably paying like 20 bucks, maybe 20 Yeah, depending bucks. on the movie. Yeah, yeah. going in, fair, getting something I, like a, a, a drink or popcorn or something. Well, I'm not yeah, even talking about getting the popcorn and stuff like that. I'm yeah, just geez. the ticket. Yeah, if, if I, if I want to go, if I go grab a ticket and I like to get the nice seats that recline because mm -hmm. it's, those movies are seven hours long these days, <laughs> I want to be comfortable. That's extra. That's like the premium ticket, the premium seats. Like they don't all recline. So you have to and pay the, that extra as well. 
The food is really expensive over here at theaters. It's, oh, that's it's like really another. Oh, it was always like a, top. a rule with my family oh, is we yeah. never buy anything from there except the ticket. That was like a. You eat before you go, or you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I, mean, so, I do really um, love the popcorn from the cinema. A fun though. memory that um, like that I had was that so it was, a, it was a Sainsbury's right next to, which is essentially just like a Walmart right next to a uh, cinema, and, and it was always baffling to me as a kid because I was just like, doesn't everyone just go there to buy this stuff and then go to the cinema? Like it's way cheaper. And it was like, well, yeah, you know, a lot of people do, but you got to be careful. You got to hide all your stuff. That's what my family were like. You got to hide it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we it. did that the first time I came over. I think we went to that. Got to, yeah, put it in your pockets. <laughs> you know, make sure they don't see it. And and that was always a thing for me. I went with a friend's family who were much more, um, a, a, let's say, aggressive, and uh, they didn't give a shit. And, and so they went to Sainsbury's. They had their bag that just said Sainsbury's on it, filled with stuff. And I was like, oh, you, you're not, you're gonna, hide, you're gonna hide it. And then they were like, no. And I was like, nope. Okay, and as we were heading in, some guy was like, this is fucking what a super young guy was like, oh, you, you can't take that in. They were like, are you going to stop me? And they, he was like, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, well, you just you can't, and she was like, okay, that's fine. Anyway, bye. And just like sort of moved past him, and he was like, hmm. <laughs> he was like a teenager as well. I was like, oh, poor yeah, fucking he's guy. Not gonna, <laughs> he's not going to do anything. He's not going to do anything about it. <laughs> that's pretty funny <laughs> it's just so absurd like you feel it? so fucking good too if you're that guy and you're like you gonna stop me and they don't and you just walk in with your shit yeah. and you just got away with it and you didn't like that's you gotta feel like a king I'm fucking watching <laughs> Shrek it. with my coca-cola one way or another okay you know stop me yeah man i get the um well I, I allegedly what i would do if i did this would would be i would go down to the come and go before um i would go to the theater hypothetically and i maybe might get those good packs of like a trail mix trail mix is great for theaters um and be, because just the package is kind of thin you know and you can just boop, just put it on your belt and just stick it in there you could do this. I wouldn't, but you could do that no, and just walk right in. Yeah, and just have a really good snack in there that's way, way cheaper. It lasts you the whole really, movie. Easy. I, Probably I now would, like the at idea least. of somebody with suction cups up on the ceiling trying to sneak past with like a bag full of shit. <laughs> Dude, the fucking meme that's nuts is the people who bring in huge meals. So what the fuck is wrong yeah, with you? Bring in, like, McDonald's. Mm -hmm. so, especially because, like, they do like like full uh, wedges with salsa and all these kinds of like and, and like oh, readily yeah, cooked things that you can buy there for like fucking fifty quid or some ridiculous thing. And these mm. people come in like awkwardly trying to balance it all, and you're just like, "What is wrong with you?" <laughs> I don't think we have any of can those. Can you just go out for a meal after the movie? Have I those for a couple hours. Jeez. Around here, yeah, I I I assume that I don't, I guess this isn't just an American thing, but it seems like it is an American thing. The idea that like theater food used to be popcorn and a soda, yeah. maybe a little box of back in my day, box of gummies gummies or, whatever. or whatever. And now they're like, we'll get you chicken wings, pizza, <laughs> hamburgers, and fries, and like actual like fast food kind of, not even necessarily fast food, but like meals. And I'm like, I can't imagine going to a theater, watching a movie while I've got my greasy my hands you're like, and mmm, stuff mmm, like, mmm, like mmm, eating mmm, one of these while i'm watching mmm, <laughs> like oh my god like this i would feel like a degenerate oh my in god in a theater right. trying to like no it it's like i going that far doing? Like crazy doggo <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous what is wrong with you i mean i get no greasy decorum. hands with some nacho chips too rags come on oh well, don't make well me no think wait well nacho chip grease is nachos are often like really dry they you shouldn't they shouldn't be greasy do you so something that we have at, at cinemas over here is we have like a uh, a super super duper special way more expensive selection of, of of cinemas like that are part of the main cinema where you can go in and you can get like wine and shit and yes they will give you <laughs> like a full meal and they will bring it into you during oh the movie you pay a lot of money for this it costs like now, yeah we bucks. have those here what is um, now this is going to be very also, important also, this, this detail is a question rags does are you a degenerate when you go to the much more expensive <laughs> the high end and they now here's the thing you. i thought that's the that's, ones we were talking about that's a good question frangy but i'm gonna need some a little bit more information right yeah so okay. what is the nate so the nature of the seats of this place are you sitting at oh, like yeah. a table in a chair so or... what they have is they'll have there's way less seats in the cinema they'll, okay. they'll be like so instead of like 50 you have like maybe you know 12 16 um and they have like they have um 
you know you know how like at university you got like the like in the lecture hall you've got like the 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 table that you like pull out and then it's attached oh, to yeah. the chair. It'll be something what... like that that they have for you to Ooh, eat on. Um... So like they'll bring you fries and they'll put it on this little table for you to eat with your champagne if you want it. Oh, I like I love a good fries and champagne. Um, <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's evolving to the I, point uh, where the film is just a fucking painting in the background on the wall. It's yeah. almost like an excuse to go to a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. You can just go and Why? eat, you know? You don't have to justify it with the film. <laughs> I do enjoy the filet mignon in the background. It's like, <laughs> you and shall the not fries are exquisite. The I, don't, I don't find that funny if somebody eating a filet mignon while watching the marbles. <laughs> <laughs> Pure cinema. Oh. Mm. Exquisite. Anyway, anyway, back to Chris. Again, back it's, to it's Chris. Expensive in the death of but cinema. This isn't just about going to a theater to support a theater. It's really about the kinds of movies that are being made. A thousand people have talked about this forever, and I'm not the first person to say this, but the thing is, it's like we oh, often complain that movies aren't the same as they used to be. Why don't, don't they make Aristotle them like they used to? Complain about that this. doesn't look like a real movie, blah, blah, blah. We hear those mm -hmm, complaints mm -hmm. all the time, and then we go home and we pirate movies, or we don't buy the Blu-ray, or we don't go to the theater. Okay, speak for yourself, but I buy all the ones that I fucking love, right? It's important to do that. And I, I support I think many fair. artists with my money. Yeah. I mean... I don't know how many. What's what for everybody here? What's your most bought individual piece of media? And to give you an example, to get to get you what I'm talking about is like Resident Evil Four. I've bought Resident many Evil times. Four. Yeah. Yep. Resident Evil Four is my most purchased piece of media. I'm trying uh, to think of what uh, else. Good question. I actually don't know. <laughs> I have I have three or four copies of The Shining because I was trying to find one <laughs> where there wasn't a color correction mistake in it that many of the Blu-rays have, where the tennis ball is pink instead of yellow. So I've hunted down one that doesn't have that mistake in it. So I have like five or six of those, I think, actually. Did you get I think it? I, just um, a... I did hmm. get it, yes. There you go. I got, I got two copies of Mario Kart 8. <laughs> I think there my gold is great. Why? Too. I mean, I think I have, a, I have a, couple of, a couple of things I've doubled for, actually. I was trying to aim for like more than doubles. The, the... I don't think I have more than I don't think mm. I have more than, than two of, of something, yeah. I think in my life I've owned five copies of Smash Brothers Melee. Just wow. because like, it used to go back and forth between my friend's house and mine, and then the box broke, and then it got in this one of those shit sleeves that doesn't actually protect them, and they kept breaking, and then we got a new one and a new one, and then about a decade later when we decided, uh, yeah, actually that was a really good game, we need to get that again, but we can't find it, and then we found it and it was broken, so we got another one, and then another one. So there's, yeah, there's five of those around somewhere. Huh. I mean, my thing with Baldur's Gate 2, I'm counting the remasters in that, obviously, because the enhanced edition came out. But then I was buying them on mobile. Then I forgot that I had them on a different platform, so I bought it on Steam again. <laughs> like, I do that a lot. That's why I'm like, now I'm just buying things on Steam, because I forget I own the game otherwise. Yeah, because I, so I have so many doubles because of Humble Bundle. They're like, here's this game. It's like, oh, I bought that two years ago. Uh, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> Because I've got it, Resident Evil 4 would be GameCube, PS2, 360, PC. I think that would be all my copies. Mine would be yeah, GameCube, Xbox, Steam, and Wii. Oh yeah, okay, there was a Wii one, yeah. Yeah, it's the easiest and the worst version of the game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and if, obviously, if the fucking remake counts, which I guess it. I don't know, probably not. Um, same company? It's it a very might. different game, it but also... It might in spirit, it yeah. might, yeah. It, it's, well, yeah, I think because it's a different game, it doesn't count. Yeah. It just counts as I bought a different game that's also Resident Evil 4. I guess it would um, depend on the kind of remake mm -hmm. you get, because that one is just, yeah, there's, there's enough differences, I'd say, that it's not quite buying a double. Yeah, mm. like, I've bought Dead Space, the original, twice. Once on the Xbox 360 and once on PC. Mm -hmm. And the remake is you know, just fundamentally, it's a totally different game. So I would say that I'm not buying Dead Space again. I'm buying yeah, the yeah. Dead Space remake, a new, you know, right. game. Theater, and we wonder why Hollywood isn't hearing us, and it's because the only way they do is if we spend money. You can Oh, they've heard... Or don't spend money. The box office, at least, the pain of... You know, you know what I mean? Like, because uh, raising up good movies and bringing down bad movies is going to be the... That's, like, the ultimate process, and... Even if yeah. there was no criticism of the Marvels online, like the public have spoken somewhat, haven't they? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And you know, if he said like, yeah, but the problem is the there will be films that come out, for example, Killers of the Flower Moon, that doesn't get enough uh, people watching it compared to how much it 
it should. Isn't that fascinating? That opens up the question, doesn't it? Because they never want to frame it as good films versus bad films. They want to frame it as cinema versus entertainment. Right. Or content versus art, maybe. But it's just like, I feel like if you just take that step forward and say these films are poorly made versus the ones that are very well made and meaningful and creative and integrity, blah, blah, blah. Like, I feel like it gets easier to defend these points. Because the definitions yep. get all muddy when you say, like, we should be propping up cinema more. And it's like, As why? As opposed to just saying we should prop up good films. films that Yeah, because good films is just like, oh, fuck inspiring. yeah, I'm behind that. We should prop yeah. up better yeah. things in the, in the craft. <clears throat> but if you say we should prop up cinema versus entertainment, you'd be like, uh, okay, why? And it's like, well, because they're different and interesting and special and unique and blah, blah, blah. And you just be like, uh, sure, but, like, shouldn't we just go with whatever people are enjoying? Isn't that, like, the better metric, which happens naturally at that point? Like, I feel like it's a much more compelling argument to just say, well, no, this is better, and we should support better. Well, I mean, it would be hard to convince someone, well, you need to watch a bunch of these films that may or may not interest you, that you may or may not like, that they're kind of auteur films, but you should watch all of them, you know, to, to support the idea that there should be more films that are created by auteurs or something. It's like, well, maybe, maybe it would be... Maybe maybe it would be easier as a sell to just get people to you know watch the movies that they like and support the movies that they like, and then you know and then and then and then see what comes of that. You bet your ass we're gonna get more Five Nights at Freddy's movies because that. Whoa, wait, whoa, wait. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? I guess well, I guess we're all agreed. It's not cinema. Boom. Boom. Need the vine on boom yeah, sound, cool. right? Sorry, so what Freddy. You the way he said it's like uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Look at them over there, right? We get more of that. That's what I mean. It's like, yeah. it's like, can you come out of your shell? Just be honest. It's like we don't want more shit. Yeah. And Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't want that to be the peak of what's coming out. I get it. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, no, no, no. At the same time, <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's sweep. <laughs> it's just gonna win all the Oscars. Hollywood isn't hearing us, and it's because the only way they do is if we spend money. You can bet your ass we're gonna get more Five Nights at Freddy's movies because that film did incredibly well, even though yes. it was day and date on Peacock. They hear those things. But yeah, so so what is, is that, that as a data point? Is that bad that that's yeah. happened, or is well, he just yeah, using that as an example of what needs to happen for of quote unquote, what cinema? Needs to happen, maybe. Yeah, but th but then I guess you should probably be really happy then because Marvel films are now failing spectacularly. So this... In fact. Like, DC and Marvel films are both this means the exactly. really difficult problem to solve. When it's like, you see, Five Nights at Freddy's got its support, and they're going to hear that, and they're going to make more. It's like, that will be very satisfying for the Five Nights at Freddy's fan base, especially those who enjoyed the movie and want more of it. So, mm -hmm. that means things are working as intended, right? You know what I mean? Like, if, if there is a yeah. selection of people that really liked, for example, Killers of the Flower Moon... But it's not enough to fund the next Killers of the Flower Moon. I don't know what you're supposed to do about that. It's uh, not going to be artificial. Though, it's got cost has got to factor into it as well because Killers of the Flower Moon cost I want to say something like two hundred million dollars. Five Nights at Freddy's two hundred and fifty, I think. Oh right. my god! Yeah, god yeah. Damn. Whereas whereas Five Nights at Freddy cost two hundred million dollars. Well, something that's been talked about. I thought that's what actually what he was going to talk about was the thing that um. Matt Damon talked about it on the thing where he eats the chicken wings, that there is less of a market nowadays yeah. for middle budget films, films that cost, you know, 50 to 100 million dollars, like Air, which, you know, I think that was because he was talking about that because that was when it was coming out. Um, there's way less of a space for films that exist in the middle. Um, yeah, which, maybe which seems something... weird because oh. so many of these movies that have that budget, you wouldn't. Like what's what's the point of making a movie that's two hundred fifty million if if you're like baffled as to why it costs that much? Uh, well, the, sorry, the, the it's two hundred. I actually misspoke, but yes, still, still, still even that's still, that's, like, that's, that's immensely expensive, and you would need to believe that there is demand enough, right, for a movie like that that costs two hundred million dollars yeah, compared to it costs less than. We're almost going to fold back on the whole, like, we love it when they experiment and they spend, like, 200 million on a goofy, wacky film, or 50 million on a really, really wacky and specific idea that you never would have thought they'd yeah. fund. And it's like, cool, yes, agreed, especially if it brings you something incredible you've never seen before. But there are people behind giving those money that those those money needs people to be... Yeah, you money, know where I'm going with it, right? It's like, it. imagine it were you, and you're like, hey, I want to make R-rated biography of a person who no one knows existed, it's going to be five hours long, can I have 300 million? You'd be like, yeah. no? Uh, <laughs> like, it's, no? It's, 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 it's need to sell it a bit things, better? But, mm -mm. 
you gotta just you know remember it, it happens i think gamers you know it's not to throw you and my my brothers and sisters under the bus here but sometimes this happens a lot with gamers um it's really easy to criticize the things that a publisher might do when it isn't your massive amount of money that's being spent on an investment yeah. that you're hoping to get back like yeah it sucks we don't get a titanfall 3 i get it um titanfall 2 didn't sell very well at all um it sold very poorly. So, like, yeah, I, you, you got to understand, it isn't your money going to fund these things. It isn't your millions of dollars. So, you know, it's just kind of remembering the same thing for movies. You know, yeah, yeah so a lot like, of movies would be really cool to have. But, I mean, it, it takes, I these things don't that, just uh, come out of the ether. It takes money, so lots of it. back in, it would be that I agree with good old Matt Damon there that, uh, there needs to be more of a space for films that exist in the middle so that you don't have these instances of these films that cost $200 million that need to make like $600, $700 million to break even and invariably don't anymore, I guess. Uh, I don't think how... it really makes sense because like, oh, nobody wants mid-budget movies. Uh, the audience in general has no idea what things cost, nor do they care. They only well, once want you get movie to that, um, I think... Uh, I, I... I think the logic that he had was that people were more hesitant to go watch those ki kinds of films in theaters because there was some expectation of him going to the theater on a big screen. I kind of want a spectacle right. as, a, as a motivation. And so if you're going to watch something like Air on a big screen, maybe that's harder to justify. Yeah, it was an awful or... movie idea. Well, like, it's so funny you I was can about make to say, uh, a spectacle <laughs> on a mid-budget thing. It doesn't have to be about shoes. Well, Matt Damon well, talking about mid-budget films Air like needing right. more space, downsizing, oh, like which I saw recently. Yeah, Air was uh, pretty good. I wasn't. Yeah, yeah uh, anyone see downsizing that wasn't me and Rags, emotion. which I forced him through half of it, but it was awful. That movie sucked. And it was um, definitely like it was like seventy million budget, so it's like mid to high, right? Because once you start to get, I feel yeah, into that forty, fifty million dollar range, there might be one of those like you you just can't tell. Especially depending on what the uh, the setting of that movie is. Well, um, um, you know Oppenheimer, right? Nobody uh, predicted the money that was going to make, and they did for good no, reason. Like there was, million there was lots of make. good reason behind predicting that that would not make the money it did. And so, what does that mean? Then, it's like, well, I guess it's a matter of filmmakers trying to like take advantage of markets while also satisfying expectations at the same time, which is very difficult. But that might be the only real strategy you have, because I have a feeling. Well, what we're heading to in the in the coverage of this, as we do with a lot of people, is like we got to encourage people to get back in the theaters. It's like that's not going to do shit. No, because well, yeah. you can't <clears throat> artificially encourage people to get back into the theaters if when they go and see the movie, they're like, "Damn, man, that wasn't worth it." Like I didn't enjoy that at all. And <laughs> yeah, if they go see yeah. downsizing, yeah. they're gonna be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah. They recognize those things. My concern with the MCU going downhill is that a lot of people are only going to the movie theaters to watch these giant movies. And if the MCU is going downhill and less people go to the movie theater to watch the MCU movies because A, they're just mm -hmm. waiting for Disney Plus, or B, they're not as good anymore, what's going to be the next uh -oh. big... Thing? But like... You can't say that. that the, the, it's, it's like we're, we're sort of writing it over and using these little points. It's like they're not as good anymore. It's like that's seriously a yeah. huge deal, though. That's the probably the... Is the biggest deal, and They're one might say trash. the and people difference are catching up. between content and cinema is how good they are. Yeah, this has been frustrating because I've seen this video already. Like, this has been f so frustrating to see him tiptoe around the facts. Like, yeah, the movies are fucking ass. Just say people it. never want to say it. It sucks. Just say it's weird. It's ass. No one wants to say it. They That's suck. Big points. Like, well, it's, oh, it's going downhill. We got to say it after the fact. Go anymore. Different, different reasons. Afterwards. Different reasons yeah. for different people, right? Because we're talking about a mix of people at the time of films release saying like, oh, I actually loved it. Hype, yeah, woo. And then later on saying like, oh, it was bad. People like Chris who apparently have sworn off being negative. But then there are the people who are legit. Like, it's not the writing quality. It's it's the fact that there's no binding villain. You're like, what? No. <laughs> oh yeah, like that guy that we watched a few weeks ago with all of his observations about how the MCU was doomed, but also that it was straight fire and cooking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right well, now it seems to be that Chris is worried that if people stop going to see Marvel movies because they suck, they won't go see movies in theaters. But this year, we've had like Super Mario Brothers, we've had Barbie, we've had Oppenheimer, yeah, they've all done exactly. really, really well. Mm -hmm. So I just don't think 
that fear is founded at all. Yeah, people are not going to not want to see movies anymore. And the ones that's, that are that's a desire that's not going to disappear. It like it's often word of mouth. Like it just keeps going for a longer period of time because people they tell their friends about it. Um, whereas Marvel relies on this is a big spectacle. You need to go and see this, and then nobody goes in the second weekend. Like Top Gun, that that went on for yeah, a ridiculous Ages. amount of time yeah. because people kept telling everybody else about how amazing it was, and eventually people as it broke, it was like, oh well, I need to go and see this because everyone's saying it's great. And then you got um, I mean, closer to home with Guardians, right? For, uh, the legs. Like a couple of years ago, I would guess, because there, there was a period of about two to three years where uh, was it like seventy to eighty percent of the entire cinema box office was MCU Phase Four, Avatar: The Way of Water, Jurassic World Dominion. And there was one other really big performer, and all of those were absolute dog shit. Yes. And so if you look at the decline of the MCU, and then you can start worrying about the future of cinema, because this is pretty much you know, a quarter of the entire box office, just to you know, pull a number out of my ass there. But it's a huge share of the box office, and if that disappears, what happens to cinema? Um, I don't know how the... I mean, I guess because Avatar has only had a couple of opportunities to be a terrible film, whereas MCU's had lots... And so maybe people aren't tired of it yet. But as, as has been pointed out, it's not as though nothing will arise to replace the garbage stuff. It's just that it might take a little bit of time for that to happen. But, you know, Mario was popular, as has been mentioned. Yeah. There's a couple of others which have done reasonably well. It's not necessarily going to kill cinema if the MCU goes the way of the Dodo. Well, as much yeah. as I, I feel like this is reflective of the spheres that we sort of, uh, sort of speak on this stuff with, but like as much as we will make the claim that cinema is, or film, whatever, is, is at a low point that seems unprecedented, at the same time, I feel like the prescription we have is... Uh, it's inevitably going to get better because capitalism is totally going to kick in, as it already is. Mm. They can't keep making these mistakes. They can't keep not making money. And eventually they're going to have to, you know, like an Oppenheimer, which I don't know how everyone feels here about it, but I thought it was pretty fucking good. So it's like, yeah, oh, cool. Really and it also made loads of money. Cool. And it's like, awesome. And, and that's the thing. It's like, oh, shit. Should we be taking more of a, a risk on films that aren't superheroes? Because super, and then like video game well, adaptations uh, and um, a, a live action anime that's not complete cringe you know it, it, it's some option you know what i mean like there's little little poking yeah. out of these industries and you're like as soon as the giant that is all the money going into superheroes fucks off that money's gonna have to go somewhere else it's like where is yeah, it yeah. we still have the thing going on that that all the cinemas i don't know signed all these contracts for all the big marvel movies already so they i don't know stink up all this all the theater rooms so they have to put in like Right. four or five screenings a day or this 10 big or however up. big they are <laughs> like that's not going to happen in the future with all those turn turn yeah, they might be really careful about what you're going to be like oh you're not going to get for. you're not going to get 20 screenings a day you get 10 you know and then we can get these other movies in and give them more uh more space to breathe i guess i don't know i, I don't think the risk argument works when you look at it from like what they could be doing with because um obviously Oh, what's it called? Where when you spend money on one thing and so you can't spend it on something else. I forgot the term. Opportunity um, costs. Opportunity, opportunity costs. costs. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. they could be taking three of those 250, 270 plus million dollar movies and make three medium budget movies for the same time. And so out of 12 movies for right. those mid budget, one of them's got to be big. Like you could be what building up new franchises and new series. And so the risk. I think it's way more risk to do a big budget movie than it would be m many. Oh yeah, I think it's ones. become a huge risk to invest in the MCU at this point. Like, what a, what, what crazy yeah. fucking person's going to do that right now? The reason why Jason Bloom is so successful as a producer is because he spends like five million dollars on each project, and most of them do reasonably well anyway and make their money back, and some of them make like twenty times their budget. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, the best that Marvel could have... The best that they probably could have even hoped for for something like the Marvels was maybe 600, 700 million, which, when you're spending as much money as you are, is that a good investment when, again, factoring an opportunity cost, you could have maybe made three movies that made cumulatively a lot more money than that? Yeah, and those movies can take more risks and try new things because they're cheaper. And yep. so more people will like it and you might have a niche audience but that niche audience will really like it and you can make multiple movies off the back of it if you can reliably make a bunch of 50 million dollar movies that make yeah you know that that give you a profit of 50 million or 100 million dollars each and you can do that again if you can do that reliably and you don't have to put all your eggs in one proverbial basket 
then that's got to be a really appealing idea. The stuff that you can try out, the sort of feelers you can put out, maybe that will allow you to be like, oh, maybe we can actually set trends instead of trying to constantly chase them. Do you guys yeah. remember Red Letter Media's video about the Ben-Hur reboot? Oh, I yeah, don't. I, I vaguely do. It's like a meme, right? Yeah, well, so there's one part that always sticks with me is when Mike is like, they could have taken their $100 million and made $100 $1 million movies. <laughs> <laughs> If only. Thing that gets that's true into... though. That's isn't that crazy to think about that? That's actually true. You could have made one hundred <laughs> one million dollar movies anymore. What's going to be the next big thing that gets people to go to the movie theaters? And I can tell you that this year I did feel a lot of hope with Barbie and Oppenheimer doing as well as they did. But a lot of that is Why because not Mario? we kind of. Why not Mario? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> made it. Not I don't know if Barbie gives me we, hope. Like told but... people they had to go watch <laughs> um, both, and people like there. There is an element of it's kind of cool that like a a film that is that like a lot of the aspects of its production and stuff are really cool and like yeah. interesting, and that 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 exists and can. I think we all admitted that, that we were curious Bobby. about Bobby. Was oh like, yeah, was this I was curious. Yeah, yeah, I, was, I, was yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. I was kind of honestly looking forward to. It. <laughs> But oh well. I was hoping it was going to be fun. Oh well. <laughs> People were like, well, I'm not cool unless I go watch both. I better watch both. And it was definitely bolstered by that. But also, they're both really good movies. And well, why do you keep. Really good but like, both he's just, really good. Uh, hello? Like, Chris, oh, come on. Oh, but also, what's the implication? Yeah, there, what's the implication? It's really that we good. need better film in general. That's right. the big yes. problem. Yes. In fact, Tom Cruise himself was a major supporter of the double feature, even campaigning for it. I don't know what that would mean. If anything, like he Tom Cruise supporting them. That's, that's the real great. I guess, I guess, because uh, call it to authority, it maybe. I think it is just accepted that both of the films benefited from. Uh, is he going to talk about Dead Reckoning? Time, I think. Ah, well, yeah, that's right. Because if he's saying uh, like they're is... so good, even Tom Cruise supported and promoted them, it'd be like, yeah. And then yes, Tom Cruise's three hundred million dollar film yeah. uh, did not succeed. He does burn to the that. point where we'll be renaming the sequel. That's pretty bad. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's really bad, I would say. I think that's very telling. Publicly. It'll probably be like Oppenheimer first and then Barbie, I think. I think it's like you want, like, Oppenheimer's going to be on a, on a Friday. Do you know what I mean? And then you, you can go, I'll probably see it in the afternoon. You want that packed audience. And then I want to see Barbie right afterwards with a packed audience. So Friday is like, you know, I used to plan my days where you'd start out early in the morning. I don't know if this has anything to do with anything, really. Oh, was that no. the picture of them at the top going to see uh, good old Indiana Jones, huh? Uh, uh, oh, talk, no. talk about that, Chris. Talk about Dial of Destiny. Oh, God. Remember Indiana Jones? Dude, every Disney movie that's come out this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. All ass. This is what I mean. If someone said, like, oh, Dial of Destiny suffered at the box office because people aren't going to theaters. Like, no, it was shit. It was seriously <laughs> super awful, shit. And everyone Ooh, who went to go... Everyone went to go see it, said it was shit. It was a horrible Nobody movie. Liked it. And you go to movies all day, and I like doing that. You know, and I'd go from one cinema to the next, and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to see them both, both opening day. And in an unfortunate twist of fate, his excellent oh, Mission Impossible yeah. film suffered. Uh, I, uh, from... Well, here we go. Here's the hot take. If people ought to wear it, that's because the film's bad. It's a bad, bad Mission Impossible. It's unfortunately, bad unfortunately, it's quite bad. Mm -hmm. uh, the script yeah. is horrendous. Fallout was so fucking kind of goat. Suck. And I don't Fallout know what the hell was they did. this bizarre, amazing anomaly that somehow managed to be... Remember the scene in Fallout where where uh, Ethan is is thinking about the, the plan to, uh, to break out lane and then imagining and then it's just no no sounds it's just the music of him like like mowing down all of the police officers to get to remember that sequence and like how and and, and then how they tied that into the broader theme of that ethan cares about the one life that he values every individual life and it's important that people like that exist what happened how did that happen <laughs> I mean, how did that movie um, come to exist yeah but like, we they, grand they, though we did our Mission Impossible homework before Dead Reckoning came out, and uh, between me, Rags, and Frank, like we watched the whole set, and um, it was it was kind of weird watching Fallout again because it really stuck out. It was like this is yes. this is unusual compared to everything else. This is they a did. shockingly yeah. It's a just to be good. Fallout is very very good. Um, it is one um, of the best action movies in general. I would oh, say. I fucking love yeah. the action in it, and then I love Ethan as a character in it, and then obviously. Uh, in really interesting plot weaving all over the place and Henry Cavill, what an excellent choice for a 
like an unlikely foil turned villain by the end. Like that shit's mm. there's so much in it that's working. And we talked about it at the time, but it's just like, ah, fuck it, it's Mission Impossible. Goofy enough stuff has happened. You should have brought him back. It should have been Henry Cavill in a two parter at the end as the villain combined with some other bullshit if you want it. But the AI thing was such a fucking bad idea. Oh, it's awful. Yes, it was. Like, AI is a I, bad I, idea, but they did it badly. They yeah. they done like um, oh, I I literally knew the name of the series. I keep thinking a human target, but it's not the one. Ah, uh, Code Lyoko. Uh, the one that I keep hearing is Person of Interest was a Person show of Interest. Thank you. AI. Yeah, Eagle that eye. is on. So oh. that is they do an incredible AI that builds up from like a little thing to literally world encompassing by the end of the final series. Hmm. Um, they should have just watched that series and done that. That's all they should have done. Well. Instead, they had the guy in the little pod connected with the mask on, I guess, to the computer. Oh, the, the coffin the... thing. What even, yeah. what even is that? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out in the next episode that won't be called part two. <laughs> we'll find out in part two, which will now absolutely be the end of the Mission Impossible series. Yes, that'll be it. Mm -hmm. One cinema to the next, and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to see them both, both opening day. And in an unfortunate twist of fate, his excellent Mission Impossible film suffered from the Barbenheimer smackdown at the box office. So is that the narrative we're going to go with? From the Barbenheimer. I, I yeah. so, I'm so tired of this idea that, no, it was obvious that Mission Impossible should have moved out of the way when Fallout made like $800 million. It was so obvious that it should have moved out of the way. I think that's absurd. I, I think they had yeah. every reason to think they were going to make a lot of money. Yeah, it's busy, but July's always busy. They yeah. like yes, obviously that phenomenon had an impact, but I think I think the fact that Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning wasn't very good probably also played a big role. People talking about it didn't last very long. It just didn't. Nope. Nope, because nope. it was just kind of like, oh and yeah, no, a really cool action movie, whereas Fallout could again evoke more interesting conversations about that film because Yeah, well not only that, play. we had a direct comparison to Top Gun. It's like that's a Tom Cruise led hyper action movie big budget uh macquarie's directing as well right there's loads of similarities right, he, was, uh, he was producing oh, okay and well Rider. those two is like a team i guess you could put it that way sure. they're involved and, and like yeah it's like why didn't why did one do so much better and you can talk about ips and stuff but it's like mission impossible fallout was very successful this is the sequel you know what i mean like it's it's, it's in the public consciousness everyone was pretty excited but like it comes out and i remember a lot of people saying yeah it was really good and then a lot of people after a week were like mm. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> But I do feel a genuine craving from audiences for outside the box filmmaking, and I don't think it's just, just say me. they want good movies. Well, but fucking say it. <laughs> he feels a craving from the audience for outside the box filmmaking. Would that not be represented then in, you know, box office somewhat? Yeah, it should be. Or is he but saying that there's a? If there's I think a... back on the on the uh, what was it called, the Northman? Is that what was like two years ago? Which would kind of kind of fun to. Sorry. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think because that, that was, I think, I, I, yeah, I watched that in the cinema. I was like, I think it was okay. I don't even remember it that well. But it was like it was a little bit different. But yeah, that didn't do very well. That's not going to be another one of those. Because I don't think they want necessarily something different. They want something good and entertaining it's... and something that doesn't waste their time. You know, like Top Gun 2 wouldn't exactly be called, I don't think, outside of the box film. No, absolutely. It's yeah. a sequel to a long established thing, and it plays on lots of quite safe and familiar beats, but it gives character payoffs, and people kind of liked it. I suppose, would we concede Barbie is outside of the box filmmaking? Up to a I point, say I'd so. say Barbie, yeah. I'd say relatively, Reasonable, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and that's the thing, it's like, what does the audience want? It's like, well, it's really fucking hard, and if you, everyone knew the easy answers to that, then obviously we'd be releasing nothing but, uh, you know, billion dollar films and stuff, but that's not what's happening inside my small filmmakers film lover community that we're all kind of a part of where we want to see everything and we're excited about film and we talk about movies and it means a lot to us i know that not everybody's like that i have tons of friends who watch like two movies in theaters a year but i am actually a little concerned for movie theaters for physical media for some of these things that i do why, i don't feel... know why we keep talking about physical media when mm. the, like that's a different conversation to movie theaters it has to be yeah i just want him to uh, move it along to like ultimate like what's, what so let's say physical media dies outright uh chris tell me like your insights what do you think how, how does things suffer moving forward with that like tell me what you think and don't just repeat things you've heard from other people but i don't even know if we're gonna get that far because we're halfway through now I don't feel like we've gotten a lot from him so far, you know? Yeah. Come on. Our staples 
of our industry, of what we love, because everything is changing right now and it's very scary. Just see what I mean? It's very scary. Everything's <laughs> changing and it's scary. It's like that's yeah. Mm. What is changing? Uh, What's scary? I feel like okay, so this, these. now we're moving on to a different conversation. We're talking about yeah, the Warner Brothers shelving films. That feels like it's very much disconnected from the. The, yeah, but we're going to talk about it now, Fringy. Yeah, because we could talk <laughs> for ages about the nature of, like, why is physical media selling less, and what happens if it stops entirely, and, you know, negative, positive. And then we could talk about theaters, pros and cons of going, and then pros and cons of it going forever. And then we mm -hmm. could talk about the nature of films being completed and shelved permanently, the pros and cons, or why that happens. So it's just like, Chris, I feel like you're just highlighting these things, and you're not quite explaining why, but let's see if he does it for this one, other than saying, this is art that's been made, and now people can't see it, and that's bad. Which, uh, I guess this has now aged pretty badly, right? Because they're shipping it around now? Well, no, he, he, that might be in the video. Yeah, okay. he po points it out now. Yeah. Right, Warner right. Brothers once again cancelled a finished movie with the Coyote vs. Acme film that apparently was completely done and had really strong test scores at screenings. Now, recent reports do seem to indicate that right, Warner okay. might allow the film to be sold elsewhere. But keep in mind that was only after being absolutely eviscerated in the press and social media by every single entertainment outlet, as well as a 100% united public and fandom. If we had remained silent, this potential option might not have shown itself. Do you have any idea how terrifying that is? Isn't Especially that a good a thing, filmmaker. though? You work so hard. I'm, this is what I mean. I'm, I'm waiting for him to sort of crystallize I'm a, for a the, point. Yeah. Give me some because now he's going to say a point that I consider again unrelated, which is, doesn't it suck to work on something only to, by the time it's done, they're like, eh, nah, and then nobody gets to see it? Yeah, sure. What's that got uh, to do with the, what, what, what's that got to do with, like, Marvel films not making money and the death of movie theaters? But part of them, also, I think part of the, the earlier argument is that movie theaters are dying because not enough people are going to go and see films because, you know, and that's worrying and that's changing and that's terrifying. And yet here's a really good example of fans clamoring to see a thing. And the studio realizing that they made a mistake and correcting it. Yeah, if anything, well, yeah. you could say this is evidence of to have hope. I, I guess so. But but now he's about to do the the thing of talking about how it would be scary if you made a film and then they decide now nah, we're not going to release it. Which yeah, but why? Like that's a different conversation. But also, I, I mean, you know, the reason why Warner Brothers is doing this shit is because they're in a lot of fucking debt. That's why they're doing yeah. it. This is, so this uh, is what I mean. I, I wasn't going to be the first to bring it up. I was waiting for it. It was just like, should we talk about why this shit happens? Do you know why it happens, Chris? You're very savvy with the yeah, industry now. Course. I would have to... I, I would say this is a terrible long-term strategy because if you're like a director, you want to go to the studio that has a track record for shelving completed projects? Yeah, probably I might not. go somewhere you else. Probably, <laughs> you probably want to work with a different studio. So like short... Short term, you know, Warner Brothers might make some money, but this seems like a disastrous long term move. Yeah. E even putting to one side the whole not you can releasing subvert things. That or or circumvent that. You could make it so that you're only going to sign if you guarantee release upon completion or whatever. Like you can have um, directors that can get their safeties put in. Uh, well, sure, but like, I guess that would have to be a thing you'd need now compared to before where there was just an expectation that when the film has been shot, gonna come out. You know, and there are a lot, a lot of directors that might actually, like, you know, do you really think that Peyton Reed is going to be like, no, you're not releasing my movie, no. Um, I was, I was I just know, reading I the other day. I guess um, I don't know. Maybe I'm being too mean. I was just reading the other day that Snowpiercer Season 4, is that, that was finished and wasn't being released on TNT. So I looked up when he said Warner Brothers, yeah, it's Warner Brothers Discovery. <laughs> They've yeah. done it with yeah. an entire That's season. I mean. it's, it makes them look, I, it. I got to imagine there are a lot of people who'd be like, dude, I, I don't ever want to work with Warner Brothers. Like, why would I work with a studio that has a way greater chance than any other major film studio of just shelving something that's already done? Um, I think I think long term, it's a really bad idea. And it pisses off the viewers um, as well. Like, that's yeah, the final exactly. series, and no one will know what happened. But this isn't completely brand new as a process. This has happened before in history uh, with film as well, being shelved uh, for amounts of time. The thing is that having multiple films pretty close to each other. Mm. At the, you know what I mean? Like when you've got like three or four movies within the span of a year that were already done and ready to go and then you're like, it's, it's just- I mean, I understand your argument. I just don't think Warner Brothers are gonna have trouble finding directors. I don't buy that as a thing that's gonna happen. Uh, I could imagine that it would be a bit more of a struggle. Yes. I mean, there's so many that, that they'll have the pick of. And then there's plenty of people who will just take the job to have the job, even with the worry uh, yeah. of the film not coming out.
Well, sure, but but what about I mean, what about like the the notion of losing the big names that will never come back? Like, I don't think Christopher Nolan's ever going to work with Warner Brothers again. Like, he's now with Universal. I think James Wan isn't with Warner Brothers anymore either. He's going over to Universal. Like, there is definitely an element of just losing key talent that will never ever ever come back. Um, which is probably not good. Having the doors closed permanently for certain creators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at that point, they're going to need to. Focus on the ones that are willing to work with them, or luck out mm. with brand new talent that eventually becomes someone like a no. And then, of course, you have to deal with the general. Re like Warner Brothers as a studio kind of has a bit of a clown reputation now. They're kind of viewed as like a bit of a clown studio, it seems. Of like that they've had films that keep consistently failing, and that they're shelving these projects. Uh, it's the same problem Disney has right now, right? As well of of having like a kind of a negative att uh, attachment to their name. Yeah, because they keep just uh, getting rid of stuff on the on the network, right? On the Disney Plus network. Does that? Just yeah. Can't uh, watch anymore. Mm -hmm. Is there at least like physical copies films. you can get for those, or are they just gone? Uh, I don't think you can get. To... There's no physical copy of Willow, for example, which is a real. Shame. <laughs> oh, everyone wants yeah. Do you guys I love the fact really that good. I, I own I ironically do. <laughs> Willow, Willow's only alive in piracy. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is gonna pirate K. that and be like, I gotta protect it. <laughs> Thank you, piracy. Any idea how terrifying that is, especially as a filmmaker. You work so hard to get that ever elusive green light. And someone gives you that green light. And you're like, all right, I'm in. Yeah, and you're right, Fring. I, I don't know what this does this support anything else, or is he just saying the state um, of the film industry as a whole? Just Another but, state but it, of the movie industry, I think. I guess I the thing think... is, he would, he would have to accept that this is downstream of films are failing, studios are losing money. Yeah, and that this... Like, Warner Brothers and Disney have a massive amount of debt. You know, um, if the Snyderverse were fucking 10 out of 10, this maybe is... You know, everything would be okay for Warner Brothers in a lot of other ways, like... Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. You, make, you wonder, like, because those films could have made shit tons of money. And then, you know, yeah, someone oh, made okay amounts of money. So it's just like, you want the amount of knock-on that that would have had in the industry in lots of ways. I, I guess the thing is now, they probably would like some okay money compared to... Yes. <laughs> it's, like yeah, they can't even make okay money in, in a lot of these. Well, it's crazy. They fucking The money. Suicide Squad flopped, right? Yes, it did. But mm. I guess the thing is, that was during... COVID times. Well, no, because now the problem is, again, Five Nights at Freddy was released simultaneously on streaming, and it still made money, so... I mean, uh, the assumption for uh, back then was that it was it was worse because like Black Widow, Wonder Woman eighty four, Wonder Woman eighty four, um, yeah, a lot of movies. Yeah, um, but now now I'm not so sure. The fact that Five Nights at Freddy's yeah. made a bunch of money, also well, uh, being on uh, we highlighted at the time think... with Black Adam that we were like that that suffered probably because I guess the Rock isn't as big a draw. I guess the Black Adam's oh, characters and that is it's like now. now looking back, it's like oh, I think it was just that. Like, things are just fucking downtrending, yeah. hardcore. Yeah, I wish they, they could make Black Adam money. Yeah. Black Adam was... You know, <laughs> Black <like> Adam <laughs> money. Ooh, that Black Adam, oh, man. I'm making the that Black Adam money. Black <laughs> Let's go. But now I better really focus, because I gotta make this thing. All right, I made it. Holy shit. Yeah, see, the, I don't, I don't know right. what he's doing here. Like, this is the big impassioned speech of, look, I'm a creator. I can relate to the struggle yeah. of creating something and then it getting shelved and nobody ever seeing it. Like, you don't need to do that. Everybody well, understands this, I just, that that's not a good thing. I'm motivated to be like, well, I mean, there's other stories happening at the same time. There's all kinds of, like, business decisions that are being made that will be beyond the creative aspect. That That's just the nature of all of this. The creation, the fact that you even had a chance to make it in the first place as a result of loads of very cold business decisions. So the fact that there's repercussions for those decisions is something you should be prepared for in some way, shape, or form. But then on I mean, top of that... you're going to work... Mm -hmm. what, do you want to go ahead? I was just going to say, if you're working for a big studio, you have to understand that this is going to be part of the equation. If you work yeah, some, with some... In the same way, if you're working for EA, you know the deal. Like, if, you, if you're working at an EA studio, you, you understand the deal, okay? you got to make a lot <laughs> of money. And on that note, you, you know, why don't you make a speech about how horrible it is to have your script fucked with, or to have your scenes fucked with at editing, or have your scenes fucked yeah. with at the time with some studio head being like, I'm secondary director now, woohoo, look at me, well, this goes there. I this guess goes there. <laughs> <That's>, uh... <laughs> there. <laughs> I, um, there, I was watching, um, Random Film Talk made a videos on The Hobbit, which are very good. I highly fucking recommend them. Uh, the Hobbit trilogy of movies. 
<laughs> and one of the things that he discovered was that Thranduil, who was the Elven King character that you don't remember, he was actually one of the best characters in the movies. They had an entire segment or a, an entire element of his character that was essentially his his whole motivation for why he wants to why he's involved in the story essentially for the most part and it was just removed. They had it and they the the scene where like when Thorin dies at the end and they have one of the dwarves there and he just like they 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 shot a whole scene where the dwarf is reacting to his death and he's like oh my god and he's acting his ass off and he's got his face and everything and they just cut these sorts of things out and it just it it gets your mind back on that track of like holy shit they make all these things and they just no. don't have it in these are just creative decisions that someone makes to be like nah we don't need to see, you know, this very important, this, this very prominent dwarf who's been Thorin's most like allied, you know, guy that's been with him through thick and thin through the whole thing. Who's the most duty bound. We don't need to see him reacting to his death, even though we like shot the fucking scene. And there it is. You can see the scene that 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 they shot with on the green screen that they just didn't have in the movie. And you're like, what? Who makes these decisions? The Ryan Johnson thing about we don't need to see Luke Morn. You know, like what the what the no. fuck? Oh why? My gosh. why? I don't understand. Like, why you guys make these? You spend all this money and this time and effort, and one of you, one of you fuckers, was just like, nah. Who we was it? Don't Put have it. Up. Who the fuck <laughs> don't have it in the movie. Don't do it. No, we we don't need that. Mm. We did all of post, all of the CG, all of the animation. We've got the score. It's edited. It's being tested. Holy shit! Like we're here. And then some guy just checks a few boxes on a form and says, fuck you. I yeah, but like, this is what I mean. I fucking hate to try and add more context to his statement, but it's like, it is a little bit more complicated than he checks a few boxes. It's like, you know, yeah. you know, there's a huge process going on. There's loads of fiduciary responsibilities. It's like, it's just boring to present this as, you know, someone made a thing and it was beautiful and it was crushed by the foot of the suit. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Because that guy who made the thing is probably like, oh, the turnaround for this one is probably not going to be good enough. It's going to be just more, quote-unquote, profitable to just shelve it and get the tax backs for that or whatever yeah, like, works. There's like, it's like a whole machine behind this, obviously. Loads of lame business suit decision things that everyone yeah. hates. It's just that, like, you could at least try to... Because though, though, this is what I try to bring up whenever someone talks about studio interference. It's like, yeah, but nobody ever talks about the times it worked. Ever. Mm-hmm. Because nobody fucking well, wants to. Sometimes directors have stupid fucking decisions that are awful. True. What That's do we say thing. about this, that? Hmm. The, these cancellation, these uh, not showing it to people might be when it works. Like, we never saw, uh, what was it, Batwoman or Batgirl? Batgirl, yeah. Batgirl, yeah. yeah. Like, if that was just genuinely so bad that they watched it, like, no <laughs> one's watching this, then that was it working. He made the right decision. And you can you can make the argument, oh, well, they spent a lot of time on it. Yeah, but what they made was trash. And so yeah. somebody else made the call that you couldn't because they were yeah, more you talented. You can spend a lot of time gambling and you still have to know to walk away from the table. Yeah, it, it's their money, not yours. That's Cash. the thing. Yeah, but he made a thing. It was beautiful. Look at it. Look at it wiggle. What you do? Look at That's it. the world we're living in right now, and no one's taking this seriously. People are pissed. That's about not. I it. mean, no one's taking this seriously. No one's taking it seriously. Well, seriously. Yeah. I mean, you just something. said that there was well, a big just, throwback. Didn't you just say, what, yeah, just what he said. He said nobody's taking it seriously. People were pissed. These are two contradict. This is yeah. what's known as a contradiction. People do <laughs> care. <laughs> People are mad about it. It's, Maybe. Also, it's, it's highly, it's like ridiculously particular as well, because fair enough, if, if all you're looking at when you're doing this analysis is Warner and Disney, then yes, you might get the sense that film is completely and irrevocably fucked for all time. But notably, there are, you know, other studios. And also, we've just come off the back of a long period where streaming services were handing out unlimited amounts of money to people with no track record to do pretty much whatever they wanted. There was a period where Netflix would greenlight pretty much any pitch that was ever yeah, given to them. Well, I mean, Platoon, hey, you, well, yep. who, wrote, uh, who wrote Rings of Power? Some <laughs> guys. Yeah. It was, it was some the uncredited role on the Star Trek. That's actually a point we was, yeah. don't talk about enough. Mm. Yeah, the amount of fucking talent that's given carte blanche to do fucking anything crazy that they want without any histories is absolutely nuts 
And it's actually mm, that, right, right in fit in with the whole experimentation outside of the box filmmaking. Why don't we give it to the guy who's been mopping the floors? Fuck it. What's he got to say about Ant Man? It's like, oh, now, unironically, we want them to do that, but for different reasons. We're just like anyone. Just get anyone yeah, else. Yeah, anyone. That <laughs> era is very much over after the writers and actors strike. Uh, I remember reading a whole yep. bunch of articles and talking about how now they're going to be spending less money. There are going to be less scripted shows. There's going to be. Probably consolidation of streaming services. They can't all. They like. I don't see how Peacock. That's not long for this world. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see mm -hmm. how that could be long for this world at all. Um, well, remember, yeah, that era is definitely over. Was it phase one? Was uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Univer Joe, uh, Paramount. No, Paramount. no, no, no. Um, Joe Johnston was Captain America, right? Um, and you got Kenneth Branagh was Thor. Uh, Iron oh, Man, John oh, Favreau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Incredible Hulk. Who made that? I can't remember. Well, in any case, those are pretty well-known names. Then you get Joss Whedon for the big, you know, collection one. James Gunn coming in to do Guardians. Um, they, 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 I mean, like, oh, look, creators with histories that are very well recognized, and you actually have a reason to choose them? Like, oh, Compact Joss Whedon through. has made several TV shows with team-ups of several, like, heroes, and he's obsessed with the comics. And he's got experience, like, Compact working on projects like this. I guess that makes some sense. <laughs> Michael Waldron. Oh, no. It was Jeff Loveness. Oh, it's my first screenplay for a film, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. How? How? <laughs> I don't understand. How is that possible? Exactly, yeah. And the the writers that, like, you check their histories, and it's like, oh, they did one episode of Flim Flam from 1973. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Why? I love Flim Flams. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> unreal. And so, yeah, like, you'll be like, Chris, you, you know, I guess you consider that pretty cool, right? Like, giving all these people a chance when they've got no histories or experience, and it's crashed and burned the whole fucking industry for Disney? <laughs> <laughs> like, what do we think well, about I that? Hope you guys, I yeah, I hope you're satisfied with how that experiment played out. Mm. But I'm telling you, like, these are all really bad omens. David Zaz. Don't not give omens. me that. That's just give thing me happening. actual arguments. Talk about what it's going to do as a cause and effect. Don't say bad omens. <laughs> yeah, the, the bad omen is when the eagle flies on the left side of your army before the battle. <laughs> No, the, I hate when it's it not the bad omen isn't you getting fucking destroyed in the battle. That's just the <laughs> you being thing stabbed occurring. in the face. You're like, this is a bad <laughs> omen. It's like, oh, it's a bad omen. <laughs> ah, this, my eye. Yeah, this might not go so well, guys. This is an <laughs> ill portent. <laughs> yes. Takes over an entire movie studio who doesn't care about film, obviously, who will literally cancel and completely just delete from existence a movie that James Gunn has a screen story credit on. That doesn't mean... Okay, doesn't okay mean so anything. implicit in what you just said is there are creators who are, so, are worth just less than other creators. And That's thus... actually so fascinating. <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> the implication here is, oh, well, James, a James Gunn film is less worthy of being deleted from existence. Than that guy's one, yeah. Than <laughs> some other guy. I'm well, so the, what's funny that is that we might argue that. Fine. We might yeah, argue. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, some creators are probably just There's flat no out worth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no we would say that. it's a better There's bet. No like, if you're going to get a screenplay from James Gunn versus uh, Michael Waldron, we'd be like, oh, yeah, James Gunn. But, like, Chris <laughs> isn't in the position. He's made the whole fucking thing about not being negative, not trashing anybody. But at the same time, he's like, yeah, but yours is worthy of being destroyed compared to <laughs> James Gunn. <laughs> or maybe, or maybe the absolute. We're not saying it's worse. It's just not cinema. Maybe his reading was not art. The fact that they would look at a James Gunn thing, James Gunn, a guy who's made money, um, that they would even look at his thing and decide, nah, maybe that's well, what he's saying. Shouldn't you then extend the logic to, wow, imagine how fucking bad it was that even a James Gunn connection couldn't save it? Yeah. Well, yeah, but but he can't. He's not going to trash any people, filmmakers though. Not that's not trash, no, that, that, that's, that's no, an no, assumption no. of what they thought, no, not what he thinks. He's not, no, it's okay. You know what? You raise an interesting point. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely something to think about, Fringy. And Gunn yeah. is working quite a lot with Warner Brothers right now, isn't he? That's where we're at. Entire filmmakers, movies, and TV shows are disappearing from. Entire filmmakers. That's <laughs> <laughs> the Filmmakers entire, <laughs> maybe? Streaming services. No, oh. For example, Those writers and stuff are the reason why they're disappearing. It's because they were having to pay them to keep them on the service, and nobody was watching this stuff. It's so it's like, like, if you want to give up your residuals, they'll keep them forever. I consider all the yeah, things man. he's highlighting as symptomatic of a core problem, which is that film is on an unfortunate decline in the highest of yeah. budgets area, especially superheroes, and it's been so thoroughly acknowledged at this point that like everyone's making fun of it. 
Even technically you, Chris. The thumbnail has the models in it. What do you think you're trying to say? <laughs> Let it out, didn't Chris. say it. Let so it out. It's... TV shows are disappearing from streaming services. For example, did you know that Mike Flanagan's great you know? movie Hush is no longer on Netflix? Yeah, that's bullshit. But there's yeah, a lot of these nice. examples that are really bad. Like, films that are just gone forever. Like mm -hmm. Willow, the the precious, precious Willow. Oh, no, <laughs> that's right. Willow, less than six months after the last episode wrapped up. Um, no, it's less than six months after the first episode launched. The entire thing was gone from Disney Plus. You had a you you did not have much of a window to watch that show. The only way to watch that show right now is a non legal mean. It's so nuts. I can't. I just... It's insane. That whole th an entire series of TV. Well, and, and the, like that quick, it's gone. That might be the fate for Hush right now, unless it gets. So I know that um, Flanagan's done with Netflix in like a negative way. I'm pretty sure he had like pissed off with them. Oh um, yeah, I was going over to Prime. Yeah, because and it might be so, to do with something to do with like how the uh, the content is sort of saved slash. Because I know that you have, to, you have to like fight for physical releases, which I have of uh, Hill House and Bly. I don't know if there is one Ooh, for Midnight nice. Mass, nor do I think there will be one for Usher. Sucks, yeah, so that's like a shame. What can you do? I really yeah. like that, sure. yeah. It's interesting that he framed it like, like, oh, his great movie, you can't find it anywhere. Like, would he feel that way if it wasn't great in his mind? Does the quality matter oh, for probably... whether it's okay to disappear them, you know? He probably would just wouldn't bring it up or, you know, just going to brush over. It's like, oh, yeah, and that movie, too. You know, I don't know. That was a Netflix movie. It's nowhere. You can't watch Hush anywhere right now yeah, legally. Shit. It just doesn't exist. There was never a Blu-ray. It's erased until somebody picks it up at some point. And maybe that'll happen. Maybe it won't. This is why people are concerned. I don't think this is just that Simpsons meme of the old man yelling at a cloud. Yeah, nobody, really, nobody was not... comparing the old man yells at a cloud. It's not nothing to do with being old. What it, yeah, nobody's <laughs> saying that. Why has he spent yeah, 11 this minutes out of touch old people yeah. declaring things that are happening that people find uncomfortable slash wrong? It's like, can you make a point, though? What's your point, Chris? What do we need to do? What happens next? I really do think that there are really bad signs here. If the big Stop <laughs> Stop <laughs> saying bad signs. Start saying ill portents. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big franchise that's been keeping theaters afloat over the years is going downhill and less people are attending them. Okay, uh, here's a question. Do you guys He's not think... not blaming the audience in this, is he? Do you think there's a reasonable timeline from where we are now where all theaters shut down? No. No, don't think no. so. I don't think so either. Nope. Don't, I don't Do you think... think, so. think... I think... There's a reasonable right. timeline in which uh, theaters start to open up more. Mm, not in the near future. Um, no. I don't know. Right. I think they're just sort of playing it by ear right now. I think well, it's, that, uh, it's that hard I, to say. I think that highlights kind of where I was going with that, which is I feel like we all agree it's more likely that theaters will become healthier than stop entirely. Um, I mean, it might be. Maybe the conclusion to be drawn from the destruction of Marvel is maybe this is a good thing. Maybe that. Well, I mean, obviously, I I don't like these movies, and I would like for them to be less of them or for them to be better. Right. Rather, the idea that the industry has been kept afloat by these shit movies was always just the nostalgia critic argument. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's except, gross. It's horrible. I think it, it's just maybe maybe that's the conclusion. Is this was always untenable? This was inevitable, and we need to get to a place where. Films, uh, you know, the, the industry is thriving on like a healthy mix of movies rather than just one set of really, really, really bad movies that was never going to last if the quality was going to deteriorate. Like, I, I don't know that it, there's necessarily any reason to believe that everything's fucked because of this downward trend, I'm especially hoping. when, as has been pointed out, unexpected films like a, a three hour long biopic about Oppenheimer, R rated biopic about Oppenheimer, is yeah. one of the most successful films of the year. Well, so that's the thing. I'm hoping instead of dooming about this and being like, this could spell the end for theaters, I'd rather see it as this is spelling the end of Marvel's stranglehold on theaters to the yes. point where yeah. other films like an R-rated biopic or a adaptation of a video game or a, a, a fucking Barbie, all of these can make a billion. And it's like, oh. That's as has been pointed out um, before, when, when like Doctor Strange was coming out, you pull up like any theater, there was like 20 screenings, 30 screenings, 40 screenings, yep. and then if you want to see any other film, 
It's like, oh, well, you can go see it at, like, 1 p.m. on a Wednesday. It, you know, like, there, there was an element of they were taking up so much space that other films didn't even have, like, the capacity to meaningfully compete. Maybe it'll become a more balanced playing field. Maybe part of the reason why some of these other middle market films have been failing is because there wasn't enough space for them physically at the theatre. Yeah. And maybe that'll change. Also, yeah, the theatres all... respond to, to market conditions that have nothing to do with even the quality of the films. In my hometown, before TV was a thing, had about six cinemas in it. TV comes along and there's a huge contraction in the number of independent cinemas, largely because more people were finding it easier and cheaper and more enjoyable to stay home. There's still a big theatre going audience, but it's not going to be as big because people aren't locked into that as the main means of consuming the product. And so there, there will inevitably be a change because of the rise of streaming, for example, and because of uh, the, the proliferation of, of new big budget TV shows, which are as good as movies, or the fact that movies move to TV so much more quickly. You will, I don't think we'll have the same number of cinemas in 10 years as we do now. I think that number will decrease and more fewer, fewer but bigger chains will own them all. My town has two cinemas. There's no point in having two cinemas. It will never fill two cinemas on any given day. Eventually, they will probably go back to being one. But that's because there's only really the demand for one. But it's never going to go away. It's just going to be maybe a smaller share of the overall viewing demographic. And that raises actually... the question of how many theatres should there be? Mm. As many as there need. I mean, That's pretty much the only answer. As many, yeah. as, there, yep. yeah, as many as there is is probably <laughs> going to be about that number because it sort of yeah. corrects for itself. You've now made me think about something else that has also been absent from the conversation in terms of talking about like the market conditions. Like, inflation is pretty high. You know, a lot of people are, a lot of, like, cost of living is a thing, you know, that's happening right now as well as, like, a problem that is absolutely and almost certainly contributing to these sorts of problems of, like, the amount of money that's being made in entertainment sector. You know, when people are, when it's costing more money to buy groceries, people might be more selective about the movies they see in theaters. And maybe Which, those conditions will be, like, alleviated in, in, you know, a year or two or three or four. Well, and like, it's hard to say long term how what the demand's going to look like even with that uh you could say equal parts then that the films have to be great to pull people into the uh, theaters to watch them there like yeah uh, and, and then of course you know the fact that films are now having to compete with video games right people you know there's right. a lot of people like, i'd rather play video games video games make more money than the film industry uh make more money than television you're also competing against other mediums of entertainment that exist yeah. out there and well, you know not to be YouTube. too like me yes. about it but um you know, the whole, like, great men create great times, great times create weak men, weak men create weak times. You know, like, we could, we, if you replace yeah. men with films, uh, you know, and the times with, I don't know, box office maybe, or, or health of theater or health of film industry. It's like, I feel like we maybe entered a big old portion of really great films created shit times. Because, uh, oh, no, good times, and then good times, the, the, the uh, apathy slash um, complacency created loads of really you know, bad to okay films that have now created this time where it's uh, all over the place. We don't know what's going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Where the fuck's going on? <laughs> and, uh... and the, you have the analogous effect in, like, I think a couple of the business cycle theories have the, the idea of malinvestment, which is a, a kind of an analogy for good men create bad times, which is that, you know, you've had a period of incredibly free, easy and cheap money, which is being poured into hugely, like, non-profitable things. But because the money is so easy to get, no one's really paying attention to where it's going. And so it is, like, people will say, yeah, it's absolutely tenable to do multiple reshoots for Dial of Destiny and spend an extra $200 million on that. That's definitely something we can do, because we've got the cash lying around, you know. And then, of course, that produces a worse product because it becomes baked into the business decision that you can just top up the cash if ever you need to reshoot, if ever you need to improve. And of course, it's never going to make a profit. Then the money begins to run out and all of a sudden that can't happen anymore. And eventually that will probably lead to an, like, an improvement in the quality of film because it's taken out of the equation that you can just keep spending unlimited amounts of money on filler content because you now have to be much more savvy about where you're spending a limited pool of cash. And eventually it comes around and the business cycle becomes more profitable and everything's optimistic again, but we're coming off the end of, yeah. or at least we might be in the middle of this incredibly shit time. Well, because yeah. isn't it nuts that we would be known, I think, on the internet more so as the doomery side of things. Like, we would be like, oh, you hate everything and you're always negative. But, like, I see this headline as, like, hope. It's like, finally, these fucking movies are not making ridiculous yeah. amounts of money and holding yep. over everything. Same. But Chris is like, this is terrible. Theaters are going to start dying. Yeah, it's like... 
Marvel it's almost Fallen, like um, Marvel Films it, failing to have like a market correction in the stock market, you know? It's like, oh, all right, yeah, now we finally realize that this shit is untenable <laughs> and unsustainable. Yeah, but, and, it, and now it's reflecting its true value in the marketplace. This is a side effect of not being able to say anything's negative. If you remove negati negativity, everything has the same value. And yeah, so what if the situation's the biggest negative? movies dying, all movies die because nothing is, there's no hierarchy, nothing is better than anything else. Does, right, where, yeah, like, if, if everything's equal, well, then yeah. He, exactly, how does he distinguish between, if, if a Marvel movie he fails can't. versus any movie, is that any better or worse? Yeah, the answer is that he can't, unless, of course, he actually has a perspective, which is that he believes Marvel movies are, like, inferior as art to, yeah. you know, so to, uh, uh, to him, it's just movies as a whole are dying because these movies are the biggest ones and they don't work. Which is exactly guess, what people used to say about westerns and, you know, the great yeah. dominating cinematic franchises of, say, the 1950s, 60s. And then you have this complete dearth of any meaningful content, really, until it begins to revive in the 70s. And then you get a huge succession of blockbusters in the 80s, which are the product of this renaissance that comes about because all the doomers who said, well, westerns are dying, cinema will therefore die, just haven't, you know, accounted for the fact that we all adjust to these conditions. New people will come along with newer ideas and they will fill the gap and eventually the new franchise is brought and everything is much better after that point. And then again, we go over the crest of that as well and everything becomes shit again. It, we're just in a, a bad place, but it's not going to doom cinema. This is like your your druggy brother coming to you and saying, "I don't, I don't know. Just cocaine. It just does, methamphetamine. Meth. It just doesn't give me the high anymore. I'm just not really into meth anymore." And you're like, "No, that that's good news. That means maybe he can get off of it. You know, he could. He, he might stop taking it. This will help him correct his life and get back to the way things used to be, where everything was wonderful." It's not looking at that and saying, oh, no, but the, co but, but the meth dealer. Oh, no, the meth dealer. He might not. Oh, no, think about all the meth dealers out there. They, they might not be making the money because it's just not doing the trick anymore. Oh, no. This is yeah, a good and bringing thing, people Chris. into the drug <laughs> world. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's connections to be made, but I, I was going to say as well, like, the, 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 the sort of, there's sort of several solutions, right? One of them would have been that Marvel gets back to making good shit. But, like, we've had such a long time and such a consistent explanation of how they make films that we're just like, there's no fucking hope. Like, it's going to be Ooh, so unlikely the, that they crap out something good. It was the culture good. thing, right? When we were talking earlier about the culture of being able to be in an environment where you can have criticism, things of that nature. Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, these, you know, these spaces. When was the last time that this kind of a culture had existed at this corporation? Are we going to have... Like, when you see all the people... Who made, you know, the Lion King and, you know, the Halo and stuff like that. When, when you see them talking about the thought process, why they did what they did, scrapping things, restarting them, trying a again. A healthy amount of misery. Yeah, yeah, a healthy amount of misery. But are we in? I remember I mean, uh, it was a quote because the Halo 2, if you haven't seen it, the Halo 2 behind the scenes is like fascinating because um, Halo 2 was a particularly difficult development for uh, Bungie. That was really tough. And there, there are so many interesting things that they say in that. And I remember something that uh, Joe, uh, no, it was um, it was Jason Jones said. He said this, and he and it was they don't care if it took you like, I'm paraphrasing. It was something along the lines of they don't care if it took you you know half an hour or if it took you six months and a, a gallon of blood. Um, the point being that at the end of the day, what people see is the thing that you create. I believe that people are receptive to how hard people work when it's good. I don't think people care as much when it's bad. Um, how hard you worked on something. When it's something. bad, it's almost like an extra tragedy on top like, of how bad it is. Like, wow, you spent yeah. that much time and effort to yeah, make something yeah, this yeah. shit? When, when wow, you find out that, ooh. you know, Anthem took, what, seven years of development or something like that, you're yeah, just like, wow, restarts, oh my god, and, yeah. so much time and energy and effort, and then it didn't end up anywhere. But, but the point being that, obviously, the process is really important from a creative standpoint, but what people see at the end of the day... That's the thing that stands the test of time. You're not... It was a Jackie Chan thing, and it was in the, the Every Frame of Painting video. Are you going to go around to every theater and tell everybody, well, you know, we, we, we did enough of these takes. Everybody's getting Chris tired and wants to go home. You're not going to... Oh, well, that's right. But Chris like, said, yeah, you know, stop being critical. Again, Do you understand it's, it's, how hard they worked uh, on it? You know, that was what... Because Jackie Chan was saying, like, it wasn't talent. It was... Do you have the patience to stick with it to, until you get it right? Mm. Of, of doing, like, 130, 140 takes. But, but the point of... You're not going to go around to every theater and explain to them how hard you worked and that you were really tired that day. Like, nobody gives a shit, ultimately. Yeah, yeah um, I'm not buying your effort. I'm buying your product. You're buying the, the, the end result of what you did. And a big part of that is difficulty in terms of an iterative process, 
receiving criticism either from yourself or from people who are working with you or outsiders and then incorporating that into it. And there's nothing wrong with that process. But like, if you're in an attitude of, of like never being critical ever, how do you even identify where to improve and grow? Well, that's, I think that's what like Marvel's issue is. Like what I was saying with the, the culture issue, that they're just going to have to completely reinvent their entire process yes, of absolutely. making art. Yep. I have to. When it's they're going to it's, um, how to make movies, basically. Because this headline there. is an example of like one tendril, and it's a really cool announcement because we already know that several other tendrils have been fucking ripped off of like the film industry, and and that yeah, Disney, you know, they know better than we do because they're internal that that they've got to change, and that's that's kind of like the the hope side of it. You hope they get better at making film, and you hope that they stop being the dominant force in filmmaking. Mm-hmm. Could be a double win, but uh, yeah, of course, Chris is like, oh god, the theaters. It's like, I don't, I don't think that's... We should I think okay. that'll be fine. One thing that's I'll be curious be, is um, so. how Dune 2 is going to do. That'll be interesting. Mm. I wonder. Who knows? I think that's a really difficult one to predict exactly how well it'll go, you know? Mm. That's really bad for movie theaters. If subscriber numbers for streaming services are also going down, and every streaming service... Man, subscribers for streaming services going down, viewership and like, engagement with theaters going down, physical media going down, could it be that we need better shit coming out? No. Mm. I don't it's know. It's all effort, so it's all good-ish. I mean, it's just... Except doesn't it sound reasonable it that, like, the engagement with media will at least be somewhat correlative with the average quality of the media. Mm, that's somewhat. crazy talk. Somewhat. There but there's also just the, the natural fact, certainly with streaming service numbers, of the emergence of competition. Just on the list there, let's assume it's like a, an even $10 a month. And that's Apple TV, ESPN+, Plus, Paramount+, Plus, Peacock, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, and Max. No one has that much money to spend on every single one of those. The more of those that appear during this growth phase in streaming, because it is, it's kind of like the end of the growth phase in streaming, but you've had this yes. proliferation of streaming services, and people are now going to start making decisions about which one offers the most amount of content for the amount of money I am willing to spend. Mm -hmm. And that will probably mean at some point they will start leaving the other subscription services, combined with the general cost of living, which means people have less money to spend generally on this mm -hmm. kind of thing. You will see a contraction in the overall number of people. That will lead to a consolidation in a streaming service, which could theoretically see that graph tick up for two of those, and then the others will cease to exist again. But that's not necessarily bad or good either way for film. That's just the economics of streaming, and we haven't really seen yet exactly how that will pan out. And it's worse than just normal competition, because each one negatively impacts the others by taking away content that could have been on those. And so you might end up in a position where none of them are enough value for money for the customer, so they don't go for any of them. Mm -hmm. It's like if Spotify didn't have all music and just had half, no one would bother. Yeah. Chris keeps upping their prices and adding ad plans and all kinds of things yep. that make less people want to watch. And movies are being dumped on these streaming services that you never knew existed, that had no publicity, and as already discussed. I will say, as much as I agree that that is true, like, we've never been at a point where everyone was aware of all the films that come out, and a lot of them do, like, come out and you're oh, like, yeah. what the fuck? I've never even heard of this. There was one... Uh, I was on Fringy's stream, and it said we've got to check it out at some point, but we were looking at a, I think it was like a top 20 Anthony Hopkins list, and I was curious yeah. how many of them I'd seen, and at like number 17 or something, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the summary was, Anthony Hopkins is um, like a, 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 a puppeteer, and his puppet comes alive and prevents him <laughs> yes. from what? dating people. <laughs> it gets it's better, like the, the, the puppet keeps getting in the way of his dates. Uh, oh, and I was just like, I need to see this film. No, <laughs> like, I had no idea this film existed, but I need to see it. That one probably didn't get a two hundred million dollar. No, and it probably didn't get him the Oscar, unfortunately. Yeah, see, some people in chat are like, yeah, I know that one, Magic, nineteen seventy eight. It's like, what? <laughs> well, I certainly didn't know about it. Apparently, it's a great film. Yeah, I got to see it. Yeah, Gus, the exact opposite, where movies and TV shows are. Just um, but you guys said that Andal was great, and yet no one watched it. How is quality going to make things popular? We also said that you need more than one hit. You can't just have one. Yeah. That's not going to do it. I remember Andor, Andor suffered from following things. Yeah, if Andor had come out after quality. Rogue One, it would have been fine. Absolutely yes. fine. But, Even uh, yeah, Disney created a Star couple Wars. Star Wars yeah. watchers, I think that, you know. If you had three seasons of Andor at the quality of season one, um, but you add in some more Star Wars references, uh, I think that season three would be hype as fuck. Like, people would be all behind it. In fact, um... Was it like some kind of Star Wars celebration thing recently where trailers were shown? Uh, maybe. I saw someone maybe. share a quote-unquote Andor Season 2 trailer. 
and uh, people were like, oh shit, here we go, hopefully it doesn't get ruined. I saw a comment saying, I hope Filoni doesn't have any involvement in this. <laughs> like, wow, well, apparently he he's now. the big man in charge now, so... Yeah, I worry. Know. Oh god. You should Star Wars worry. is down yeah. the shitter again, probably. He's the big cheese. We'll see. And that, that's one of the ways in which streaming probably is bad for, for film, or just like for content in general, though, because... I think the the only thing that can really fix something like Star Wars as a brand is the cinema. It does need this huge mass release thing, which is incredibly popular and which can transfer a lot of that popularity to the streaming shows. And yet they're spending like pretty big film budgets on TV shows that no one watches and that are crap anyway, as though yeah. that's going to fix anything. And then they promote the guy who's in charge of it to be in charge of all of it, even though nobody watched this $100 million show. But like, why are you doing that as, as opposed to stopping, planning, and putting that money into a well-produced, well-written, good film that might theoretically rekindle people's love for a dying franchise. But streaming services say, allow you to do that. Crazy idea. Right? Yeah, I think it stems I mean, we, from uh, the, the, the desire of we need to get so much content on Disney Plus to fuel that growth, and now maybe we need to start thinking about what we're actually doing. <laughs> with our, yeah. uh, Isn't that so funny that, that we've all accepted <laughs> that we were in a part of like a decade era of just, yeah, fuck it. And it's like, maybe we shouldn't say fuck it. Mm. <laughs> well, look at what they got them. Yeah, they're losing money on every single thing. Everything. That they were yeah. Basically. Like and it's I just all shit stuff. That's the yeah. funniest result, though. Yeah. Phase four and five. What do we make money on? A movie that doesn't belong to us, and a movie where the creator's yeah, gone to our competition. It's like, fuck. yeah, that's. Uh -oh, and meanwhile, crazy. and then of course Disney broadly, their only fuck. their only film that could truly be called successful is Guardians three, which again he's now going over to Warner Brothers. But every other film is either, man, it might have just scraped past break-even, or it lost hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, is that... just make some smaller movies. I mean, again... I 100 years, huh? The... Yeah, just make some... You can do all the things on your network, on your Disney Plus or whatever, and just take those big franchises... And... Franchises? Franchises. <laughs> and, uh... Make smaller movies. Make like a courtroom drama that's like smaller scale. Don't have a fucking warm wormhole explode in yeah. the universe. Oh, watched, no. um, I don't know if we mentioned it on EFAP, but me and Free watched the verdict. That film kicks ass. Yeah, that oh, okay. movie is amazing. It's one really, of my favorite yeah. really good. dramas. Yeah. I mean, when when yeah. we do these these EFAP, EFAP TVs or whatever, like how many times did you, did we like just ball some weird ideas? It's like, oh, that could be kind of funny. Like, hey, let's follow this weird alien that doesn't even talk our language and see what he's up to and then follow around another thing or just small stuff just experiment it doesn't even need instead to cost of, a lot well yeah just, instead of spending an unreasonable amount of money on your project like secret invasion like, 250 million dollars what yeah the focus on like yeah, you, some, some oh, random the, the normal keyword... human being that has to fuck around with all the superhumans that are around it's like oh shit my car got destroyed because some superhuman fruit and enemy and mist or whatever, I don't know. You should probably move away I... from using the word experiment, because at this point, spending 250 million on what they did for Secret Invasion, Secret, yeah, I'd be like, that's a fucking experiment. Why the hell do you think that's yeah, gonna safe, be? small yeah. scale experiments. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to believe small well, looking scale. At, looking at Joker is like, that's a safe experiment. Yeah, that was a safe I should experiment. probably more like say, try something. Mm -hmm. for, yeah, it's cheap. It's good. Try something smaller scale with your stories, for example. Because like, Imagine being in a fucking screening room and watching all of Secret Invasion being told how much they spent on it. You'd be like, are you guys fucking insane? Where did all the money go? What the hell is <laughs> well, this? I want to watch, I want to see at the, whenever follow. the camera like goes to a new scene, whenever we leave one scene, go to another, you just get that ching at the bottom and it shows how much money the last scene costs. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> it, it I'm is still hoping funny. someone... I'm still hoping Never. someone will make a documentary on like where the money went with Rings of Power, like when all the dust <laughs> was settled on that. I'm dying. Oh, yeah. To yeah, it's a, yeah. <laughs> dying to know. <laughs> Tell us the truth, well, damn it. Well, <laughs> Numenor looked nice, so has, uh, hey, that, <laughs> I don't know how know. they didn't learn any because Joker and Deadpool both cost about fifty million dollars and made massive returns. Why would no lessons learned from that? Of maybe like experiment with something that's lesser known with less money and a lower scope story. And then see how it does. Make it Instead good. Of, and then, of course, yeah, budgets are going to gonna have to come down. There's no. Yeah. Choice. Oh yeah, like, they're on their way down. For first sure. thing, first thing they is like to, nah. they have to. You can't be spending. And they're going to. You can't oh. be spending two hundred million dollars and then making forty million dollars opening weekend. That's unacceptable. Imagine <laughs> yeah. this insane universe. This wouldn't happen. But imagine they actually did get the right people making Blade, and they get the right things in the right place, and they only—and I say this in a funny way. 
They only have 50 million to work with. And then there's like a, mm -hmm. a moment where they need to get this huge, awesome thing happening and they just it's just out of the budget. And they're like, no, can't do that. And then you look back and you think, you spent fucking four times our budget on that quantum bullshit and we <laughs> we're making like this amazing movie. you can't you can't give us and it's like no and it's like Ugh. and that's gonna be it that's gonna be the realization now everything will tighten up and they might get people in that they can rely upon to make something good and they'll know it's like yeah we probably should have fucking done that when we had infinite ballooning budgets because then it could have yeah. actually done something with it but that also would have been a, a way better business strategy of give somebody a budget which is like reasonable and not massive yeah. And then if they do come up with an idea that they just need more, you'd be like, okay, we'll pay for that extra for that scene, and it, it won't go too much. I think what happens when you have 270 million... Like a kid with an just, allowance. You, like, <laughs> yeah. it, like, anyone who's worked in corporate, uh, people spend the budget, even if they waste the budget, because you've got the budget. Right. And I think that's what happens with 270 yeah, yeah, million. Yeah. Like, how can we spend this? And, and, so if, only, do, and if they cap with 200, reshoots. and they cap them at 180, yeah. so that then... Yeah, but even That's then, you good should... point, Kat. Reshoots as well are an expense. Yes, if you would you just make get. up your mind ahead of time and iron yeah. out the script and get it where you want it before yeah. you even start production, then you wouldn't have to reshoot every project you make. And it also goes go, goes ahead for everyone involved going like above and beyond and doing shit. Like I know Iron Man one exa for example, they're like, oh, you you want like an Iron Man suit? We can make it with like actual person in there, and they're like, nah, you can't make that. And they just did it and so basically surprised them when they finally showed up with the stuntman inside, and they were like, oh shit, that's really cool and it looks amazing. So a, I guess the people who made this like cared and gave they a cared shit. and had passion. What consistent Insane. commentary from a lot of the film, well, creative industries is just tight to budgets and budgets that can't possibly be enough yeah. to make the thing you want end up breeding like really interesting uh, shortcuts. That can revolutionize, uh, tech, revolutionize technology sometimes. Just True. deleted from the streaming services and no longer exist. And some stores are choosing not to sell physical media anymore. What exactly is happening to this art form that we all know and love so much? Is it truly just becoming a bunch of numbers somewhere? I mean, technically, it was well, always, sure. uh, always the numbers yeah. making money. Do you see what it, I mean? You can't like, talk about it's. I fucking hate this so much because he keeps talking about. Oh, what's the cause? Like it, the movies are bad. You can't talk about this without talking about the writing of the movie and how shit they are, and the people don't care anymore to go and watch the movies. Well, I got a big sense there that he's like, you even brought back the point about physical media again. And it's just, he's like, yeah. yeah. So wh where are we going? What's the point? And then he says like, is is our fate this? You know, Chris, make a point. Like, can you focus? Like, I really don't know how he's trying to draw this together. What is he trying to say? Give me something. I'm very passionate about this, and normally I would laugh right now. You don't come across that he's, way, no you don't come. No. You don't come across as passionate <laughs> about anything. Now and say oh, like he'd normally love. Self-deprecating, but I don't think that I should. I really do think this is a big problem. And the only... What is? What all is? All of those yeah. things? <laughs> or, like, what those things mean? Or where it's going? Or what way that I can foresee it being fixed is if we do for a lot of movies what we did for Barbie and Oppenheimer. And obviously that was not something you can't, you can't that's, that's, that's natural. It doesn't happen yeah, because everyone told each happened. other to do it. Because the whole thing with Barbenheimer was, oh, we have also, this crazy fun pink fuck. movie that's funny and this Oppenheimer serious kind of things. Like, wouldn't it be hilarious if we just combine them into a thing? We and do. And this big movement. Already do what he's talking about. It's called marketing. Yes. <laughs> There's a huge budget for it. The fact that he's like, you know what made Barbenheimer work was everyone saying Barbenheimer. Go watch Barbenheimer. It's like, what do you think marketing budgets are for? They find out what makes people watch films outside of just the films existing, and then they yeah. make those things happen. The, the Marvel's sometimes... marketing budget included, look at cats, cats. You like cats? Cats are in the film. You like cats? Go watch them because mm -hmm. of cats, cats. Everyone talk about having, cats. Having already tried that innovative approach in the final trailer when like the first half of the trailer featured characters not appearing in the film. That was pretty good. I like that for the Marvels. <laughs> I remember um, people bringing up that Paw Patrol and Saw coming out at the same time and that we should start a thing called Saw Patrol. It didn't go anywhere, no one cared. And it's just like, Chris, is that what you want? Like, we just start trying to make up dumb things and just well, hope I that mean, they artificially yeah. catch on? Put the onus of marketing on the consumer instead of the companies that are going to profit from the output of that marketing. It's... You know what I mean? Like, making it like a moral imperative that people have to just go out and gamble their money to watch any number of movies to ensure that these massive multi-billion dollar corporations survive. 
Well, yeah, you know, the big question is, should we have, they fucking die? Should we have it, done this for the Marvels, Chris? Me. Should we have been like, yeah, the Marvels, Heimer, yeah. Should yeah. Have been more like imperative to save cinemas <laughs> that everybody has to go and see the Marvels and spend their money and buy popcorn and buy drinks because that's where you know they make a lot more money than on uh, the films themselves. It's it's just that's <laughs> never going to work. You can't pitch that to the world that it is a moral imperative to like go out of your way to make sure that you support these massive multi billion dollar corporations. The much easier, straightforward, simple way that generally, you know, th this world works is that when you make something that people like, they'll buy it. So then, and then it's like, well, how do we fix that problem? Well, just make more good movies and people will go and watch them. Yeah, because he's There's obviously nothing... going to concede there are certain movies you shouldn't do this for. And you'd be like, which ones are those, Chris? And he'd be like, how do you well, out which you know. Ones they are? Non-cinema like, ones. Mm. <laughs> like, mm, well, there non is no substitute for good word of mouth, and the only way to get good of word of mouth is to make good movies that people like and tell their friends about. You yeah. can't, exactly. you can't fake it. You can't buy yeah. it. That's yeah, like, what, like, that's how you get like, Top Gun Maverick, and that's how you get Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. And yep. Also, Barbie. I'd say Barbie is another probably quite a good example because the Barbenheimer thing was an incredibly great marketing meme that happened. Yes. But Barbie wouldn't have Hell got yeah. to a billion, I don't think, if it hadn't also given its target audience pretty much what they wanted from it to keep Apparently, them going. Apparently, that's what they wanted. Sure, I'll give you that. Well, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't pretend to understand Barbie's target yeah, yeah. audience, but I understand <laughs> they exist. So what's that fucking wish polian? <laughs> Wish Napoleon, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Napoleonish. <laughs> it's like I don't know. Oh my God. That's not to just reward every movie that comes out. Oh, of okay. So which going, ones? But I do think that a retooling of our approach to seeing movies yeah. needs to happen. What do you mean? Tell, tell me what you mean. Tell me. We need to retool. Why you pin this on me? Yeah, it's not my fucking fault. Not my fault. It's not my fucking fault. Don't you blame this on me, mister. When he's saying, well, we don't need to support every movie, but, like, wouldn't that invariably happen if you encourage an approach of just, like, going to more movies, even ones that you kind of anticipate that you're not going to like? To get confirmed that you don't like it I as just well. wanted to like, be that's... honest. He doesn't want us to, to support shit movies. Well, yeah. Well, the thing is, how do you... How does the market come to understand what kind of movies people want to see if just movies in general... You know, people are just going to movies in general and then, and then spending their money on it. Wouldn't it just lead to, like, a problem where nobody understands what anybody wants? And people are just engaging in an activity that is yielding not consistently great results for them as a viewer? Yeah, but when he's well, when he says retooling, does he mean like embrace his attitude of just imagine everything is good and don't dislike what? anything? Fuck that. Maybe, maybe <laughs> the thing he says that people should go more and take more chances. But again, it's expense. It costs money. Yeah, why should Not they yet. have to do that? On, on behalf of these studios, Instead, that have what, delivered the better system is the one that we actually have, where people look to a lot of people like critics to recommendations. Someone like a drinker, for example. And then they go, should I see the new Marvel movie? And Drinker says, fuck no. And you go, what about the next one? <laughs> fuck no. Next one, fuck no. You're like, damn. What should I see? And he goes, go see Extraction 2. And it's like, where is that? And it's like, Netflix. You're like, oh. oh well, I, I guess I'm going to watch that on Netflix. That. And you'd be like, oh, that's so horrible. The theaters have suffered. It's like, why are you making fucking good movies? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how it just, it just always comes back to just make fucking good movies. <laughs> that is the just ultimate solution. It's the boring and fucking they want to solution. Tell their friends about good movies. Yeah. I know that not everybody can always go to a movie. I know that not everybody can. Buy Nobody wants to go to a movie and watch a shit movie in theaters. Yeah. By the way, that's yeah, the other like, aspect. I, if you watch a shit movie on Netflix, you can just be like, well, oh, fuck this, I'm out. Also, by the yeah. way, how is, how is it a fucking chore to keep up with the Marvels and everything, but I should go watch every fucking random movie out there? Isn't that also a chore that's also very that expensive? Would be, that would absolutely be a chore. You have worse. to see everything and hope that it's well, good. Yeah. It's, as, as was pointed out, I drag well, myself like, there to watch movies I don't want to watch. Money. You know, that time, that's gone forever. Yeah. You know, that time is, it's evaporated and you could have spent it doing something else. You could have spent it playing video games. You could have spent it... Uh, going out to dinner or something. You could have spent it, uh, saved it up for going on a holiday. These are all these it's, trades that people need to make. And it's a lot more it, difficult to go to a theater, theater and do that because you got the travel time, the preparation, yeah. and, you know, getting ready and presentable, and you, hopefully. You then the more you, We've talked like, about this on that other stream. A lot yeah. of people, they carve out a small amount of time for film and they re rely on recommendations. And unfortunately, yep. there's not a lot of recommendations for a lot of films coming out that are high budget right now. Mm-hmm. Um... This is Chris Duckman's protein and urine image, I think.
<laughs> protein oh, and urine. Protein and urine. The chat. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's the EFAP protein. Amen. I've seen yes. so many memes about protein and urine. It's hilarious. <laughs> that and XYZ is my only joy in life. That's so the, two dude, great uh, when the stream that's when the boogie stream ended, I uh I, like, like it went unlisted for just like half an hour. Someone had already done the meme of like watching EFAP is the only joy in my life. And someone put a comment underneath it being like that's Sad man. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Someone this who watched that, the no one, yeah, they, they didn't no know the happens. meme, so they just saw Not that. Sad. We're like, oh jeez, yeah. <laughs> you should find some more joys in your life, I guess. <laughs> buy a Blu-ray for everything that comes out. I'm well aware. I don't even buy as many Blu-rays as I used to, but I don't. Have why? Money. Why not? Tell us why, why, why Chris. Do, why? Why is it not your? It, so you're part of the problem. Well, I, I'm already edging toward the fact that it's like, is it because there's less good things for you to buy every day that are coming up? Maybe you don't want to get the Blu-ray for all of the uh -oh. MCU where you may have before. Mm. Matt, it is, it is just worth thinking about that, you know, for the amount that it would cost you to, like, go watch the Marvels, you could get, like, you know, there's a Steam sale going on right now. And it's like, you can buy mm -hmm. something on Steam that's going to give you more than one and a half hours of entertainment, potentially. And like, there's so many get different game things. Pass. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. yeah, game, game Pass. Yeah, Game Pass, that's as much right. as a movie, and that's like however many games that you want, pretty much. It's more than you they're can play. <laughs> they're not just competing against movies. Movies are competing against games, TV shows, yeah. books. They're competing, they're, and of course, they're competing against groceries. They're, they're competing could, against electricity. You could argue yeah. theaters compete as a a hobby or a pastime, and the the further in time we go on, the more there are things to do in the world. And so, you know, we were talking about it earlier, but what is the what is the number it settles at? What is the correct number it sells at? Where is it artificially going down or up? And it's like, well, isn't it just, don't we just leave it be what it is? What is? Uh, you know, I mean, I guess it depends on whether or not you think that there should be, like, massive market intervention or something. Into keeping, that's kind like, of the problem, isn't it? If there were... That would all be we artificial. We state-owned theaters. Oh, well, it's just, <laughs> would you, ju how could you justify like, that spending people money on other things? You know? And I just, I don't know, I feel, um, I feel very hollow about, like, you know, we need to save them because not enough people are invested in doing the thing. And it's like, but if they're not invested in doing it, mm -hmm. you know, it's... Dot, dot, dot. I mean, you could like, use the same argument against, like, oh, the horse and cart. Like, we need to force people onto a horse and cart because think of all those stable owners that are going out of business well, the, because people don't want to use a horse and cart anymore. It becomes niche. Niche of niche of niche, you know? Like, it's like, it still exists. If you want to get a horse and cart and drive it around, there's probably some places on Earth you could still do that. And it's not like theatres are going to become so sparse that there's one per country or something ridiculous, but um, it may just... Like, you know, it's a sad thing to note that it reduced in size for people who love going to theatres, but at the same time, it's like, maybe they were artificially higher than they should have been, or maybe they were higher because we were having a higher film. And they'll go back up when we have another higher film. And it's I've just got this image in my mind of like North Korea, where once a week the entire population of my town is being frog marched into the local cinema to support the film. <laughs> this is <laughs> I, mean, I worry about been you've been this month. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't it feel that way though? Like his solutions are like, you know, we need to have some more Barbenheimers. But I'm not saying support films that are shit, not supporting all films, not buying Blu-rays for all films. It's like, what are you saying? What and do you what want us to doing? do? Who knows? Space for it anymore. Now that I have twin boys. And I also space. know that you. you can't always make it to a movie. As I said, I have twin boys. So what it's, do you want, I Chris? Tell me, please. Yeah. What Wait, do you want, Chris? I, are you I saying to... this? Other... You're good. I was just going to say, I have to jump off. So please let me know if cinema is kill or not, so I know whether <laughs> I need therapy. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Thanks All for right, having totally me. Totally pip, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. Boy. I mean, at the moment, like it the, just seems like he's going through a midlife crisis, and he's looked around his room and just thought, I don't want any of this shit anymore. Like, it's just that he's just made a video about it. Martin Scorsese said cinema is kill, and he's having a panic. That's why he made this video. Movie. As I said, I have twin boys. If I go to a theater, it's usually like the 10.30 p.m. showing after they go to bed. That's when I can find time for that. Right now, as I film this, it's like 11 o'clock. Does it at all feel like yeah. he made a statement, and then he's made about seven concessions after it as to why the statement probably isn't very fair? 
Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, so what's the new statement, Chris? And then, of Chris? course, with all of this stuff of just life obligations, and on top, that they're just not that interested in movies. Yeah. Like, they're not that interested. They're not that passionate about movies. They're more interested in other yeah. stuff. We said it. Someone probably said it earlier already. Not everybody watch, watches a lot of movies. They mm -hmm. go, like, to some movies. Or just they watch think... something on the television or watch some YouTube or I don't know what, what they do. Browse Facebook or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I think this, this can happen with us in this sort of sector of YouTube as well. But we can get caught up in the idea that like most people have our level or a little bit lower of investment in film, which is like, that's just not true. Not even close. Like, well, I, yeah. I, I mean, I have movies. some friends. I'm, I'm that... more of a TV guy. Always have been. Well, even even with TV, yeah. even with games, even with you know, like there are people out there who like all of those forms of media, but spend a lot of their time maybe with sport, for example. That might be what yeah. They have a lot of interests, or their investment is you know or passing, casual, market, or it's chill. A lot of video games. Yeah. 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 That's funny, but there's also a, a section in my friend circle. They go to go to all the big movies like almost every month, like multiple times a month, more than I do, and it's like oh. And then when they all enjoy them, but when we talk about them, as you know, there's like, oh, that was good. And it's like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it's like the thing where, where you, the, the one guy in the group is like, no, they were all trash. I think last time they were around, they talked about some movies and it's like, oh, that was trash. Oh, what about this? Oh, it's also trash. Oh, but Mandalorian. It's like, no. <laughs> and someone even just suggested nature. Some people go outside. Like, it's this whole <laughs> yeah. Uh, area. Yeah, 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 that's true. Weird. Yeah. You could spend, you could spend days outside. I've heard that some people have done that, yeah. Some some people have. Some people really enjoy it. Yeah. Some some of us really miss it. Yeah. Clock at night because my kids went to bed and I now have time to do it. So I don't want to sit here and look like I'm someone who's trying to encourage people to change their lives around to support film. But I do think that we need to change the way we view it. Because at the no, end of the don't. day, I don't, we need to this change the like way the... we view it. No, when... So just because something is... is... I... Something, I, I, it's almost like, how do you want to tackle this attitude? It's, it's like completely backwards. Like we have a responsibility to an industry when it's the other way around. Yeah, if they, they need to be make making money. good films. That's what solves everything. I, yeah. You're trying to sell me something. You're trying to earn my money and my attention and my respect. It's not just given to them, you know? It's yeah. not just something that they're owed. Like, oh, you make movies. And, and by the way, this is like, um, this is the idea of an industry. It's not like a specific person, a specific company, a specific anything. It's just filmmakers, those who make films and contribute to the making of films. You need to go and give them money because if you don't, then they won't exist or whatever. And I'm like, well, I mean, if they suck, then maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we need to shake up. Maybe Disney or whoever these companies are, maybe a big old needs to happen so that we can, you know, uh, the phoenix can rise from the ashes. Yeah, I, we've got plenty of stuff to watch in the meantime. If it takes, if there was just like a collapse of the whole industry and movies weren't made for three years, most of us have a lot of catching up to do. Oh we'll be yeah, fine, as I have enough catching up to do for this year already. <laughs> I think there is one thing that all of us can agree on. Oh. Not everyone's going to agree with Martin Scorsese in his comments. Not That's everyone's going to agree that the MCU movies and shows are going downhill. A lot of people like what they're seeing. And not everyone... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Even he was like, a lot of people like what they're seeing. <laughs> yeah, he's like, all right, be careful now. It just reminds me of, um, like, I, I remember it was in Kitchen Nightmares where it's just like, you know, oh, a lot of people like our food. Then Gordon Ramsay's just like, well, where are they then? <laughs> where are they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he doesn't remember that. <laughs> where are they then? <laughs> <laughs> it's Everyone so fitting. Yeah. Well, well, it's, it's just, yeah, like the point that he would make is that he knows that he's doing something right because his reservation book is full. Yeah. Conversely, as much as you can say, well, customers tell me they really like it. It's like, yeah, cool story, bro. Where are they? Like, if they're not here, that's way more telling. Where are they? A lot of Who people like I? what they're seeing. And not everyone cares about going to a movie theater. There's really annoying people sometimes with cell phones and people are... Oh my god, you've made oh like my... 15 concessions now of just like <laughs> the, these reasons why this the world is the way that it is. <laughs> However... Like... It's loud and it's not always the best experience. And some people can't go to a movie theater. Maybe they physically cannot get out of their house to go to a movie theater. Yeah, boogie. Has... well, boogie can do it, they can do it.
Yeah. <laughs> it's a different oh, I thought he was going to point to that if you live in like a rural area, you might actually have to drive like 30, 40 kilometers to get to a movie theater. Maybe. Mm -hmm. well, but I mean, I that is the case. Like in rural areas, it would be like you have to go to a regional city to go to a movie theater. Yeah. If you're just in like your little town, maybe it has a theater, maybe, but a lot of them don't. <laughs> He's like, you fat people are killing theaters by being. <laughs> 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 The go to the gym to support theater. <laughs> I'll agree on is that as film lovers, as people who appreciate movies, who want to either make them or just love watching them, we would like to watch good ones. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. He did it. Oh, he did He's happens. done it. But oh my god. I feel like the, he did it. <laughs> like I don't know what all of that was for. If it was just to say that. But right? now you get the question yeah. of as opposed to what? Because he said that he can't be negative anymore. Well, so, yeah, you, you'll never. He's not allowed to say. That's the thing. But he'll, he, I guess this, this feels like a breakthrough moment, but I'm not sure what he's going to say next. Once. Hmm. Right? We want to see good movies. Yes. We want to be transported to another world. We want to feel like we've just experienced something that changes us in some way or that hit us in the emotions, made us feel something, hit us in or the that it was just a great time. We want to be scared, we want to laugh, we want to cry, all that stuff. We uh -huh. want to watch those are emotions. And we want to have variety. We want to be able to <laughs> Why is Spider-Man? Like, I don't know. I, I really I, don't, I don't think know. this is a good image for variety. It's just like it's, a still picture. It's a right. still motherfucker is a superhero. Like we is not the whole <laughs> problem we have right now. Like he's not he's, even he's just, doing anything emotional. He's just a bit of a poop. There, is that like a promote? Did you just Google Spider Man and that was some one that <laughs> you saw? You know, like, yeah. Might I'll genuinely be like the worst possible Spider image he could have chosen because not only is it like superhero as fuck, but Spider Man is everywhere. There's loads of Spider Mans. Like, we're getting loads of popular. Like, he's like variety. Spider Man's like the only superhero thing that can succeed right now. Yeah. <laughs> to watch good movies. And we want to have variety. We want to be able to watch a superhero movie, but also watch a courtroom drama. Oh, okay. For, that's oh my god. Sarah. Fracture. You referenced How Fracture. People... That's neat. I like Fracture. That's right. Yeah. That's, I like that movie. Or a character study about someone who's dealing with some psychological issue. And that's how it used to be. You used to get all of that. I do think that, in general, streaming is to blame. And this year with the strikes... In general, streaming is to blame. No, it's the... <laughs> well, no. This well, one's... Wait a minute. Well, maybe it's like the variety the of the films being made. Uh, well, it depends what we're talking about. I mean, can it really be said that there isn't, like, a variety of films that have been made on, like, Netflix, for instance? You know, as a streaming service? That there's a lack of variety in terms of the kinds of films that they're making? They produce psychological thrillers. Yeah, we we, films, we were talking like about family comedies. We went through an era of just everything being okayed and then flushed onto these sites. And he's saying like that was part of the problem he was highlighting. He's talking it's like, about yeah, the problem. but a lot of those yeah, films will I, be uh, these kinds of options. You know, like the uh, well, there was I mean, a killer. It's a Netflix movie, and that's like a psychological thriller. Yeah, there was a yeah. there was a Netflix horror movie that I caught by chance. I think I described it to you for you when I checked it out, but it, I think it's called The Deep or something, and it's two divers go down to a house to try and get, um, you know, money, basically, just, just to loot it, because it's, it's deep underwater. And then, like, they the basement's locked, and so they're there with their tanks and stuff. They have, I think, enough for, like, a day. And um, there's just weird things happening, like, you know, shadows, things moving and stuff. And they get down to the basement, they find, like, an, a satanic sort of, like, sacrifice that was done down there. And then, you know, the windows gradually start developing bars, and the doors start locking and stuff. And it's just like, that's Ooh, a that's neat. fucking... Hmm. Where, did, where was the last time we watched a movie like that? It's like, yeah, it's just, that's just on Netflix. That's there. Someone paid to have that made. So, you know. That, that is the argument for streaming, is that streaming has a permanent collection, or a permanently shifting collection with way more variety than you can get from any other single investment in content. So that's kind of the point. So if the problem is simultaneously that we need to change how we view films, but also we need to be given more variety of films, and we're not because streaming. Is that the well, argument maybe, we've had so far? Maybe his argument is that the films that formerly would be in theaters now only exist on streaming. But he didn't say that, so I feel like I'm just inventing that argument for him. Yeah, but those films wouldn't exist because it's the streamers that pay for those movies to be made in the first place. Yeah, this, I, I, this is why it's confusing. Like, there needs to be more clarity on the point here. I think what he said is something that people intuitively agree with. Like, films used to be better, more variety, but it's not just... It's more successful forms of variety, which, to be fair, we've got... Like I said, Oppen, Barbieheimer is like a, you know... Barbieheimer. 
the, I think it's just a variety between those two. Movies. Sure. There's some well, big variety there. Just streaming. Well, and by the way, I just wanted to clarify. Some people were like, "Oh, what's that movie called? I don't want to check it out." I, like, uh, it, I was using it as an example. I didn't think it was good. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, um, you got no. me excited there. Actually. No, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I was not happy with the writing in that. But the idea, you know, <laughs> the genre, the variety of the concept. Fucking debated us. Well, I mean, of course, yeah. you know, like, has there ever really been the kind of shows that Flanagan makes before he was making those shows on Netflix? You know, yeah, one like could argue Netflix is the reason horror shows. that, yeah, that we got many things that, and, and Chris uh, adores Flanagan's work, so. Yeah, I, like, in fact, yeah, the more that I'm thinking about it, the more I'm like, wait a minute, hasn't like, I mean, big budget, like, television as a thing has been, in large part, a consequence of streaming, other than HBO. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sneezing. Okay. Yeah, and the moment you, you. You, you take, like, television off streaming, like, Netflix has loads of Korean shows, which are awesome, which mm -hmm. you, we never would have got over here without streaming. No, that's so... right. And, and there, was, there was never a market on, like, NBC for the One Piece, ad you know, live-action yeah. anime adaptation that's on Netflix. That, that would never have been created on, like, Fox or ABC or NBC or CBS. Like that's you know what I mean. So so if anything, you could say streaming has has essentially changed, in some sense, the kind of stuff that's being made and the kind of stuff that is viable. Um, in part because it's a worldwide audience compared to local, you know, audience, and then via syndication and whatnot. Um, I I am utterly confused at his point. I got to tell you. There's too many you. yeah. <laughs> there's too many data points here that the like run in all different directions. Uh, this is what I mean. I wish he focused his point of view, but this feels more rambly. Uh, I do mm. think that in general, streaming is to blame. And this year with the strikes, this is the first time actors and writers have ever said, hey, we gave you guys a decade of this weird shit where you didn't report your numbers and nobody knows how many people watched our movies and shows and we're done with that shit. You guys have- That's, to that's a whole other thing. Like, oh, this is what I mean, like, you just, where are we going now? Cause yeah, that that's a whole other set of issues that have a whole other different level of repercussions. There's obviously histories for strikes. There's this results of the strikes now that are going to be seen going forward mm -hmm. for the next few years, of course. Like, that's a whole other set of things, Chris. You have to pay us. Well, it is interesting, be... though, that uh, if the creators don't have the numbers of who's watching their shows, how will they know if what they made was good or bad? How can they improve? The age old question How do you improve when you don't want to be mean? more transparent because if you look back to like the real popularity of streaming post 2010 you start to see a push towards certain kinds of movies rom-coms are almost exclusively on streaming gigantic okay so movies. he is now going to that point. The, only the, 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 like in theaters certain... smaller films are thriving at the art house this is why a24 is so respected they really are taking chances on strange um, mid but now films. but now a24 is now transitioning into franchising right yeah he Isn't mentioned that, that in a second oh okay yeah projects that do reach an audience and i think and i hope that that could potentially be the next big thing because i think a lot of us are craving hmm. originality weird shit i don't, every... know. don't i don't know. believe you i don't, I don't think you're don't that's right i'm not sure about that what are the or do the audience crave weird shit or do they just I, crave I good know. shit that's great for good shit i think Again, good with a bit like... of weird I, I feel like it's worth bringing up because it's often forgotten about, but, like, NCIS is still one of the most popular shows on television, and it's, like, a pretty straightforward procedural. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's something we never... Because it seems like in a lot of these, like, online discussions about media, we don't talk about, like, network television, which is still relevant. And I don't know, man. Like, I mean, what... It's, it's kind of been pointed out before, right? What was the formula for television for a long time? Which is, you know, there is conflict, but the conflict gets resolved in that episode overarching narrative arcs are pretty thin people kind of know what they're getting when they go into an episode of a yeah. lot of these shows and that still exists there is still a place for that and that's still fairly popular it's just that we don't think about it a lot in terms of these online discussions probably because the average age of people who are watching ncis is probably pretty old but i mean they're still yeah. participants in the marketplace they're still participating in that's another element is reliability um to exactly. know that you're going to be getting a baseline amount of, you know, quality every time. That's that's not easy to, well, kind of, uh, you know, guarantee. It's Futurama, right? The single female lawyer thing. Yeah. The Fry saying people don't, people don't want to be surprised. People want to feel safe going into it. And 
you know, it varies, right? People obviously have different expectations and different desires, and some people have, like, no interest in that kind of format of storytelling. But, like, I don't, I don't know about making this broad statement that people are interested in things that are highly original and strange, because if that was the case, why doesn't it reflect, really, in, like, the kinds of things that are really, really, really successful fairly consistently throughout all of, you know, the last, like, 30 or 40 years? I feel like the are longest running and most successful... Sorry, Rex, after you. People, I, I think, like, the weird movies are the ones that people like every once in a while as a little thing on the side or as something they like to check out intermittently, but it's not, like, their typical diet. It's their, you know, it's, it's something that's, it's nice to have it around, but it's not enough to be the primary thing. Yeah, so you look at the, the longest-running and most successful things, certainly on, like, British terrestrial television, it's not brand-new pushing-boundaries-type television, it's soap operas. The East Enders has been going for about 60 years. Coronation Reliable. Street's been going for around the same time. What people like is is the familiar, but with the occasional refresh. But they don't generally flock to, like, revolution for its own sake. Because you could argue for the, from the weird point of view, you could say the multiverse arc in, in Marvel is is trying to do something which is weird and, I guess, original. It's just that it's shit, because being weird yeah. and original is actually not fathomable to most of the audience, because they haven't actually taken the time to make the thing work. Whereas if they'd refreshed the MCU rather than said, we're going to blow it up with an incomprehensible multiverse, I don't think we'd be currently sitting here lamenting its decline. Uh, MOM and Loki season one and two and a couple of other things like absolutely would qualify as weird shit, but they're all terrible. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could, you could have made it weird oh, shit with, like cool, with, with good. Alan Wake 2 is weird. Oh, uh, stop! You know stop what's not weird? RoboCop, Rogue City. It's not a weird game. If you've watched RoboCop, it's well, just a direct adaptation, pretty you know, much. You know what's not weird? Fucking FIFA. Like that's yeah, FIFA's cool. not weird. It's incredibly. And that makes Call money Genius every year. Cool as well. Fucking all the mobas um, and like, you know, running for as long as uh, uh, even like Dead by Daylight, maybe, right? Like these. Maybe they'd make the argument that like League of Legends is a little bit, uh, but even but even that'd be like, I mean, it's not. It's that, been going for like, way too long to be considered weird yeah. now. Mm. Well, I, I guess the point being that, again, it's worth... I don't know that there's any reason to believe that the the sort of preference for originality versus familiarity is remarkably, drastically different across mediums. Maybe it is a little bit, because, like, video games have the benefit of being highly iterative. There's way more of a, a, a... There's way more of a reason to make a sequel to a video game than a movie, for instance. Because, like, it, it could just be, I want to expand the mechanics rather than we need a context to continue like a story that ended. You know, like extraction. It's like mm -hmm. everyone's seen that before, quote unquote. But yeah, boy, was it a good one of those. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? Like it's a complicated game of seeing things that are familiar that have familiar storytelling vocabulary, but have tweaks and twists and interesting turns and things that are unexpected and surprising. It's uh, it's complicated. I don't know that there's basically the point I'm making is I don't know that it's I can agree with like a wholesale statement that people want originality it's a little bit more complicated than that i would say yeah everybody is i've been to a ton of screenings in cleveland packed with audiences for like weird movies and i've heard the way people talk about but that's already they... a selection bias that's yeah not... that's a that's a great anecdote but like when we look at the actual box office it's just a, but they don't selection go to bias. Them. the people yeah. who went to see that are people who want to go see that you know what i mean like it's that's why would why would we count sure, that yeah. it's like yeah but those people want to see the weird shit it's like okay yeah I mean, Neil Breen movies can fill cinemas, but... <laughs> yeah, the, the way the <laughs> fucking world is going after... Yeah, it's, it's complicated for general audiences. Stop them when they leave. But it's what these movies do with those expectations. When Didn't uh, Bo is Afraid flop miserably? Uh, I think it did, and I also heard that it wasn't very good either. Yeah, I'm, uh, I haven't seen anything to do with that. I've only seen, like, that it just... It was, it was a, that was a big old risk, that one. Mm -hmm. When I saw Bo is Afraid, for instance, I thought that oh, movie was nice. so weird, and I respected the hell out of it. It was so well made. Boring. Boring. <laughs> tell me Chris, how you. Come on. Tell me, give me a thought. Try to be a human for five. It was. Fucking it seconds. was. <laughs> it was just so. You know, it was such a movie. You know. <laughs> it's Boy, like... it definitely was a film that it sure do. Yep. I. Mm -hmm. you like bet. he had he had notes for this video, and he I still did. don't know what the point of this video is. <laughs> like. Well, it's it's in the title, the future of film. Why I'm worried. That's there you go. <laughs> I, I feel like his therapist. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Did I get it? Not really. Did I need to understand? Oh, it? why didn't you watch it five times like Blade Runner to get it? Yeah. 
Come on, buddy. So that you could understand it. Yeah, so that you would have the right opinion on it. Yeah, you should have checked on IMDb, see what uh, everyone's uh, saying. Oh, spaghetti go. All of it? No. Did that scare me? No, it fucking Did enthralled that me. That scare what, me. What, who's asking these questions? <laughs> Did, Did you get scare scared? You, Chris? You didn't understand? Oh uh, yeah, I remember when I watched a movie once, got out of the cinema and was just terrified. I didn't understand, and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. <laughs> oh shit. And yet, tons of people skipped out on that movie because they were like, I don't want to do the work of figuring that out. Um, what? What? Holy moly. How do you, I, how do you know that? Well, what, maybe because the movie was originate. I don't know that I take that much issue with someone saying, I don't want to watch a wacky artsy film. I want to watch the guy shoot a bunch of bad guys and save someone. Waller, I'll save you time. It's an allegory for depression. Oh. There you go. Now you don't have to watch the movie. Oh, cool. I don't blame that, anybody. That point doesn't hold for like Inception, for example, which did incredibly well despite, you know, being not the easiest thing in the world to untangle. And yet that didn't really seem to put off a large number of people. Not that everybody did put in the effort we, to work it out, but. Every once in a while, when we want to watch a movie, we will be like in a state of not looking for something heavy. I prefer to watch something that's a little more straightforward, you know, and that's totally normal and fine. The idea that someone said, I don't want to see Bo is afraid because as far as I know, it's a wacky, abstract movie about things that don't really line up or make sense with a lot of interpretation, and it's, like, really long. I'm really not looking for that, and I really do. So I, I could picture someone saying that, and that's totally fine. The idea that he's, like, disdainful of a... I feel <laughs> like he forgets his claimed principles regularly. It was weird because when we watched the movie a few nights ago, it was between something and Corpse Bride. And I was like, I just, I just want to see Corpse Bride. I don't want to see this other one because I just kind of want to watch it just kind of chill right now. Yeah. And just watch a, like a little, you know, fun claymation animated movie. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I want to, yeah, I just want to enjoy myself. I don't want to chill. Like not every, <laughs> I just don't want to watch Saving Private Ryan right now. I just... Yeah, or oh, it's something else. If you were like, oh, I'm, I'm a little bit sleepy. It's like we could either watch this hour and a half film or fucking Lord of the Rings. You're like, I don't, I don't know, but like, <laughs> it's about, <laughs> yeah, let's go with the hour and a half one. It's like, wow, is you don't like Lord of the Rings now? There's no, all it's kinds of reasons. I have to stay up and watch the whole thing now. <laughs> I can't do that. I got things to <laughs> I'm do. I'm gonna watch morning. one of them. Are you crazy? Yeah, that'd be rude. Not on that movie because they were like, I don't want to do the work of figuring that out, and that really bothers me. Because a lot of us do this, what, what? I'm doing right now, we okay. sit in front of our cameras. Why does it bother video. you if somebody else doesn't want to watch a movie? That's like, like, what, I can't believe I'm saying this. At all. I feel like I'm supposed to be more picky than he is, but if someone says to me, like, I don't want to watch The Prestige more, like, that's going to be a super complicated film. I've heard a friend that's, like, loads of subtags re-watching it. There's three different timelines. Like, I'm just not... I don't want to watch a movie like that. I'd be like, all right, fine. You all can't right. blame them. Sometimes it's just like, yeah. Sometimes I just want to listen to you know, a nice, chill. Sometimes it. This happens with games all the time. Maybe not also, all the time. Wait. Do I want to sit down and play a super <laughs> intense, in-depth thing? I just want to have a chill experience. Someone just pointed it out. Yeah. He didn't do it for the Marvels. He did. He said yeah. he didn't know what the Marvels was about, and he was just like, oh Damn. fuck it. Man, that really bothers me actually. No, I guess. I guess the up he has on the other guys that he still went and saw the Marvels. Dang. Even though he didn't get it. It what must have to be like his friend though, because his friend comes around and says, so I'm feeling really kind of down and, and depressed and miserable and I just want to be cheered up. And he says, well, I'm going to judge you if you don't <laughs> want to watch Schindler's List with me right now. Oh God. So let's watch Schindler's List and you will enjoy it. Otherwise, you're not my friend anymore. Is it not no, just Maybe not in the mood. Well, because by the way, I haven't seen Bo is Afraid and I don't know that I want to with how it's been I described. I don't care. Um, nobody I know has recommended it. And from what I know, it's a long, laborious, sort of difficult to decipher film. And I'm just like, okay, mm. I could spend that, that time like watching kind of something else. Yeah. yeah, I just doesn't that doesn't sound like the kind of movie that I am interested in or really want to watch. You know, maybe every once in a while, if I, I hear just like, like that kind of movie, <laughs> if everyone says it's really good and you need to see it, that's one thing. But I'm just not. I don't like taking chances with a twenty four. I will say. <laughs> Um, this is the most interesting he's ever been to me. The fact that he's like, someone said they didn't want to watch Bo is Afraid, and I fucking hate that shit. It's just like, oh shit, oh, okay. More of this, more of your character. Please. An emotion, a bit of humanity yeah. shining through. Now we sit in front of our cameras, we make a YouTube video, or we write articles, or we blog, or we write for a paper, whatever. Why are you showing Marvel's clips? Are now? you showing. Yeah, I, I don't know. Say, why? Chris. Why you... I feel like it, that's just a current movie. Chris. And Chris. Like, yeah, the footage, took the footage from it. I don't know. It's weird. It's... 
it's just the it's what you do it's the it's like the ai generated well, like to wake people up if they're fully asleep the they're yeah. like oh marvels woo. and we ask hollywood to not do what the mcu is currently doing we say please stop doing that please like okay do what? make more original stuff. making shit that. Making shit. <laughs> I don't know what, what did he phrase it as. Sorry, I missed that. Did he say be like, better? Be better. Make more yes. shit. And then <laughs> yeah. do, do better. You gotta like, do better, Senator. You gotta yes. do better, Disney. You gotta do better, Stuckman. Hold on. Hey. I don't understand what? any of that. Okay, wait. I'm rolling no. it back. I'm lost. What? No, they didn't just want something original and new. They wanted R something good. They had. You can't. It can't just be different. It has to be good as well. Like, yeah. hold on. I don't understand any of that. That was weird. Why'd you, why'd you make me watch that? Why was there a big old penis in the attic? <laughs> Bo is Afraid is a big example for me. It did not do well at the box office, as I predicted in my review. As everybody would have predicted. If you yes. found out what this film was and how much it fucking cost, it's obvious it was not going to be able to make the money back. And just recently, A24 announced that they would try to start making some slightly more mainstream stuff along with... Some of their more yeah. groundbreaking. Wow, they're just stream. numbers now. Crazy. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow, yeah. That's an interesting development that they would acknowledge that they need to make slightly Money? more crowd friendly. Money, movies. exactly. Oh, no. <laughs> no to it's afford okay. to make movies like Bo is a Oh, you mean like how it's always worked? That's how it's yeah. always so, worked. Turns out you it, need money to make things that cost money. Because if you want to like, make things that to... niche audiences why enjoy, you... you have to make stuff that bigger why audiences is he enjoy first. Like this? Every major film studio basically has some art house wing. It's Searchlight, you know, to Fox, that where it's like, yeah, we'll make the big movies, and then we got the small movies that we can help finance with the money we make from the big movies. It's just normal. It's have been happening for decades. Right, because we didn't pay for it. You know, I mean, you got Martin Scorsese yeah, sitting we there with Ari Aster, oh, encouraging we. people to watch this movie. This fucking legend. Of yeah, <laughs> sitting with a guy. Make a he point, said, I beg you, please. You keep no, talking it's about just, what it's is. It's just gonna. It's just gonna be. It's gonna say as he said, you go watch it, and you didn't. And nobody you did. Fuckers. Yeah, you didn't yeah. trust cinema in the form of a man. Yeah, cinema's kill. Fuck. Oh my god. Guy who's made Dang. three movies, and he got Joaquin Phoenix coming off of his Academy Award win for the Joker, which is one of the most iconic characters ever. It just seems like it should. Thank work. you for telling me yeah, that. Yeah, that <laughs> doesn't have to do with anything. Doesn't mean this next movie's going to be a insightful. banger, automatically. Oh my god! So this is the world we live in, man. People are afraid <laughs> to be is... challenged. It's not okay, that. Here. It's not afraid to be right. challenged. Thought, what the I fuck? Thought you said, I thought you said people wanted original things. Yeah, but they're afraid to be challenged. Damn. Okay. That is so not the problem at all. Not even close. No. Afraid to be challenged. <laughs> Boo. That really pissed me off, didn't it? It's such a stupid conclusion. Why would you even come to that? Like, I, well, you see movies, movie, you idiots, well, is what this video is. Expecting. People are afraid to be challenged, unlike me, who isn't <laughs> yeah, afraid. It's a pretentious I am a filmman. <laughs> I take if challenge if by the bum. If my level, then cinema wouldn't be dying, and you'd all realize how amazing these movies actually were. Yeah, it's just film Bo was afraid that I admitted I didn't even understand. <laughs> he didn't understand <laughs> Marvel's either. Afraid, though. <laughs> At least he wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid, yeah, Frankie. That's the important yeah. part. He wasn't afraid. He took it chin up and he just went for it. And that's the problem with that's the problem with you, chat. You're all afraid to be challenged. Yeah, chat. What that's the right. fuck, chat? You're because you gotta cinema, do better, you pussies. Yeah, cinema. you're the reason that <laughs> cinema's killed. Kill. You killed him. You killed <laughs> He's him. He's on the down. floor. He's dead. bleeding. He's coughing up blood. <laughs> Poor cinema. And people are afraid to be challenged. We want easy. Stop. We want, we want simple. We oh no, we want good. Dude, we want how good? good. Hey, God damn it. Do, you, do you like how he just randomly pulls out when he's right saying this. some of the most insulting shit? Just ra at random. <laughs> you well, know I'm what your problem is? Such an audience. kind filmman. He's such yeah. a good filmman. Who would never I won't shit, shit on, on filmmakers but anymore. But I'll happily shit on the audience. You plebs. You plebs. You fools. You don't want to be challenged. You want to clap like seals. You want it simple. You want it. I love Anyone the idea with my Patreon. <laughs> this they is like a fucking movie where it, a guy is like, "I love family," and then it starts raining, and he's like, "I need umbrella," and then gets it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the credits, and we're like, "Man, that was a great movie." <laughs> I really <laughs> related with with Og. He, he, he needed to protect that family. I didn't understand I that. Just, I'm afraid. And then I Chris is like shouting, "He's like, you won't be challenged. Look at you." <laughs> 
He made a whole video about how to save cinema, and it turns out his tactic is shame. That's what yeah. he thinks will save <laughs> cinema. This is a vital part into of the his films graduation. we don't watch are already trying to shame us. We don't we're, like we're we've been inoculated against this, Chris. <laughs> It turns out you can't I mean, actually it... shame people into going to watch movies. Oh, if we can add it good. to a list, though. Like, we talk about all those different things people think the problem is. Chris Stuckman thinks that everyone's too scared to watch movies. It's too scared to not understand them. Fucking he's, he's stupid. And that's, why, and that's why they didn't go watch The Marvel. It was a very challenging movie. Oh, yes. That, one. that was a tough one. Challenged like, yeah, well, Chris didn't know what it was about. So, yeah. It's, even, the, even the film Cianados don't even know what's yeah, going on in the Marvel. Even the champion of cinema, he's, he didn't understand Martin it. Martin Scorsese says he went and saw it, and he didn't know what was going on either. He was like, wow. Yeah. Now that is cinema when you don't know what's Maybe happening. Maybe he didn't wear a seatbelt. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Someone just highlighted, like, everything ever all at once. No one's going to call that a fucking simple movie. No. Nope. I mean, that would be what you would point to in terms of like a kind of surprise success of being a very complex, weird kind of movie. I guess people got over this their fear of challenge with that one. Damn, mm. lucky. Nice. Okay. Maybe it's got nothing to do with that at all. I don't know. What? How dare you? We back. want easy. We want simple. We want to be able to look up the movie and have why did he like it feels like he said what we said earlier but in a way worse way we were talking about like reliability <laughs> consistency storylines that cover a lot of the same drama that you've seen before but at least in ways that have a bit of spice to it or a mix-up or a subversion here and there and then his version is like you want simple you won't be yeah. challenged you're afraid it's like what, he's what, monologuing what like an <laughs> art related villain yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that's why i destroyed all the directors in the world that's why i killed them all because they wouldn't challenge you Dude, this is actually reminding me, it's a character in Sly 2, he's like one of the first guys you encounter, who, like, he's a scorned artist who then decides to become an art-based supervillain. <laughs> El Cinemero. He's I can't remember us. what his name, well, he was French, um, the guy, but I can't remember his name, someone in chat might remember. Cinema Roberto? Sly 2. Oh, what was his Take name? Team up. Oh, Dimitri, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Have it explained to us instantly. Man, Dimitri, the French I used to make explain. Yeah, the Sly videos. Cooper games are so fucking I stopped. Cool. There didn't used to be a thousand. Wait, what? He used to make explain videos and he stopped. That's why but no one why? can understand it. What does that even you mean? Stop. I don't. I don't know. Is also, I fucking hate explained them, videos. Or... Not because of in concept. I love the idea of them. They can be helpful. But man, the amount of explained videos I've watched that take the first ninety nine percent of the video to just recap events. That drives me nuts. This is what happened, but they don't explain anything. They just describe the events. Of oh my god, film. it's the absolute worst. Like, where was the insight? You just told me that you just maybe watched the film, and then yes, you realize, like, oh, I saw the thing. That's the <laughs> actual see. industry for that on YouTube. It is the it replaces the film for a lot of people. They just watch the summaries of the plot events, and then that's that. That's like a whole thing. I don't know if you guys that's have seen channels cinema. with all the 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 title will be the sort of horror premise or the drama premise of the film, and then the the video is just with clips, just. Doing the, it's like the no, uh, I, yeah that that's that that's a thing that's prevalent for some reason. I hate it. <laughs> like, but then, oh, yeah, they, yeah. It bothers me. It does bother me. And to have it explained to us instantly. I used to make explained videos. I stopped because there didn't used to be a thousand explained videos on the you internet. You pioneered the format, did you? What is he? Dang. But why did he stop? Tell me. Tell me why. Like, at mm. all. I was one of the few people who did it back then. Oh, shut the fuck up. So when you were one of the few people that did it, it was successful, but then other people came along, did it better than you, and you stopped because they Everyone's just a cheap imitation of this <laughs> document. <laughs> so, so true. And to be fair, he's a cheap imitation of a nostalgia critic. That's the real king. That's true. Oh this, I have way God. more respect for a nostalgia critic than Chris Duckman. Oh, I think this is dangerously translating into us just being afraid to watch. Dangerously, anything. please stop saying we're afraid. Please, I we, beg you. We, all these I'm afraid times. I'm like, going to throw up here in a second. It's like he's standing there going, "Give me money." You're like, "No." He's like, "Yeah, you coward." If you were coward, smart, you'd give me money. <laughs> you coward. You don't want to be challenged by fucking Darth Ben. That's because this what, one is scared. You don't you can't afford your groceries anymore. Uh, coward. Thing into us just being afraid to watch anything that might <laughs> This is just a fin dom video that we're not instantly aware of that we have to really think about a little. Yeah, bit. that's what it is. I hope yeah, that we can definitely. find a I think place the next time my friend's going to ask me to go to How? a movie, I'm just going to like, "No, nah, I'm scared. I don't want to." How can you <laughs> possibly reconcile <laughs> this? Don't challenge me. I'm, I'm afraid to challenge, challenge me. <laughs> How can you possibly reconcile this alongside the fall of the MCU? Like is he actually arguing that the reason the MCU is dying is cuz it's too experimental? 
No, the problem is that he's got it's 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 it has been pointed out many times. There is no coherency to this script. This is just a bunch of disparate thoughts about the state of the industry that fundamentally are contradictory in, in certain ways that haven't been reconciled. It's just here's a thought, here's a thought, here's a thought, here's a thought, latching onto each of them with no clear idea of where he's heading. Because yeah, how do you square away that Marvel movies are failing? Is the notion that that th those films are not challenging for the most part, anyway. Like, this con this runs contrary to what he's saying here, but he doesn't seem to realize that, probably because, again, it's like, yeah, I'm just latching onto these thoughts. They're all over the place. Yep, okay, video done. Cool, ship it. Yep, all good. My work here is done. Mm -hmm. And he makes it sound like, if only they would watch them, right? Like, if only they would watch And it's like, well, people did check out Bo is Afraid, and it fucking died because nobody recommended it. Meanwhile, yes, it, people did check out everything ever all at once. And, and did then recommend it. Incredible word of mouth. Yeah, and yeah, then it became good. a massive success. But I guess Last Wish is just not challenging, and that's why. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's a good example to point to. For, a, for an animated film that's designed for families, you know, designed yeah. knowing that you're going to watch it. That's oh, a that movie was so fucking good. <laughs> yes, it's always it so fucking good. It's an excellent movie. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. I mean, it's, it, it's about mortality in, in a film that's going to be watched by kids. Oh, that's, yeah. what a that's great movie. Really <laughs> challenging. Yeah. Of stuff and and no, I do not think it's just dumping them on streaming. But I am very you. You were the one that dumping you you brought that up. Them. That was you. You he wasn't he the one that said that that was part of the problem. Whatever. Yeah. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on all of this. I, don't you? No, you give me your no, thoughts. You don't, care. <laughs> <laughs> you don't care. You don't. Come on. I do really love this art form, and I love. Yes, you need to, to keep. You, you said that so many times. It. He has to keep I trust it. you. I trust you. Sort of. Please, I try well, to see not... everything. There are so many movies I you see. try to see everything, but you can't because there's too much Marvel content now. It's, it's <laughs> filled up the whole world, damn it. <laughs> the, like at least I one episode a week gets too much. I just saw Ghost in the Shell this week. It was re-released in theaters, and I got to see that in the theater, which why don't you? Great. Why don't you talk I about saw... that? Did he, it sounded like he said that. He I don't got get the time to talk frame. about He's too busy talking about how cinema oh, is kill. Wait, whoa, wait, wait. What, what, is he, what is he reviewing though? What are what are the movies that he's typically reviewing at the moment? Because I'm I'm gonna go ahead and guess that they're all like recent releases for the most part. Oh no, there's a couple of there's a couple old ones, E. T. and Silence of the Lambs. Okay. Oh, okay. Huh? Cool. Yeah, but how long are those? Like how how much are they gonna uh, do to like, actually convince well, me to go watch them? The E.T. one is 17 minutes, but Silence of the... Oh. Man, talking about Silence of the Lambs in only 7 minutes and 33 seconds. I don't fucking seconds. get it. His Hill House review was 5 minutes. That's true. The season. His killer review was only 7 minutes. You could talk about him. I thought long. he loves those movie, uh, those uh, Flanagan's things as yeah, well. Yeah, but he hasn't got much to say about him though. How do you can how do you only talk... For, I'm fucking retarded and I can talk longer than this. The thing it's... is, it's okay to talk <laughs> briefly if you if you say a lot, but like a huge portion of his review will be, you know, like because a review begins with, "Oh, this is a film and it was directed by this person and written by this person, starring this person." Like, yep, cool, cool. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. But no, it's just you know. Uh, Meg Ryan's directorial movie with David Duchovny, What Happens Later. I went and saw that anime film, The Tunnel Everything to Summer, The Exit later. of Goodbyes. Okay. I went and saw Anatomy of a Fall. What does this Meg have to do with like, anything? Yeah, like, yeah, but, like what does he have to do no, with the broad point, though? Mutually, he's doing his part. He's doing I, his part. Well, yeah, he's setting an example to all of us to follow. He goes yeah, to he's not all afraid. But that hasn't addressed all the points. His way of living. Well, that hasn't no, addressed all the points I that he so brought right, up. Right. Mola, Mola, this is good for building credibility because look, I watched some animes. I watched a film you haven't heard of. <laughs> I oh god, rated R too. But what I'm trying to highlight Ooh. here is that he brought up loads of reasons for why people aren't doing this, and then he's like, "But I'm doing it." It's like that doesn't mm -hmm. change anything. Yeah. yeah, but this is your life. This is your job. And yeah, your that's the other problem with this. Life. Is that like he's a very unique individual, uniquely poised to do this, uniquely invested, has all the you know uh, he's he's developing connections, he has all the awareness, he knows who to look to uh, for recommendations, for information about releases. Like, no, you're a very very Meanwhile, you know minor fraction of a minor fraction of a minor fraction of a people that can even yeah. do this with ease. It would be the, like the someone, else. someone being like, why does anybody? Why do people not get into like fine dining? Like the, it's easy. You just need to get a couple of books, few tools, and you know. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. kitchen stuff and just whatever. Just like, Why don't this... people just get into white water rafting, you know? Like, just get out there. Get yeah, it's like it, an hour know? per day if you get it right. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what, 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 but, but like Why the... aren't people into running a marathon every weekend, you know? Like, it's, it's, it's really easy. You, know, you only need you. around the place, yeah. 
People have different interests. Not everybody is that interested. It's like, yeah, Not but everybody is watching this cinema is going to die if you don't do this. And you're like, all right. All right. That right. would be bad. I That's guess that's the thing. You have to making... imagine the person who's not going to the fucking theaters telling them the theaters are going to close. They're like, oh. <laughs> and then they might say, like, well, I'd like them to stay open for the people who want them. It's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, I so mean, too. <laughs> yeah, if cinemas die, which they won't, because people will always want movies, movies will just be a thing people want. And if it has to downsize a little bit before it comes back, or who knows? I mean, maybe if a lot of people don't want it, maybe it just isn't that big of a thing. Oh, I saw Next Goal wins. I saw The Marsh King. Good for you, daughter. man. Nobody okay. else did. <laughs> oh, what does that mean? Are they afraid again? <laughs> Probably. Are they afraid like Boas? <laughs> Are they too afraid to see Boas afraid? Oh my god. Oh. I guess at the end of the day, I just wanted to make sure that I said something about all this. You didn't say anything, <laughs> except that the audience is too scared, which is a really weird said about takeaway. Things? Because I really have a bad feeling. And <laughs> it's a I'm bad omen, don't you get it? I gotta tell you. It's so ironic because we think, come away more hopeful with the box I'm office. I'm way more hopeful <laughs> yeah. with the Marvel's yeah. failing. That's We're like, and, good, and all let it die. Films. Let him burn. Let it burn <laughs> to the ground and, and let new. something rise Maybe from something the ashes. Will, yeah, exactly, like a phoenix. Yeah. But yes. not dark phoenix, like a better movie than that. <laughs> something. Anything. Uh, the glorious phoenix rising from the ashes. Of this art form that I love, I just finally made my first movie, and wow. it is a real goal of mine mm -hmm. to make original movies. Yeah. There's just so many topics all that right. all relate to good? one central thing, which is a fear <laughs> of the future for the. Rags, I wouldn't know because I'd be too afraid to watch his movie. Afraid to be challenged. <laughs> oh, you, you, just, you don't want to be challenged. I understand. No. no. Is that what all this is? It's just a preemptive. Blaming of the audience for the fact that no one will go and see his film, but at least now he's established that it's our fault I, for not going to see his film and not his. I guarantee you the comment section is filled with just everybody's own takes and then that they agree with Chris. You know what I mean? Like yeah, nobody's. Because he threw, well, he threw out so many disparate arguments that you got to <laughs> latch onto one of them, right? There'll be one of them that you probably agree with. Well, the crazy thing is, extrapolate I, that to the whole video. I heard about this video thanks to it trending. You got onto trending with this, and I was like, what the fuck do people take away from this? And you're like, oh, it's one of those videos where you, you take away whatever you want. Just kind of ramble on and say some words, and then everyone does the work in their own heads, and then they walk away and say, yeah, the thing that I thought about is definitely the thing that I watched. Art form. And uh, I'm worried about movie theaters, I'm worried about physical media, I'm concerned about movies and TV shows disappearing off of streaming platforms. Yeah, you said all he of that, you didn't really, yeah. things, you you didn't really sew about. it into some kind of point though, you just sort of said bad omens and that's it, because you've got no insight, mm -hmm. nothing. Well, this yeah, just seems yeah. like virtue signaling. He's like, oh, all these people are going to lose their jobs, I'm so worried for everybody, if only we could get together and save them. It's like, well, he's just like, he, charity, not a business. And taking a very, very one-sided and narrow view of every event that he's gone through, it's like, there's, there's art that's been taken away from people to be able to see, like, oh, bad. There's physical media that used to be there and it's no longer there. Yeah, bad. There's theaters that used to be there and are no longer there. Yeah, that's bad. These are bad omens. You're like, do you want to go into depth on any of these things? Do you want to see if they connect at all? Do you think there's a common causal solution? Are they symptoms or are they call problems? They, anything? And he's just like, bad. Bad omens. Bad feelings. Studios, gratefully, just one studio, WB, that is just straight up erasing movies before they're even released and they're done already and everyone worked on them and it's do you see how he describes all of it like there's no reason to do it well, yeah I mean, obviously they had a reason it's just that's that what i mean like, like it. talk about it talk about it chris make a video about it well he can't because the way he's pitching it is isn't it horrible because all these people worked on it and he doesn't want to say that all those people worked on it and it's trash and it's their fault so he's trying to blame it on someone else, but he there's no way he can physically badmouth the people that made the movie because he just thinks effort equals good. Mm -hmm. It's just insane. It's the most insane you already did this. thing I've ever seen in this business outside of Harvey Weinstein. And I just can't... Why'd you laugh? I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm also <laughs> just struggling with the analogy there. Uh, like Harvey Weinstein, two people don't watch bad films? Well, if it does feel weird. The number one worst thing in the industry is a man who uses power to, like, you know, do all the things that he did. Second worst is when they delete films that are created. It's like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a really Nothing weird fucking happens. list you got there, man. <laughs> Between what those if they're deleting his films? <laughs>
can't believe that anybody would want to sign a contract with somebody like that, knowing that you could do all that work for years of your life and just have some guy be like, mm, you'll work yeah. a shit. Anyway, guys, I would love to hear your thoughts on the state of the industry. Okay. I'm sure you yeah, would. He already said that yeah. before. He kind of, you, know, you would right. love to hear them I'm so you can below. see which Let ones he wants to yeah. keep for himself. Martin Scorsese, <laughs> uh, movie theaters, all of it. Uh, I'm very fascinated by this topic, physical media. I am. You don't have any opinion by this topic. I don't know. You the only opinion me. he really truly had was that the audience are too afraid to watch films, which is a bizarre and stupid take that must have been his own. <laughs> well, I, I mean, can't it, imagine it's it just not a. Else. It's not a great long term. I. It's just you need to make money. What what are you going to do about it? You know, like that's that's like what it comes down to at the end of the day. Like, what are you going to do about it? Is your strategy long term to be like, ah, you you fuckers, you're too much cowards to watch my movie? Is that your winning strategy to get them to watch? Like, you got to make money. You got to make money, and you have to deal with the landscape that you're in. Or if you're comfortable losing money, that's that's totally fine as well. Like if, if you you got money to burn, Chad. but. Well, yeah, I mean, a little bit, right? If you decided Chad to finance Burnett, a film yeah. and you didn't care. Well, uh, you know. This you, is the movie I want to make, damn it. Film. Exactly. I want to make it. I'm going to spend all my money. Don't care how much money it makes. It's like, oh, that's pretty cool. When you're using someone else's money, they might have an opinion on, on yeah, how much money you spend. They might. Yeah, yeah. If well, that's the other thing, money. Right? <laughs> the, the studio <laughs> meddling where that guy comes in and says, eh, I want, I want an explosion in this scene. That's what people are. And it's like, oh, you're ruining it. It's like, but why do you think that even happens? It's that guy's money. He was well, the one and, that and paid for all of it. You know, because people often say, like, oh, yeah, appeasing the shareholders. It's like, yeah, it's their job. It's their obligation. Yeah. They have to. That's their job. Like, these companies are owned by people who want to get a return on investment. And these people need to make decisions that they think are going to make money. And hopefully, and you... in an ideal world, the art can thrive while the commerce can thrive. But obviously, if, there's going to be I friction. Can't even... Yeah, begin. because if you don't want to be beholden to shareholders, then don't become a publicly traded yeah, company. Yeah, stay private. Or, and t don't take their money if you don't want to be beholden to them. If you take their money, then you will be. Imagine the average fucking person looking at the listings and being like, new Marvel movie, Ugh, they've been so bad. What else we got? And it's like, The Meg 4. You're like, maybe, yeah, this shock movie will be dumb. What else we got? Extraction 7. You're like, well, I've enjoyed some of it. And then yeah. you're like, eh, you know what? I think I'll just stay home this this time. And then Chris Tucker <laughs> bursts in the room. And he's like, "You coward! You coward! You won't go to the you challenge. You're scared. You're scared, you're scared of the Meg Seven. You're sitting at home playing. Go to the fucking movies. And then you you go and you watch the Meg Seven, and then he's like, "What do you think?" And you're like, "That's crap." <laughs> like, crap. Well, it was really it's bad. Yeah. And he goes like, "Hey, you can't say that. They worked really hard." Yeah, that's negative, man. Damn. I find all this interesting in the con like this whole discussion when in the video game world, obviously there's plenty to be made of like all of these battle pass sort of microtransaction laden games, but there is definitely like a growing and thriving middle market, as well as obviously the indie scene. It feels like there's a bit more of a balance there compared to the film industry at the moment. And I guess it's interesting because it's like I don't you know, like that's that's just sort of emerging naturally, partly because of like Steam and stuff like that, making it easier for this these things to happen. Like it's almost like he's looking at where we're at now and forming like a very big conclusion about what that means when it's just like, yeah, but I mean, this could just be like short term fluctuations. Like, who knows? Just calm down. Yeah. Just wait and see. If only. You know, maybe, maybe things all, may, maybe this is just, you know, boom bust or something. And, and it's like boom bust, but will eventually, you know, recover and, and, and it'll look different. Kind of a glass half full kind of guy. I am an optimist, but there are too many things. I'm an optimist, okay, but everyone what... is afraid of film. <laughs> Yes, everyone's afraid. A twenty-minute movie about twenty-minute video about how he's worried and panicking that everything's going to die. He's like, "But I'm an optimist. You should see also, the other guy." Can you have a little bit of confidence in us to know what being a glass half full guy means without having to say immediately <laughs> that that you're an optimist? Right. I don't think he knows. You know, I was I was going to go to like the nature of his writing, and I was like, you know what? There's no need to do that. Uh... Well, yeah, but I mean, it's it's. The fact that he has to keep saying "I love movies" when it should already be apparent just through the way that it you feels talk um, about insecure, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. Why do you need to remind people? Like, I mean, in case you didn't know, guys, we we really like movies here on EFAP. Um, we also <laughs> like video games. We like music. Yeah, games, and, we I like, don't like, music, I like oh. TV shows. I like books. <laughs> I, like, I like storytelling. Make sure to mention that half an hour from now. Okay. No, that's right. Okay. I need to keep reminding you because if it wasn't apparent in the way that we talk about these things, then you know. Just making sure that you know. Good move. Things happening mm -hmm. right now that really scare me. I'll set a timer. Me. 
Why don't you say that to <laughs> Zald snapped neck, bro? <laughs> <laughs> no one would write that if they didn't have passion. I wish he got a chance to write that and put it into the movie. <laughs> that, was so that, that, single that single line that single line could have saved cinema. Yeah. And remember, there, there were other great lines too. Did you think like a pair of glasses could fool the world's greatest detective? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> Batman would definitely refer to himself as the world's greatest he detective. He would, yeah, easily. And if I can ever be in a position in my life where I can impact this industry for the positive, I'm going to try my damnedest. Yeah, to do cool. that. why? Why? What's, what's the point of what, like what was that? That? my damnedest? What's the point of that? As but like, you could be doing drag this industry down. You could be doing <laughs> so much more. And what did he choose to do? Make a rambly video for 20 minutes. This main point that came through is that you, audience member, are too afraid to get out there and support theaters by seeing films that scare you. <laughs> okay, that helps. Thanks, bro. Bad. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more videos. Say get stuckmanized. Just very soon, and if you like Say it. Do you think Goku would right be here. happy with this get video, Chris? Yes! Yay! He said it. We, da, yeah. da, 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 da. It was all worth it in the end. Oh, there it is! There it is! Okay. Yeah, right, that, and this that, what is why he's the champion of cinema. That was such a, a bad yeah, video. That was a really <laughs> empty video. Cool. That's a shame. Thank God we were here to say something because, oof, that was rough. Hey, Barely anything was said. Why? Was How? Why? Where? It was Who? 20 what? minutes. He had yeah. 20 minutes to talk under un and uninterrupted, and he barely said anything. Ugh. What a shame. What a shame. <laughs> I only learned that I'm scared of movies. That's the only thing <laughs> I remember. Right. So scared. Okay. So very scared. Mm. Shame me, Chris. Do it. Oh, yes, do it. I'm like, no. Oh, Shut shame up, me. Oh, okay. Shame <laughs> me for being... I don't want to be challenged. Especially when he went, yeah, you're all cowards. You won't see original movies. And then 30 seconds later, because I'm making an original movie. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, that's why. There it is. There it is. Insecure about what he's making. So, not. yeah, pretty good video. Oh my god, this is crazy. There's a top comment that says, We don't just want weird, we want good stories. Oh! Yes! True! <laughs> Get in there! Hey! Dang. <laughs> looking, at that, uh, looking at that icon he's using for his channel, that's, uh... It's changed. He's changed. What do you mean he used to be hopeful? Full of energy? Full of life? No, not really. Well, he still looks kind of dead-eyed in that one, too. Yeah, he's still <laughs> kind of dead-eyed, but there's... But he he's definitely... He looks different. He looks different. I just wish that um, he like could ever have explained. Like I can't think of anything else. We've covered him a couple of times where it's just like he was just there early, wasn't he? That was it. He was he was he was an early ad uh, adopter of the vlogging format for film review. Because um, I've always just been blown away that I've never heard anything from him about a film that like couldn't have been garnered possibly from the synopsis. I have heard more insightful commentary from Wings of Redemption. You know, Rags, I was about to say I, I, the I mean, classic, that's not a very high bar, but you know what? That's a mid bar. That's a bar that's, that's not the easiest thing to clear ever. Because he said something on that Little Cow Live that was... That's right, that's right. That was super the interesting. Uh, the thing is, is, it's just, I don't know that... I don't... How, how often are you going to be surprised by a perspective that Chris Stockman offers, where you'll be like, God damn, I never thought about it that way. How often does that happen? For someone who says that they are so invested and in art and creation you know, and originality and filmmaking and being challenged. He's the most bog standard, boring person you could just kind of imagine. He never says anything insightful or interesting. It's just he he, he moves his mouth and noise happens, but why pay attention? Why listen? You're I mean, not going to learn anything. Off of his observation, when it comes to like a, a YouTuber who's talking about you know movies or video games or something, hearing something that's interesting that I've never heard before is worth a lot. Um, compared to just like yeah, yeah, you know, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Three is a video game that was released in 2023. It was developed by Sledgehammer Games and published by Activision. It's the 19th installment in the Call of Duty franchise, and uh, you sound a little bit too it's lively. available on PlayStation Five and Xbox. Yeah, and PlayStation Five and Xbox One <clears> X, <throat> wait, right, Xbox um, Series X. The Killer and PC is directed by David Fincher. David Fincher, man, oh, he said I... so little about the Killer. That was so <laughs> lame.
who is who is famous for having created other very memorable films. I want to punch you. Stop it. Like Fight Club. Stop. <laughs> no. Several the movie. Others. Chad, the movie was him. fantastic, yeah, like, the, the and I recommend it. We'll is, see you next time. Get that he's so eyes. overflowing <laughs> with things to say. You know, so <laughs> overflowing, like a bountiful waterfall. It just keeps coming. He can't help himself, you know, just talking about yeah, all like the you'll... intricacies of the filmmaking process and how much he respects it and admires it. Or, you know, alternatively, when it really annoys him in a film, like how poorly the script is derived, um, uh, rather. <laughs> Yeah, when he turns on the camera, he's like, God, I got so many thoughts. I've got, I've got to say who directed it, who wrote it, and whether or not I liked it. Fucking hell, which one do I do first? I've got to get it done. Yeah, i got to be quick. Now. Jeez. Um, can tell people they're afraid. Oh, fuck. Also, yeah. people say next video. We're, we're actually probably going to end there, because that went a lot longer than I expected it to. There was a Boo, second video, but it's going to be moved into a different one now. Whoa. Uh, oh. Don't you worry. Bilge. Don't panic. But a uh, short man, bad. Four hours. Also, you got other stuff. That is that's, pretty that's short. Releasing, okay. You guys will be fine. You'll make it. Look at them being all angry and booing. Yeah. You're all just afraid. That's what it yeah, is. Right. You're afraid, afraid to be alone. Afraid, afraid, afraid to be challenged by the short. Be challenged by your own thoughts. All right. Yeah. Uh, but before hey, we go, Gary was here. That was fun. Yeah, he was unable to come back. Figured <laughs> <laughs> people figured that out. That's not the mic. Um, but before we head out, why don't we, uh, Mr. Mr. Disparu, why don't you tell people what you're up to and where they can find you? Oh, yeah. Um, I think my next video is probably going to be about the actors' strike as details have emerged. Mm. They keep leaking details of the, the contract so that they still haven't leaking signed horse. for some reason. It's oh. like everyone just thought it would have been over by now. It's like, yeah, uh, there's clearly some resistance that... Some people don't like it, so I was gonna say that. The last video was Madame Webb and the disaster of that. Which And you did <laughs> um you finished you've completed coverage of Robin Hood, right? Oh yes. The the yes. glory of, of Robin Hood, where just out of nowhere they get locked in cages and then a pink bunny rabbit walks in with an electric cattle prod to assault them. Oh that sounds great. For no reason whatsoever. <laughs> I need to watch your guys' coverage on that. That sounds like a hoot. It is. Uh, <laughs> a little, little bit, yeah. Hey, if you only watch one, watch episode seven. It is the most deranged episode of TV I've ever seen. Out of oh. nowhere. Oh, it was bizarre. But, uh, yeah, if you like trash television, go for it. Presumably, <laughs> being inspired after today's episode, you're going to start at the end of your video saying, get disparized, right? You're gonna... Disparized? No, I'm gonna like I'm gonna start insulting my own viewers. <laughs> I was like, you're just scared. You won't watch the next one. I dare you. You're not subscribed. Forty percent of the audience isn't subscribed. <laughs> yeah, Fucking you cowards. cowards! Cowards is what you are. Button, you peasants. Oh, that that kind of stopped. People don't do that anymore. I think I haven't seen that in a while. I wouldn't be surprised. Because everybody that. did it. That was, like one person started it, and then it was on every single channel. People pointing out their own analytics. Mm. Yeah. I feel like that's going to be the meme for a while now. Are people going to combine the uh, only joy in my life meme with the, the you're too afraid meme somehow? We'll see what comes out of that. <laughs> uh, Lil Being Platoon. They don't know the meme. You are just genuinely insulting your own audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lil Platoon, what are you up to? What's happening? Yeah, I, I was one of the very, very many people who was terrified of the Marvels, but one of the mm. only people who actually saw the Marvels to be terrified by it. So The Marvels is hopefully next weekend, but I caught the flu immediately after seeing it. So the script got longer, but I couldn't record anything. But it's now mostly recorded. So next weekend, The Marvels, hopefully. Sweet. And what have you got now that would satiate an audience? Now? Um, I don't even know what the last video I did was. Ahsoka, I think, Ahsoka, like midway through reviewing that. But much like the show itself, my review videos on that have pretty much bummed, so Aww. I don't even know what I'm going to do with those ones. But they're fairly good fun. If you've got like an hour free, go and... Or four hours more like. But, you know, if you've got four hours free, go watch those. Hell yeah. Uh, you guys love uh, Ahsoka, right? You've had chat? Big fan yeah, I think it's really... I, I think it's really good. I think they were 50-50, but once the zombie stormtroopers came into it, they were like, oh, this is this is me. I can see <laughs> oh. me in this. Yes. There are people out there that was the for part which that was the breaking point. <laughs> Those are odd yeah. people. That's and the breaking point. That's where they went too far, man. That's, yeah, because they're I afraid. Just... Rex, they're afraid. <laughs> they were, they were afraid. afraid. They were too cowardly. They I didn't want to be challenged cowardly. by the... <laughs> Shit. Um, metal. What about you? What are you up to? Uh, nothing new, really new. I've, I've been playing Blasphemous 2 on stream and just uh, being out with a cold mostly. So 
I don't really have anything new to report. Mm -hmm. Go watch that Marvel's rant I uploaded from my stream. That's, that was oh. kind of fun. Yeah, that's not, that's about it. Just and that just working away. Blasphemous too good. Yeah, really good. I've been enjoying it. Sweet. It's good, 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 good stuff. Pretty, really decent bosses. Uh, hmm. So I think I think I'm gonna finish that tomorrow. Actually, I will say, of all the things you could have described them as, you went with really decent. Well, most of them were decent, but there were no bad bosses. That's good. There were, like, I think two bosses were pretty good. But there was not, n no boss so far was like, oh, that was excellent. But there was one really good one, I guess, would um, be my thingy. I don't know. So if you describe something as mediocre, that's probably like 5 out of 10, I suppose, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, that sort of thing. Um, if you describe something as really mediocre, really mediocre, does that make it go to... A six or a four? In my head, that makes what go is, down. Does it go up or down? Okay. So yeah, when you say head, really, uh, when you say really decent, does that mean it's it's better than decent or oh, it's God. worse than decent? If it's I really just, decent, I just said That's words. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Wait, it, I think it's about tone. <laughs> yeah. Really good means uh, is up. If I say yeah. really good, that's better than just good. But if I say really mediocre, that absolutely implies a downward. Well, it, and the same with really bad is worse than just bad. I think the, the typical way you'd exp express it would be like, it's really mediocre. You wouldn't expect someone to say, it's really mediocre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really mid. Go it's check really it out. Mid. You I, love I, it. I guess it's, um, this is it's, so it's, shockingly I think, average. It is I guess the it would be of all yogas. Really emphasizes the, 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 the true nature of the, of the thing that it uh, precedes. You know, really good is like it emphasizes the goodness. Really mediocre emphasizes, and mediocre just feels like like okay in my mind is better than mediocre. Okay is like skews mm. a little bit positively. Yeah, yeah, I think okay is yeah, I think that's okay. okay is better you know, than... mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Metal is okay. Thanks. I do think that tone is very important with okay. He's like, yeah. well, what if you say like it's okay? Uh, it's okay. It's pretty... As it's, okay. it's, okay. it's okay. Yeah. Well, it's, it's right. okay. Yeah. It's okay. Anyway. You yeah, see, I'm, we're learning. Yeah, we're learning. Yeah. So much. That, that's Rags. what I'm up to. <laughs> Riggy. What about you guys? Yo. Uh, don't want to say anything at the moment. Oh, well, I'm just. Do you know the deal? <laughs> it's back to the dungeon I go. It's right. the same dungeon. deal for me, uh, except the, of course, obligatory mention. Of a certain uh, highlights channel that, if you guys aren't that's aware right. of, we're on the cusp of being able to monetize that's it. True, yeah. So, um, Ooh, wow. Check it out. Have a little look. See, there's some stuff in here wow. that you cannot find on the Mola or Mula channel. Oh my um, god! And of course, uh, it's run by Wolf, and he appreciates suggestions in the comments for what things you'd like to see uh, elsewise as the years go on. I'm sure it'll be filled with every highlight you could possibly imagine. Filled uh, with cum uh, highlights. <laughs> Link in the description. Check it out. Some scrizzle if you want to see EFAP highlights, I suppose. And, and uh, ring that bell. Yes. Cling a ling. Thank you, of course, <laughs> to Capital o Opinions for joining us as well. A uh, link to all channels in the description and Gary for his cameo. Uh, where he just came into. It's always <laughs> exciting to see Gary uh, uh, come up with his cameo. Yeah, We're always like, woo! It's like, <laughs> I'm here <laughs> too. <laughs> Um, Gary brings that after credits energy to the podcast <laughs> that we really, we really like. The Grandpa Simpson thing, but he walks in and just circles and leaves. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, gonna... look! An old man's fiddling with his computer settings. <laughs> <laughs> might ex might explode it. Might have exploded the computer. Who knows? Oh God. Um, but yes, on that note, we shall see you all next time, whenever that may be. Toodle pip. Cheer see you around. Yeah. Bye. 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 See ya. La, 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 la.